Welcome to the Ultimate Base 4.0 Building a Duplicant Hotel. My name is Nathan and this is the much requested movie compilation of my current Oxygen Not Included series. Part 1 is going to contain episodes 1 to 20. Next week we're going to do the next part. So if you don't want to miss that, I would definitely appreciate a subscription. Also, you can follow the chapters in this video to skip to certain episodes. With that out of the way, thank you so much. I hope you enjoy. Now, Moonlit Cluster, what does that exactly entail? Namely, five planetoids that share all the game resources and you cannot find all the resource on one single planetoid. So you will be forced to build a rocket program and ship materials between those planetoids in order to take advantage of being able to survive in the game. As for the game settings, I'm gonna leave Hunger to the default setting for reasons I'm gonna explain in just a moment. The durability I actually lowered to be easier because I just find this an annoying feature, but I don't want to completely eradicate it. However, what I bumped up all the way to the hardest setting is radiation and disease. Because usually, even if you play on the normal settings, those two things aren't really a problem. And I want them to be a problem in this playthrough. Everything else is set to the default. We have the teleporters, the packages and we also have all of the story traits. As my starting duplicants I rolled Nisbet as a digger with the super duper hard digging skill already present. We have Amari as our rancher that will be taking care of all the critters and finally we have Chin acting as our researcher in the ultimate base 4.0. Alright then let's assess our situation. We are starting on the metallic swampy asteroid which should guarantee us a whole bunch of metallic volcanoes such as aluminium, gold and cobalt. On the planetoid itself, we'll find some swampy and marsh biome, maybe a magma biome at the bottom and some metallic biomes. What we won't find on this planetoid are the sandstone biomes for sand and sandstone, the forest biomes for pips. We won't find any ocean biomes for excess of water, no wasteland for sweetles or grub grubs, no rust, no tundra for weeswarts, there's no barren biome, no jungle for dracos, no oily biome for oil and no radioactive biome for the uranium. All of these materials, if we want them, we need to grab them from the surrounding nearby planetoids, the Moonlit Cluster. Having a quick look around, we can find some dust caps, also thimble reed for the Atmos suits. There are some plug slugs maybe for ranching and also extra power. We also have the occasional one-time food sources and of course then the starting crop, the bog buckets. The first thing here I would like to accomplish with my duplicants is just setting up a starting infrastructure to be able to poop, eat and breathe. Maybe not in that order. Having a look around, I might want to be careful with the polluted water, just collect it somewhere at the bottom. In the beginning, we'll be breathing in a lot of polluted oxygen, which will give my duplicants yucky lungs. And it's also just a little bit disgusting. For my starting water, I'm just going to utilize a pitcher pump and this initial pool. Let's maybe put the pump right there. It can reach down up to four tiles and the initial water should be enough to get us going. I'm also going to make my way over here being careful not to dig up the slime just yet and then if we do this right all of this polluted water should land down below together with the other one. With our first access to cobalt we can already start setting up the first rooms. Now let me think, I might want my bathrooms over here honestly. Yeah I definitely would prefer my bathrooms and bedrooms maybe even the great halls being on the right side and then where we have the ladder shaft is going to be everything else. Let's think about this. I want the center room to be 16 wide and then still have the space for two doors, so 18. Then I want a ladder shaft and then I would like to start with the rooms. So there would be the door and here would be the ladder shaft. This ladder shaft here will only be inside the base and this one here will lead through the entirety of the planetoid. Next up, I would like to set up my first cot. Here my duplicants will sleep. Now here I will have to break through all of this, avoiding the polluted water if possible. I want to make the bedroom about three sizes in height so I still have the space for some decorations and then on the very top right here we'll have our bathrooms. Starting with a wash basin right here we would have the space for another three wash basins and then of course we would be getting started with some outhouses so this room needs to be a little bit longer. That is exactly 16 in size. And if we make this room four tiles high, it has the maximum size of 64 tiles. So there would be the ceiling of this room. 
To avoid the polluted water from being a problem, I'm just going to make my way in from the top down and then make a little cavity for it to drop down before we complete the room. And just like that, we can get things started. Maybe another thing I want to do right off the bat is enable all plants to be harvested so we get that extra food when it's ready. Inside the ration box, I want to store everything edible. Let's just keep it at priority 5 for now. We need to focus on building everything. I would say, Amari, you can also go ahead and help out over here. This part is more important. Wait a second, if we keep on digging here, I have a huge problem. I don't want to mix the polluted water just yet. So maybe let's add a tile right here first. And then we should be able to add another one here, which makes it safe to dig through. Definitely not my most efficient cycle. If I wanted to be efficient, I should have put the bathroom and bedroom on the other side. But, you know, I have an idea on how I want things to look. But now we can safely dig through without this falling down. Now that we're getting closer to the end of the first cycle, I want to have a quick look at the schedule. I want to make them work through until the night shift and then give them a little bit of downtime. I don't think we're going to be in time to set up the bathroom, so I'm just going to set up an emergency toilet somewhere. Let's do it right here. They can use this one for the first cycle. Wow, my first duplicant already has hypothermia. This is incredible. Yeah, it's because she's standing in polluted water. <laughs> oh my god. This is going to be a catastrophe with the diseases. Let's actually learn more about the diseases. Check this out. Minus five science, machinery, construction, cuisine, and plus one sneeziness. All of these diseases are extremely devastating. Since we only have one functional toilet, I think I also already want to add three schedules. Also, Amari with the night owl bonuses, we need to make sure he actually works during nighttime. So what I'm going to do is swap all of this to work time and then we're going to shift the schedules. The next sleep time would be starting here and then two downtime slots just for the beginning. I will be bumping that up very soon. Right here we want Chin and then we want Nisbet. However, we just keep on digging here and then further making our way down. And then I would say right here at the bottom, we're going to make this cavity for the polluted water to go down and then we can properly finish this build. Wait a second. This is not right. Nisbet should be here and Amari should be there. Yeah, that makes more sense. So it is now Nisbet's downtime. She is going to sleep first, which is good. Afterwards, she's going to poop and then she's going to eat. Now, there could be a slight issue with food poisoning. So maybe, just maybe if we set up a temporary wash basin here as well, we can get away with it. We now have Amari filling up the wash basin. Very nice. Okay, so now we're just going to wash our hands whenever we go through here and it is actually necessary. There she goes now to the pooper. Yes, indeed. Accumulating a whole bunch of food poisoning germs. However, we have no food here. We only have it in the ration box and therefore she needs to wash her hands before eating. Perfect. Also, Amari is now going for his break. Is that right? Why are you doing that? Amari, what are you doing? I know, of course, that makes sense. It's the first cycle and they all need to poop after a cycle. Okay, not too shabby. We're not going to have a mess. The duplicates are not going to poop all over the place. And we can take our sweet time to set up the real bathroom. Now that we're actually getting somewhere, I want to tell you about the plans for this playthrough. I basically want to establish a workforce of about 20 or so duplicants that will be taking care of the entirety of the colony. In the end, maybe it's going to be more than 20 duplicants, but my main goal for this series is to establish a hotel on a specific planetoid, evaluate which planetoid will be the best for this. And the hotel is basically going to accommodate approximately 50 duplicants that are just idling around, enjoying life, having access to all the amenities and just the best food. So establishing this hotel that will be supplied from the main planetoid is the main goal of this series. This is also, by the way, why I decided against an increased hunger setting. Now, as an optional side project in this playthrough, I also would like to establish a zoo with all the animals that are currently in the game. I'm also playing on the development build, so the update that is coming to the game very soon should already be included in this. Yeah, so not only do we need to establish infrastructure for all the late game materials, but there is also a purpose to it, namely we are supplying the hotel, a five-star hotel with the best of the best. So I really hope you like this idea and you're in for this long-term series. To avoid unnecessary dupe labor, I disabled disinfect for the outhouse here. I don't want them to go all over the place in order to do that and waste a bunch of precious time. Also, we can use the priority setting in order to increase that priority. This is really important that we can get rid of the polluted water and finish the bathroom. Before I lose track of time, I should set up a research station. I'm going to do that right here. 
together with a battery. Let's see. Power. We need batteries. Let's put that hmm, maybe for now on the other side. Yeah, I'm just going to put that battery here together with a manual generator. And we're going to go ahead, connect this with a wire like so. The dupes will be able to charge the battery and then we can use the station to do some research. Very nice. This is already enough room to be able to finish the outhouse. So I want to make sure to set up the rest of the wash basins and outhouses. This also means we can go ahead and set up the bedroom for some more comforting sleep. Wow, check this out. Nisban is already taking advantage of it. How wonderful. No sore back. The wash basins and outhouses I generally want to have at a priority of 7, so they will always be taken care of, even if I don't have a duplicate dedicated to this task. In terms of achievements, I will be trying to get most of the achievements, but it's not going to be a focus on this series. i rather make a dedicated series to trying to get all the achievements. Right now, all we managed to do was get a bed for each duplicate. I'm going to go ahead and speed up the outhouses here, so we can deconstruct the emergency one. Also, I want to mop things up wherever my duplicates are walking as this time around my dupes get sick just looking funny at each other oh there it is my outhouse is in place in this case we can deconstruct the other ones i also would like to make my way further down here and i'm just going to use a ladderless technique in order to do so go a little bit further down here and there and maybe we can dig over here in order to gain access to the dust caps and the thimble reed yeah maybe gaining access to everything over here could also be important but now that we are actually starting our research, I would like to sort out my priorities. Within the priorities, we can decide which duplicates are dedicated to which tasks. Obviously, the better a dupe is at a certain task, this color is going to be darker. So we definitely want Nisbet as our digger and builder, just because they go hand in hand. And I'm going to bump this up all the way to the maximum. Also, whenever I want to kill off critters, I think Nisbet should be taking care of that. And I'm actually going to disallow that for everyone else. Doing it on the top here is going to prevent every new duplicate from taking on these tasks. For instance, I want no one to cook until we actually have a cook. Same thing goes for decorating, same thing goes for researching and farming probably, ranching would be specific, doctoring would be specific, rocketry also, and that is approximately it. Of course right now we don't have enough duplicates to take care of all the tasks so I have to change a few things around but to finish the main tasks Jean obviously is going to be responsible to do the research so that needs to go all the way up. Amari is our rancher so that also needs to go up. We cannot really do any ranching right off the bat but we can do some farming so I think I'm gonna dedicate Amari to farming as well with a lower priority than ranching. Amari and Chin, I don't really want to build if there is anything else to do so we're gonna set this to the lowest priority but not disallow. As for Nisbet our digger and builder I don't want her to do supplying and storing that often except there's nothing else to do so I'm gonna lower that to the lowest priority as well. Same thing with tidying here lower priority. Now one thing I like to do is actually enable toggling for all. So all new duplicates should be coming with a very high priority in toggling and in conjunction with the enable proximity setting we should be able to always have a nearby duplicant if I want to toggle something. The priorities in this screen are always going to be superior than the priorities inside the game. So even if I set this tile to priority 9, if my researcher has some research to do, they are going to do the research first before building that tile. However, for Nisbet, building is already at the highest priority and for her it's going to make a difference which block she's going to build first depending on the in-game priority and not the priorities inside the priority screen. One thing I temporarily changed in the schedule is only set it to two bedtime slots because we have enough time to actually reach the bed and do the entirety of the sleep within that time. Once we expand from the core a little bit more, I'm going to re-enable that slot. To wrap up the episode, I would like to finish my initial rooms here, as well as getting started with the first research. If we manage to do that, I'm already pretty happy. Oh, and as it so happens, we can now choose our first blueprint to print. Let's have a look at what we want. We have two interesting duplicates, but they both come with something I dislike very much for my worker force. The flatulence trait just creating natural gas inside my base. I don't like that. I will not necessarily be avoiding that for my hotel duplicates because a five star hotel also needs to be able to get rid of natural gas. But then Quinn comes with decreased athletics and that is just absolutely horrible. So I think this time around we're just going for the Archie that is going to be the most useful to us. Nisbet is already making her way down with the ladderless shaft. I want to avoid digging up the bog bucket if they're still growing. Actually this was a different plant. 
so we can go through here at least maybe as a side note i also have enabled a whole bunch of mods nothing that changes the gameplay dramatically I guess the biggest mod that changes the gameplay is a chained deconstruction. So I can deconstruct all adjacent buildings of the same type in one go. And that is just because otherwise I'm getting annoyed and frustrated with the game. All of the other mods you can check out in the description so you know exactly what we're dealing with. Oh, I almost missed it. Now the water here is dropping down and I'm going to take that opportunity to start mopping it up. There's too much liquid to technically mop it up. If I catch it in the nick of time, I should be able to do it. Yes, I think I can do it. I just need to be quick enough to start mopping things up here. Come on, Amari, make me proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I finally managed to do it. That means we can dump it into our existing liquid pool. And now all I need is someone to actually use the manual generator, which falls under the operating category. I would say Chin doesn't have anything to do if there is no power. So I'm gonna bump operating up a little bit and then they should be taking care of that. Uh, Chin, come on, come on, come on. Do something else. Yeah, going up and going to the manual generator. They're just going to fill up the battery once and now we can get started with the research. The first thing I would like to research obviously is in the food category. So I usually just go for that, the capability of setting up a mess hall and some farm tasks. There are also certain resources I would like to track. For instance, now that we're doing research, we will be using dirt. Dirt is something we don't have a lot of on this planetoid. We're also using the dirt for our outhouses and then water. Well, we have a visual indicator of how much water we still have not a lot. Obviously, there are going to be means of producing water through the mud, and we'll be taking care of that when the time comes. I think I'm just going to set up a bottle emptier here to dump the water that I'm collecting at the bottom and maybe in the future over here a little bit. Right now, I just want to see these two rooms finished and the floor mopped up. Jean, in the meantime, is doing the first research, so that project has started. Observing Amari, he actually made it into bed in time. Uh, let me see, was that all the stamina you needed? No, he only slept to 65%. He came from down below and that was already not enough time, so I think I need to go back to the three sleep time slots. And then I'm also going to give them three downtime slots, so they definitely have enough time to take care of their needs. One thing I want to mention here, we are not in a hurry. You should shouldn't stress out with getting new duplicates or setting up everything in a timely manner. It's better to take yourself the time, think about the next steps and just make sure that you have everything under control before inviting too many new duplicates. There's my bottle emptier. I'm gonna choose water as a liquid so every bottle of water we're getting will be dumped back into here. Hopefully without germs. There shouldn't be any germs just yet. Well technically there are some germs here with the polluted water bottle so we need to make sure to not contaminate other polluted water with it. And there's already our first research completed, the basic farming. We gain access to the algae terrarium, not very useful without algae. We can now build our own ration box and a planter box, but we'll probably go with the farm task that we research in a moment. There is the last outhouse. We're gonna set this to priority 7 and the Zable disinfect. Don't forget about that. I want to continue making my way over into the various chambers. Actually, maybe before I do that, I want to get started by routing the polluted water downstairs. Yeah, I kind of want to go ahead and collect it all at the bottom. So we're going to continue with our ladder shaft here. Now let's have a quick look at the temperatures. We are not in immediate danger when it comes to heat. There seem to be some really hot pockets every now and then, also over here, that are over a thousand degrees, but we're protected by a layer of abyssalite. At the bottom, we have the max layer and we do happen to have a bunch of very cold biome so this might be useful for our early food storage unfortunately these cold spots are too far away from my base layout and this one here isn't cold enough to make it extraordinarily useful so i think in the beginning we're just going to focus on providing just enough food so that we don't starve but we also don't have to keep it fresh for very long Oh no, knees bet. Ugh, I didn't pay attention. Now, if we're quick enough, we can actually mop this up. Yeah, you know, I think we're safe this way. I can mop this up later, no problem. Wonderful, the next research has been conducted, giving us access to the electric grill, the farm tile and the egg cracker. Let's go ahead and set up the first farm right there. I'm also gonna go ahead and just set up 16 tiles. Let me see, there is some slime in the way. I still wanna avoid it. Now we need to go for another research, all the way down here, namely the sludge press. And this is going to give us access to fresh water through the means of pressing mud. 
that is two researchers away, just requiring the basic research station. Can we do it? Oh, yes, yes, yes. No, too much liquid. There's our first farm tab. Let's just check out what we require. We got a life cycle of 6.6 .6 cycles for this plant. It requires darkness and a temperature between 10 to 30 degrees. We can have it with an oxygen, polluted oxygen or carbon dioxide. And it just requires 40 kilograms of polluted water, which we have plenty of. So we're going to go ahead and plant that and copy the setting over for each of these farm tiles. Plumbing has been researched. We can now start to pump liquids around. The compost actually was still from the first research, just turning polluted dirt into normal dirt. And then we also got access to the mess table, which I'm going to build on the top here. And since we can already do that out of gold amalgam, we should consider that. Mm, no, I'm going to do that once I upgrade the base. Let's just stick to what we need for now and not exaggerate. Before I forget, I should also close off these rooms so they actually count as a room. Eventually, I'm going to replace these tiles with airflow tiles so we have better airflow. One thing I forgot was to add the bog jelly to the ration box. Of course, I want this to be taken care of. Amari, of course, because of the priorities, is taking care of farming, adding the necessary polluted water to the plants. Gene is doing an amazing job at researching liquid filter already researched. We got a gas filter and, of course, the sludge press I was going for. To get this process started, I'm just going to set this up very easily. And we also hook up a bunch of pipes to this. And for now, I'm probably just going to dump this down below where we're going to set up our liquid storage room. At this point, we could go ahead and just conduct one research after another, but I find the long-term playthroughs much more interesting when I research whatever I require, especially when we don't have that much dupe labor in the beginning, Gene can help out around the base. And whenever we need access to something new, I'm going to go for it. What I much rather see than new research right now is the ladder shaft continuing all the way up. Now, let me see. We might want to collect some of the resources at certain spots. So let's prevent the resources not directly on the ladder from dropping too far down. Oh, nice. Looks like we get our first skill points. This is going to be especially important for Nisbet to get into hard digging. But for Jean, it's also clear. Just needs progress in research. So advanced research it is. And we can assign the appropriate hat. Oh yes, go ahead and enjoy your new upgrade. Now, all the bok jelly we are currently having in our storage are going bad rather quickly. Minus 43 percentages per cycle. And that is because we have it in polluted oxygen. So maybe there is a research we want to conduct as soon as possible. And that is the deodorizer. We can find this neat little contraption right here. Converting polluted oxygen to normal oxygen using sand. If we check out the amount of sand we currently have, it's just 2000 kilograms. So it's not going to be a reliable resource unless we also research the rock crusher. I think in this case we have no choice. We're gonna go for the rock crusher first right here in order to create sand and then we need to go for the advanced research and afterwards for the deodorizer. In the meantime we could think about setting up a different ration box maybe somewhere in carbon dioxide down below here. The problem is it's just too far away from the future great hall. So maybe just maybe we're gonna create a little pocket like this and that is also just gonna be an emergency emergency solution but we basically want to build another ration box here that is eventually going to be within carbon dioxide this way at least we only lose the minus 18 percent per cycle for it being unrefrigerated another option would be to use an actual fridge you know i could do that i never do that and i don't know why because we do have the power well not really i still think it might be worth it so fridge might be another research i want to conduct very early i also want to go ahead prepare my liquid storage how large do i want to make this not too large i basically want my pitcher pumps to be right here with one two three four spaces below and then this would be my liquid storage eventually i'm gonna bring it all the way over to here here i think but first i need to handle the polluted water here all of this is supposed to go over here dribble down and then down below here okay we're still good now that the two rooms are enclosed they should also count towards the morale bonus at least the barracks here what are we missing ah this is now probably too large because the missing tile here but we can easily fix that Good. At this point, I don't need to intervene as often. I don't want to give out hundreds of thousands of commands. So I have everything a little bit under control. That means I want to switch to the fastest speed. But first, Amari gained a skill point. Actually, Nisbet as well. We can finally unlock the hard digging skill for her. And then Amari needs to work towards ranching, of course. Let's go ahead and do improved farming. We now also unlocked the water cooler. I'm actually going to place one in the mess hall. And so for now, I think I'm just going to set this up 
up in the center of the future room. We can actually make the Great Hall larger if we wanted to. Right now we have eight beds, more than enough toilets, and there's going to be more than enough mess tables. So I don't think I'm going to actually do that for the starter base. I much rather keep the same size of the room right here and just do that. Also going to keep going with the ladder, removing the unnecessary chunk there. The printing pot is ready for the second time. Let's go ahead and do it. Do we have a good duplicant? Turner here is actually an interesting candidate, just dedicated to operating, but he could also help out with the digging process. However, not someone that convinces me. I'm going to be very picky in the beginning. So let's just print out the sandstone. I also would like to set up some storage bins that I can utilize in order to grab materials that I don't want on the floor, such as for this contraption, so there will be nothing on the floor that off-gasses polluted oxygen. I'm actually going to leave this spot here in place so that I can have access to polluted water as well, so let's open this one up again. Another research is completed. We gain access to the crafting station for oxygen masks. We now also have access to the rock crusher and kiln, both of which I'm going to install in just a moment. But now let's Let's dive into the advanced research so that we can go ahead and set up the supercomputer. As a matter of fact, even though I just built it, I think I'm going to bring the sludge press down. This requires the same space. Yeah, I love it. I'm going to bring it down here where we'll be going down. And instead of the sludge press right here, we're going to have the supercomputer. Also, this ration box, I'm just going to go ahead and copy the settings and then remove the ration box itself, making the space for the supercomputer right next to the printing pot. This way, we can also benefit from the lit workspace Spot. There is my storage. I'm going to set it to all but sweep only. So whatever I'm sweeping up should be stored in these storage bins. Now that this is open, all the polluted water should drop into the correct spots. So I'm just going to open this up. Wait, Nisbet, you can stay here and just do that. And there it goes. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Collect that all at the bottom. My future liquid storage here should start with a ladder probably on either side. This ladder, I suspect, is going to disappear. But then I would like to see... Hmm, let me see. This is going to come down here probably with a liquid vent so we can actually dump the sludge that we're pressing this is gonna come from over here actually so you can go then i would like to see my pitcher pump located right here i just see we can make this one deeper yeah we definitely should do that thank you another research completed this goes really quickly we got access to the mini pot but also no we already have the rock crusher i'm gonna actually build that here on the top let me just build it somewhere so i remember that i want to add it and then we also now have access to the supercomputer that I'm gonna build right here. Get rid of that cable. The skill scrubber I don't actually require unless I'm making a mistake with the skills. Inside rocketry we also unlock the telescope but I will be building that on the top. Not really something we can utilize now. However now with the supercomputer we can do things like the deodorizers and we should totally go for that. Cleaning up this polluted oxygen is really gonna help our duplicants and also avoid spreading germs. I'm not gonna do anything with the sludge press yet unless we actually finish finished the water storage. Actually, before we remove the cable here, this very last bit I could be using to create some more oxygen. Now that we're going for the deodorizers, a sublimation station in conjunction with polluted dirt might be the perfect solution. So if we want, we can set this up here. Then I don't need to deconstruct the cables. I can use them. But also I need deodorizers all the way around in order to convert the resulting polluted oxygen into normal oxygen right away. But it might be a good idea to get started with it. Even though if you look at it, we still have lots and lots of things actually emitting polluted oxygen. It's still better to have it under my control. Another research completed. Holy cow. Gas pump, gas pipes, the gas vent. So everything that we already researched with the liquid we can now do with the gases. Wow, check this out. What a starting planetoid. This is kind of insane with all the slime bombs. And this time around, it's actually dangerous. This is the first time this is dangerous to me. But yeah, I guess generally just let's keep going. And there is some more sedimentary rock. I'm just going to make it drop here on this tile. So whenever a dupe is building these ladders, they can use this material. Looks like hypothermia is going to be a topic in the beginning, especially until we have those liquids under control. Let's try to build the ceiling here wherever we already can. The supercomputer is in place. It is going to require an awful lot of water. This is actually where we're going to get rid of most of the water just by doing the advanced research. We need to do it sparingly until we're running the sludge press. Well, and the next research out of the way, we got access to the airflow tile. So I'm going to exchange these tiles as promised. 
and these ones as well. As a matter of fact, this is probably going to be the end, so I'm not continuing this way. Therefore, we can niftily close this off, and it's not even too hot over here. Well, a little bit too hot, but something we can certainly deal with. I'm going to move my pitcher pump slightly over. This way I can set up two of them and more duplicates can take advantage of it at the same time. Now we're actually missing the polluted water here for the farm task because I'm not building this quick enough. Therefore, let's set some priorities. Just this one here. I want to speed this up. There is my pitcher pump and we should be able to rectify this issue. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Good job. Certainly a slightly stressful situation for Amari. Yucky lungs, sopping wet and hypothermia. I'm sorry. Times are gonna get better, I swear. With the sublimation station in place and airflow tiles, I should be able to set this up now. All I need is the deodorizer in order to take care of that, but we can already prepare the cabling and everything. And I feel like I have to hurry up with this part a little bit so we can drain all of the polluted water efficiently. There it goes. It's just beautiful. Absolutely magnificent. Let's keep going here. And also every now and then, once we reveal more terrain, we should be able to harvest more plants. Well, in this case, I already did it. New printables. Let's check it out. Still no duplicates I want to take aboard. Let's go for the nutrient bars. By the way, my ration box is already inside the carbon dioxide, which is good. So it's not going to go stale quite as quickly. More polluted water to drain. I think at this point we can just connect the ladders. Right now, because of the priorities I set, Amari here is only delivering the materials. This is also practical, so Nisbet, when she comes around, can just go ahead and build the stuff. Armari, I really like your thinking. Yay, research is completed. What did we get? The mechanized airlock, but more importantly, carbon skimmer and deodorizer. Let's go ahead and set up three deodorizers like so. This should be taking care of most of the polluted oxygen we're producing with the sublimation station. Now, we need to provide for sand. Right now, we only have two tons and that is not enough. So maybe we're going to take this to the next level and set up a rock crusher here that is going to allow us to produce the sand. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to set up a kiln next to it. Now I'm soon going to run into issues with priorities. The sublimation station, for instance, and the deodorizers are not going to be provided for unless we change the priorities. If we check out the errands, we can see this is a supplying or life support task, which means this category here. For now, I'm going to dedicate Armari to it. But as soon as we get another duplicate to do so, I will change that again. There, Armari is already doing it. Thank you so much. Look at this. Sublimation station going for it producing polluted oxygen and the deodorizers are converting it into normal oxygen very good but look at that we already lost half of our sand that is just in here now it's not going to be used up in a cycle or so but it's still important that we generate some sand right now we have a lot of sedimentary rock and we also have a ton of sandstone well literally a ton so maybe i'm just going to do 10 crafts of that and we get an extra thousand kilograms of sand and i'm also going to do about 50 crafts crafts of sedimentary rock right there. Jean, because there is no research going on at the moment, is taking care of that task. Yeah, it looks like they're just going back between the rock crusher and then, of course, the battery. We soon need to change the battery to something more efficient. Oh, meteor showers. It is happening, actually. Let me see that. Uh, can I see the meteor showers? No. Yeah, something is definitely happening here at the top. Wow. Okay, very nice. I didn't know we would be getting meteor showers here. You have no idea how happy that makes me that I have meteor showers on the main planetoid. Oh gosh, this is this makes the playthrough just so much better. Amazing. Problems I did not anticipate. I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, as a matter of fact, I want to make my way all the way up and see this happening. Let me now maybe take apart this ladder so that I can set up a larger battery that might be useful. As for the doors, we only really need them in order to specify the room, but we can keep them open therefore the duplicates are not gonna waste any time opening them themselves and we also don't care about privacy in this colony there is my water cooler oh look at that we can actually use a different material for this minus 15 stress per cycle this is amazing but for the time being, I just want to disable the building. So we're not going to waste any water in the beginning. Finally, Nisbet decided to do the staircase here and we can get rid of the polluted water. Maybe finally continue on the real water storage. Yeah, I definitely just keep going here. Whoa, already new printables. This goes quickly. Wow, look at that meep. Cannot do digging, 
decrease calories cannot do cooking, but 375 tidying speed and 600 kilograms of carrying capacity. Dude, I'm actually tempted. He doesn't need to be able to dig, right? Decrease calories just means 500 more per cycle. And he also cannot cook, which I don't care about. You know what? I think I'm gonna go for him because I need a dupe just taking care of the chores inside the base, shipping materials around. And starting with 15 strength is really good. Just for the 500 kilocalories, in the end, with close to 100 dupe Duplicants, it will really not matter. So Meep, come aboard. Thank you very much. Oh, we printed our first duplicant. And he's already going to town with cleaning. What a good dupe. Good. Now, all we need to do is sort out the priorities. We want to emphasize supplying, storing, tidying and life support with this dupe. Maybe not in that order. That means decreasing supplying and storing again here for Armari. Tidying, I'm gonna decrease even more for Armari and life support as well. No, actually, let's keep life support up. I'm gonna decrease tidying and storing. Same thing here for Chin. Tidying and storing is gonna be decreased. I wanna make sure life support is the highest priority. After that, we're gonna do supplying and even after that, storing. That means I'm gonna disallow building completely and operating is gonna have a lower priority for me. Okay, I like that so far. Let's also create a new schedule. We're gonna have approximately five schedules in the end, but this one here is gonna be dedicated to Meep for now. And we're just gonna continue here with the same pattern. Three sleep time and three downtime slots. Meep, you go right there. Wonderful. So we just need to add another mess table and we should be golden. Great. Let's actually also set the skill point here for Meep. His preferred path is tidying, but here we only get some strength and we already have a lot. Here we get strength and plus 400 kilograms carrying capacity. So that's the way to go. Man, I'm already enjoying this so much. The beginning of a new world is just always the best thing to me. The game runs smoothly. Usually you have an overview of what's going on. Well, let's just keep going. First of all, by replacing this battery. I would like to see this gone first. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. We haven't even researched the other battery. I need to do this first. Uh, whoops, my bad. We're gonna go all the way through to the coal generator probably. So we already have that researched. There's a large coal deposit right here we can take advantage of. I think this might be the only one. So we cannot really go overboard with it. The outdoor renovations achievement is out of the way. Construct the building outside the initial starting biome. We're now harvesting our first bock buckets. Are they? Yeah, they're already going into the ration box. And because we have a high priority, Meep should be taking care of that. And yes, indeed, that is exactly happening. Wonderful. Uh, just look at Meep. He's going absolutely insane with tidying. I love it. He was absolutely the perfect candidate. We got the first research now. So that means we can deconstruct the battery and get a jumbo battery in place. Oh, that actually went really quickly. So you can kind of prepare the deconstruction of a battery by canceling it at the very last second. Curious, every time I start a new playthrough, I notice these little things. Nisbet is currently enjoying her meal and that makes Amari go on the hamster wheel, which doesn't make any sense without a battery. So I'm going to increase that priority and then somebody should be building that battery. Yes, very good. Okay, we also have a new skill point here for Chin. Analyzing the volcanoes or analyzing space. What is more pressing right now? Well, until we get the next skill point, probably nothing is pressing. So I'm gonna get into field research rather. Good, looks like we can take apart the rest right here. And then we need to make sure the sludge press is actually standing on something. I would like this to be mesh tasks in the future. We'll exchange them in due time. Oh yeah, Nisbet is just going to town, holding her breath. I love her. She's my favorite dupe so far. Oh no, Nisbet, you, you are not my favorite dupe anymore. Why did you do that? Well, in this case, I think what we should do is abandon this project here. Get rid of this pitcher pump as well. Do I have a way back? Yes. We're going to allow all the liquids to drain, mop it up, and then we're going to produce new fresh water. Nisbet earned another skill point. Obviously, we're going to take super duper hard digging. And now we should be able to... Well, we could already have upgraded to the tier 3 we had previously. There it is. Another research completed. And we got access to the coal generator and the wood burner. Now, what might be interesting as well, all the way down here, we might want to go ahead, unlock the lights as well as the automation wire. I think I might be very interested in that. We can also create refined materials out of the cobalt. So maybe we already get started on that and we also get additional sand from that. I totally forgot about it. So let's go ahead and do that. 50 crafts. 
We're gonna waste a little bit of cobalt with this process, but in the beginning, this is a very easy way to acquire refined materials. I just saw Amari is doing operating a little bit too frequently, so I'm gonna downgrade that. I want mostly Chin to take over for the operating. Eventually, once there is nothing to research anymore, Chin is gonna be the main operator, or one of the main operators at least. And so I think I'm also gonna decrease that for Nisbet for the time being. Okay, let's have a quick look down below here. We got the Cobalt Volcano, and I just see one thing that is concerning here, the Abyssalite that is touching the next biome. Yeah, this is definitely gonna be a problematic area, and we might want to mark that off. I want some insulated tiles right there, just so that we have no accidents. The rest of the crust here seems to be intact, so it's really just this area. I just wanted to make sure before we actually open up this area and fill it with a whole bunch of different liquids. Yeah, just this entire area here at the bottom I'm gonna open up and we're gonna do even one more layer, just like that. This way I can also grab a lot of coal that we then can use to power our systems. For well, now, I really don't mind Chin using the hamster wheel because it makes them better at operating. Amari with the next skill point, I'm gonna put that into critter ranching already. Right now we're not doing any ranching, but we could get started with with the Paku and maybe even with the Puffs. I've never really done anything with them. And I would like to do something with all animals, even if it's just for a showcase. Oh, and of course, let's not forget about the Plug Slugs. We could actually make them useful to us by ranching them. We could, for instance, add another layer here. And we're just gonna make a three high room or something. Add a airflow tile. No, actually, let me see. I might want to trap a certain gas here at the top. I'm not yet sure. But we can have some doors here and there. And this would be our ranch for the plug slugs that we then can use to generate some power overnight. In the meantime, I wanna keep going here with my water reserves. Now we need to be careful. Do I need water immediately? Probably for some research. So I kind of wanna emphasize on this area and get things cleaned up. Research completed, we got access to the lamp and the ceiling lights. The ceiling lights definitely need to go into the bathroom, so you get some of this shebang and maybe some of this. Can I cover everything? I think I need to cover the right tile, but we will have to check on that. This we can still possibly do with our wire that we have going on. Let's just lead that through the ceiling and power up these lights. We might want to do the same thing here with the mess tables. Why the heck not? Let's get this going as well. We already have a light for the printing pot, but we don't have a light for this station here. Now, I would like to steer this a little bit better with duplicate sensors. Right now, we still need to do the research into that. Luckily, this is a very early research duplicate motion sensor. So as soon as a duplicate walks nearby the sensor, we can activate the light. This way, we avoid wasting power and we also don't unnecessarily heat up the base with the lamps. When it comes to care packages, I don't really want to accept any clothing. I would like to craft all the clothing myself or find it in the playthrough. So we're gonna reject this since I don't want to take any more duplicates. Nice. Research already completed. That was the automation stuff. Very good. So in order to do that, we need to process our first cobalt ore. So let's just wait for this to actually happen. Oh, this is actually looking good. We collected all of the polluted water, so I can go ahead and create some mud to dirt and water. This is great. So we don't only get water, we also get dirt. Okay, okay. Nisbet, you, you don't have to prove yourself anymore. I believe in you once again. Good job. Maybe just, just calm down a little bit. We got enough refined materials for our first motion sensors. Now let me see. We might want to attach it. Hmm. There's not really enough space to attach it properly. I might get away putting it here. It doesn't really have to look good for the time being. I just want things to get rolling. So we can have a motion sensor here and there. And then maybe here and there. It's a little bit of a waste. The finalized worker base is going to be thought out a little bit better. Furthermore, I need some automation wire going to each of the lamps. You know what? With the space left here, I think I'm going to add another jumbo battery. That's certainly not going to be an issue for a while, though I need to be careful not to seep too much heat from the rock crusher. We might actually want to move it over to the right side because it won't matter for the rooms nearby. Another achievement, automate a building. Sure thing. And we can see this is working. The ceiling lights are turning on when Jean is eating and turning off when they're gone. Okay, nice. Jean is uh, making use of the sludge press for the first time and we do 
get some water that we can actually pump up using the pitcher pump. We can also see hovering over Amari that he's enjoying a lit workspace and therefore the eating is not taking as much time. I'm gonna print myself some omelets. That actually sounds nice for a change. We got the it's not raw achievement. Have a duplicate eat any cooked meal. Of course that was from the printing part. So I don't really feel extremely proud about this achievement. Something else I would like to research now are the fire poles. Slowly but surely we are going to benefit from being able to slide down quicker. I want to keep exploring towards the top here a little bit. Maybe still avoiding the slime when we can. Then just making my way over here and there. There's actually the second part of the supply teleporter. And then there's still all of this polluted water on the right side. We might want to just dribble it down into our existing pool. Let's maybe wait until we excavated the bottom part as well. Right now we're still digging up the occasional plants. Let's actually see if we can start setting up a secondary farm. I think I want to add a bottle emptier here and for now I'm actually going to limit the size of the liquid storage. I was thinking a little bit too big for our starter colony. We also completed another research so I got access to my fire poles. Let me see. I want to have them on the left side of the ladder shaft because here I always have the rooms and on the right side I usually have some space in order to set up the tubes. So this should be going all the way down here and also all the way up like so. Whoop. Maybe not that high. The bottle emptier here is going to be liquid water. Let me see. Where did we have that previously? Yeah, we already took that apart. So now we have a replacement and we can mop this up once we build this part here, I guess. Looks like we have another skill point here for Meep. We're going to go right into improved carrying too. And then we're going to go down the tidying path. I think I already found our next duplicate that is going to be our pilot. May right here, Radiation Eater converts radiation exposure into calories, which is absolutely amazing for someone traveling space. Immune to food poisoning will also be useful, I guess, and pacifist, not very advantageous, but probably good. Three strength and three piloting and for now we can just utilize them to take on the tasks nobody does. Yeah, I think we're gonna do it. Now we will... Yeah, we do have enough plants. Okay, I shouldn't worry. We now have five duplicates. Let's copy the settings here and set up another bog bucket farm. To be able to supply the farm, however, I think I'm gonna open up this space here and remove all of that and then we can just set up another pitcher pump. Actually, the table here is going to be slightly in the way. That's not good. So instead, we're going to go through here and down there. This is also going to allow us to access these plants, but we cannot get through the slime. Okay, different plan then. We go up here and then open this up. And now we have the space to set up another pitcher pump. I just want to very consciously dig my first slime when I'm ready. This is why I'm so careful. May for the time being, it's just going to remain in the first schedule. And in terms of priorities, let me see. We're just going to have everything at default, maybe even farming. They can just help out. And then, of course, eventually rocketry is going to be the highest priority. Yeah, I think I'm just going to do that. And also, we have already a bed, but we do need another mess table. Looks like we ran out of polluted water already. That means I need to speed this plan up a little bit. Yeah, let's do that. There it is already. Wow, okay, that went fast. Thank you, May, for helping out. It looks like something changed about their sleeping habits. I still need to observe that. But usually when they get to sleep, even if they cross the line where there is no bedtime anymore, they usually don't get up. But it could be that with a recent update, this behavior changed. And of course, that would mean they don't get enough sleep. But she stood up here in his bed with 87% stamina. And that might actually be enough to get her through the entire day. So I just have to observe it. Maybe they sleep up to a certain stamina point, which would be even better than sleeping all the way through. Whoa. Totally forgot that May already has a skill point. We should probably get into rocket piloting. Let's first do improved carrying. We're gonna need that either way. As for Chin, it might be useful to be able to use the material study terminal very soon. So I'm just gonna unlock that as well. To pay the bills, use a duplicate skill points to buy out an entire branch of the skill tree. Dude, we got another duplicate I'm really interested in cooking. Leira right here also comes with critter ranching. We could maybe make use of that let me think now nah, she's gonna be busy full time with the cooking is it too early though i'm really scared that if i wait i'm not gonna get a cook for a long time can we support five duplicates well technically it's six duplicates because of the two bottomless stomach guys that means we already need six thousand kilocalories a day hmm you know what 
I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna wait. I'm pretty sure we're gonna come across another one. Let's just print out the Choya seeds instead. I think you can only get those via the printing part. Good. I left the game running for a little bit and it seems my dupes are just living their life. Everything is fine. Amari just got his new skill point, which is why I'm tuning back in. I'm probably gonna get the critter ranching out of the way so then we can focus on other skills as well. Maybe now it's also time to dive into the ranching research. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and maybe right afterwards we're gonna go for the refrigerator as well so we can keep our food fresh for even longer. Our sleeping duplicates are spending most of their time in carbon dioxide which is something I would like to change. The airflow tasks give out a very bad decor value. One thing we can do is only add the tiles on the right side but I'm a symmetry lunatic so I think what I'm gonna do is leave two spaces free then three spaces with airflow tasks and that should be enough to get things down. And I'm just gonna rinse and repeat that for all levels. Yay, Nisbet with another skill point. What should we do? How much morale do we have? More than enough. So I think she's gonna benefit most from improved carrying. Yeah, definitely a good choice. Before I close this off, I want to make my way over here towards the mushrooms. And at this point, I feel like also establishing a mushroom farm rather than supplying another row of bog buckets. Mushrooms will require carbon dioxide and slime. Slime we should be having quite a bit however making sure we also get enough carbon dioxide is another topic i still think we should be able to get things started here let's try to do it over here eventually but first i want to get rid of this shebang here and then now that we accumulated a little bit of water we can make some storage bins that will be submerged in which we store the slime and maybe even polluted dirt at some point while well, the polluted dirt here doesn't off gas any germs so we don't have any germ issues However, once we dig up the slime, it is going to off gas and with all the polluted oxygen we have going on, this would result in all of our duplicates getting sick quite immediately. So I have to do this extremely carefully or maybe even prevent the polluted dirt from off gassing this way. I mean, technically we have enough with just this one sublimation station. It surely can support five or more duplicates. Yeah, I think it's going to be in my interest to try to eliminate all of the polluted oxygen inside the base. So I'm going to try to get rid of that polluted dirt and maybe then even use... Let me see. We didn't unlock that yet. So that could be another research to do. Namely the smart storage for the automatic dispenser. So we could be using that in order to ship the polluted dirt to a specific place. Right now we unlocked the grooming station that we could place here together with the shearing station. I don't think we actually need that. But what we're gonna need is a critter drop off point here and possibly a critter feeder. I actually I never did the plug slugs so everything I have to do on this planetoid is kind of out of the norm for me. However now we should be able to wrangle it up and if I speed up the critter drop off point then I can dedicate them to be dropped off in this room. And holy cow my rancher is actually doing a great job. This is the first time he even had to do ranching. There's my critter drop off point and we want to drop off the plug slugs and sluglets. There it is going right here and it's moving up in order to start producing power right here 400 watts all we have to do is hook up the cable here and possibly get it through the entire room and yeah, let's just connect it currently we have 665 watts on this cable so plenty to spare however it would be nice to supplement this with a bunch of batteries i'm just gonna build them on the top here because i don't want the heat to seep through too much and then i'm just gonna bring this all the way up connect these batteries and the plug slugs can hopefully do their thing now let me change this a little bit so it is connected to the outside. There is my grooming station. And of course, Amari is going to town right away. Grooming the critter. Uh, or maybe going to sleep. Either way is good for me. I think I just remembered that the plug slugs actually eat ore. Which is not good. Yeah, they want cobalt ore or gold amalgam. And this is just too precious to me. So let's just see what happens if we don't feed them. We still might be able to get some power out of them. Even if it might be half or whatever the penalty is going to be. I'm now also going to add a bunch of airflow tiles here. And on this level as well, going all the way down. Lots of bog buckets to harvest. I kind of feel like at the moment we have too many plants. Yeah. I might get away uprooting a bunch of them. 40 kilograms of polluted water is quite a bit thinking about it. And I don't want to overproduce just to spoil them. 
research completed what was i going for auto sweeper no nope. ah the automatic dispenser yes indeed what do we want to do with it we want to prevent polluted dirt from off gassing where we don't want it so maybe over here we're gonna have a polluted water storage let's just set it up here on the edge this would be the edge and i guess i also would like to set up two pitcher pumps there we could then have another sludge press over here which of course then would be producing the polluted water it is nighttime and look at that we're getting 400 watts out of these bastards and of course right now they are charging up my batteries hopefully we have enough batteries to last us a uh, daytime and of course because they are in the cold they're not gonna have a bad influence on everything okay nice i have to say i'm pretty happy about this the next time we might be able to tackle the slime because we get rid of all the polluted oxygen inside the base and then soon enough it's time for some thimble reed farming and then getting the atmo suit we we also need to discover the second planetoid and see what kinds of resources we find over there. It looks like I missed a skill point. Yeah, may actually leveled up here. I'm gonna get them into rocket piloting already, so we later can use suit sustainability training, making them faster. But essentially, May is gonna become our pilot once we're ready. We're almost done building the second sludge press setup, which I'm gonna use in order to process my polluted mud. Before we do that, though, it would be nice to collect some of this polluted water and just bring it over here inside of the base, and we should be easily able to do that if we direct the water a little bit now i think i'm gonna sacrifice this mushroom uh, actually maybe we don't even have to yeah we could go ahead and do something like this in order to start collecting the water upstairs that's a good idea remove that add some ladders here just navigate around the slime for the time being we can also open this up collecting that shebang go up here and then ooh, we cannot get through there but we can certainly get up here without issues and then that seems everything we can collect without breaking slime well at least easily collect oh nice looks like we got our second meteor shower what do we even get from that is it just regolith or even other materials as well but man i'm already looking forward to building the smelter for this there it is the gap is closed we can open this up and finally fill our pool uh let's actually remove these ladders now there is the precious liquid thank you very much come to papa get these two pitcher pumps in and those are gonna replace the pitcher pump we have here at the top well another skill point for meep very nice let's get him into strength now probably right yeah sure it's even free in terms of morale let's go for it I think it's time to also start cleaning up a few parts of the base. Like this one here is not going to get any debris anymore for a long time. So we can just as well start to collect these materials somewhere centralized and accessible. There's this new functionality to move debris. I really like that. We can just click debris, then move to, um, for instance, set it up here. A super useful addition in my opinion. Breaking through another pool here that should be it in terms of initially filling up my storage and then i think what i want to do is just set up a thin layer of water in order to prevent the polluted water from off gassing though this could be an issue as long as we don't have access to the mesh task so maybe that is the moment to research it yeah it's just one research away there's no reason not to do it also at this point i don't see a reason why not to continue this ladder shaft all the way down this still counts as inside the base and there it is already. Wow, okay. I'm taking that mesh task. We're gonna replace these tasks here and these tasks there. This way the entire water layer can go to this level and then the last one should be a thin layer of fresh water. Good, I think we can close this right there and then we can enable the sludge press. Polluted mud to polluted dirt and polluted water. Yeah, that's the recipe we want for it. Then here we want some water. Enable auto bottle. Let's see if somebody does it. I think May is coming over. What is she carrying? How much water is it? It's just a bottle of 800 grams. That's not good. Uh, let's move them over here. I want them to pick up a 200 kilogram bottle. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. And now we're just putting that here. Perfect. 200 kilograms for the entire layer should be enough and for the time being i also don't want to empty my polluted water it's just gonna stay here the bottle emptier without any settings the reason i don't want to do that is because right now we still don't have any germs in here and i just want to enjoy that moment by now though i think we have enough liquid here the water in order to distribute it amongst the entire water storage I'm also gonna continue with my storages here but I'm gonna leave a little bit of space for a pump and maybe a sensor. 
Now, let me think. These are actually not reachable from the bottom. I would like them to be reachable. So maybe we put them up one more block. I think they should now be reachable because duplicates can reach down three tiles from a ladder. This way, the dupes won't have to always go inside of the water in order to reach these storages. I think that might be advantageous. And we just keep these on mesh tiles like so. So let's actually get rid of these. And then we can do something similar here with another set of storage bins. Oh, look at that. We also unlocked the, the sink and the laboratory and the shower, of course. So we could be replacing our stuff here. We should definitely think about that already. I'm going to remove the inner wash basin and outhouse for now. And I would say these two slots should be reserved for my showers. The showers can be used to get rid of a lot of germs and also diseases. And since we upped the difficulty with diseases and radiation, I think this might be a good idea. Looks like my storages are full. Since we have those on sweep only, all I can do is remove everything and enable it again. So the storages will be emptied and all the materials just drop on the floor here. We got yet another achievement. Hatch a new critter and that must be a slug. Ah, there it is. The new baby. Let's go ahead and wrangle it up. It is supposed to be in my ranch. Something else I quickly want to do is set up a deodorizer in places where we don't seem to be able to get rid of the polluted oxygen yet. Also clean up the great hall and the bathroom and the bedroom, please. I'm going to remove yet another wash basin and outhouse and then replace it with the sink and laboratory so we can already pipe it up and prepare it for the transition. Right here, a beautiful sink and then in plumbing right there. Something else we should go ahead and research is the water sieve in order to clean polluted water, make it fresh again. Not germ free, but fresh enough. So that's a good research to go for now. Now here I want to get the mushroom farm started. Why do we not have access to fungal spores? We should have that. Yeah, there are some here, but it is unreachable. Ah, I see. Okay, let's get up here and then it should be reachable. By the way, Yucky Lungs is a constant debuff we are currently dealing with, giving us plus 30 grams per second of air consumption rate. So the only penalty really is that they are consuming more oxygen. Now, hydrogen on the other side is a different topic. Major eye irritation that results in minus four athletics, making them really slow. And in the beginning, when they don't really train up their athletics enough, this is devastating. But we can take it slow. This is not a 100 dupe challenge from cycle one. This is more of a preparation to build a facility that can hold a lot of dupes. But there's no need for rash decisions. Okay, looks like these guys already feel cramped. We're gonna enlarge the room. So just make this a little bit bigger. How large would this be? 112 tiles. Let me see. The stable can have a maximum size of uh, 96. So we would have to go down a little bit. And that would be 96 tiles. Perfect. Ah, and look at that. The penalty is much greater than I anticipated. So the guys that aren't happy produce a tenth of the power. This is crazy. I wonder just how much ore they are eating because ore, it's just so precious. I mean, sure, we could give them a little bit of cobalt, right? Let me actually track that so I'm not making a huge mistake here. We have 37 tons right now. Let me see just how quickly they eat it up. Also here, crit a drop off point. I want to set this to eight maximum and auto wrangle the surplus. Research is completed. That means we have now access to ethanol and algae distillers. But more importantly, the water sieve that is going to be responsible to clean the bathroom. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this could be down here together with a carbon skimmer in the end. As a matter of fact, we could already set this up, get rid of the carbon yeah let's do that and also set up some more mesh tasks actually this won't allow me to reach the storages anymore so i think i'm gonna give up on these storages because technically we have enough here however now with all this new machinery we might actually have to make a secondary circuit or alternatively we could upgrade everything to the conductive wire let's try that conductive wire right here can take double the amount of power, 2000 watts, before it breaks. And it should be easy to research. Wonderful. The stables have been enlarged and now the plox locks aren't cramped anymore. Oh no, I thought Roan would be a good candidate for cuisine, but he's got kitchen menace. Minus three in cuisine. How could you? In this case, I'm just going for the extra food. We also got an additional skill point for Jean. Still enough morale, easily. So we head down further the research tree. Astronomy. Hmm, do I want to change the cap? 
No, not really. We are going to keep it at Applied Sciences. By now, we have access to the fungal spores, so let's try to set some of these up, even though in the beginning they are not going to grow. We first need the entire chamber to become carbon dioxide. Oh no! What did I do? Okay, that's not good. Mop this up really quickly. Go, 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 go. Do it. Yes, okay. And then mop this up as well. Some... Oh no, I cannot even go down here at the moment. Uh oh, I'm just stupid. Me actually just did it. This was absolutely horrible. Now, this polluted water needs to move, but luckily we can do that. Just move it over here. And then we cannot have anything off-gassing anymore. This is a problem. So we now need a way to dispose of the germy polluted water. Except maybe, yeah, at the moment these don't really have germs. So maybe we can do something like only sweep polluted water and then we should be good. Research completed. We got access to wattage sensor as well as the heavy watt wires. Well, huge mistake. I totally did not move the cable here. Whoops. And no, what a waste. Oh, look at that. 1600 watts are you kidding me these must be the guys that actually ate some ore so maybe the 40 watts was just because of the cramped situation and 400 watts i mean 400 watts in the beginning would be good so maybe uh let's not uh wait 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 let's get rid of that and i'm gonna take away that cobalt ore again 1600 watts are you kidding me that's absolutely insane well, on the other side, it's only over the duration of the night, so it's not that insane. Wonderful, there's my sink, laboratory and showers. We should be able to start setting up the loop. In the future, I might exchange these with insulated pipes, but for the time being, we're golden, so the fresh water should be going into the input slots here. And obviously, that will count for the additional sinks and toilets as well. We cannot extract the liquid from an output the same way, otherwise some of the liquid will be blocked. So first, we have to go out, and I'm going to do that for the additional sinks as well, and then we can combine them all in one pipe. Let's say the polluted water goes all the way down to here. And then if we turn around the sieve, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Just O to swap it around. And then we can go ahead and input it right there. The output should then go to the input of the carbon skimmer. We will not be using all the fresh water. So I think we can just keep going here. And then if we set up some bridges, let me see, liquid bridge. Let's use the same material and we just hop over this slot right there and then we can keep going like so into the inputs of the bathroom so all we need is another bridge right there that is coming from the polluted water and it's being refreshed yeah that's all good so all we need to fix is the output here of the carbon skimmer it is better to put it into this direction so it can combine with the other polluted water and if we did it into this direction then it can only go through if there is no polluted water coming in in this case it will probably work for both directions because the bathroom is not constantly sending water but it's still good practice to only overlap incoming pipes into an input and not an output good all of this can then be built and i'm already gonna drag the wires and we are probably way overboard now with all the power that's going on mm, i might have to evaluate it we still have a little bit of time before we have to switch research completed yay we got it we got access to the conductive wire and we have quite a bit of cobalt probably not enough though let's still start building here from the top down just see how far we make it yeah that was actually already half of the resources we have Hmm. But what we could do is just add a separate circuit for the lights here. I mean, that would be quite easy, honestly. Yeah, in the end, I might actually do that. For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace what I can. Amari got another skill point. I think it's time to go into improved carrying for him as well. Oh no, someone contracted food poisoning. What's going on? <gasps> That's not good. Oh, can I maybe disinfect this? Let me see. You need to be disinfected. Oh my gosh, that's not good. Can I disinfect no matter how many germs there are? No, actually it selects the ones that I can disinfect. Okay, let's uh, disinfect the entire base. Yeah, wherever necessary. Meep can do it. However, what does food poisoning entail? Let me see. Meep, you have food poisoning. Bladder plus 200% a cycle. That's not too bad. Bathroom speed, also not too bad. But the stamina, minus 30% per cycle. Wow, okay. We really don't want food poisoning. No, sir, no. So now Meep should be disinfecting everything here. Uh, no. He's eating uh germ covered probably okay at some point apparently i did not pay enough attention and i dug up some slime now it did not have any influence on the top here but i did find some slime lung germs here and that 
doesn't make me really happy. It has to do with the mushrooms. I probably just brought the slime over here to fertilize this mushroom and that was a huge bummer. One thing we definitely can do for instance is set up another deodorizer like so because clean oxygen does get rid of the slime. For now, the slime right here is submerged and safe. It doesn't off-gas any germs, so at least we're not in a hurry in that regard. Let's also go ahead and pick up everything from here so we can clean this up a little bit and then I am gonna set up the slime storage. But first, I wanted to go to levels to go beyond the storage bins, you know? The storage bins for the slime and or polluted dirt should be submerged in water so it doesn't off-gas anything. Or alternatively, you could also just have enough carbon dioxide. If you're above 1,800 grams, then it doesn't off-gas either. As an emergency for now, I'm gonna set up a storage bin here that will already count as submerged, and then we're just gonna bring it over. There it is, wonderful. Okay, we wanna go to, where is it? Organic, probably. And then I wanna collect all the slime and potentially the rot piles and the polluted mud as well, or polluted dirt, I should say. But since we're gonna have quite a bit of slime, I think I'm just gonna dedicate this storage bin to it, and we're gonna set this to priority nine. So somebody should go ahead and pick up all of the slime bring it directly over to the storage that's submerged and then we should be golden now let me see we have some germy dupes here that could be because of the pollution it might be worth it to set up a sanitizing station later on may actually brought some slime from somewhere else contact with slime long terms you can see that as a status let me actually see what that does okay it doesn't mean anything just yet they haven't contracted anything they certainly dealt with the slime lung but we can see they're actually not covered in slime germs so far so this is actually very good let me go ahead and disinfect this right away ah there was still a piece of slime okay that, that makes sense. It was just off-gassing there. Are you serious? I have food poisoning germs in my fresh water. <sighs> That's not good. So at some point, I brought over contaminated water. Now, the germs aren't dramatic yet. So I'm gonna leave it be and hope for the best. At some point, if we don't make it worse, it should get better. And of course, it makes sense. Maybe there was some mud with actual food poisoning. No, that doesn't make sense. Mud is all clean here. May earned a skill point. How wonderful is that? We could make them faster and improve carrying capacity even more. In the short term, I think I'm gonna go for improved carrying. Another 400 kilogram carrying capacity, 800 in total. Yeah, it's worth it. As for Nisbet, eventually I would like her to get into demolition. I think we should start working on that also i need a operator maybe i should have taken that operator from the previous episode oh well you live and learn now these guys are already cramped again and that is because of the slug eggs so maybe we need a storage bin for the eggs wait even better we have this automatic dispenser and we could set this to all sweep only priority one for the time being then right here from my main two storages i'm actually gonna remove all the critter eggs and now if i go ahead clean up this room the eggs should be brought over here but all the other materials will be brought over there okay i think it's time to remove the rest of the slime here replacing them with a bunch of farm tiles and then in due time we should be able to get rid of these germs easily oh interesting they have yet another state of 1200 watts okay i kind of need to figure out what they need exactly because this guy here is hungry well maybe he ate earlier at this point we installed everything that's necessary and we are only 35 watts overboard so i don't really think we're going to be utilizing all of the watts at the same time we're not going to overload the cable that dramatically and therefore i would say we already start introducing the sinks and lavatories in order to do that we have to feed it a little bit of fresh water to just fill this up or alternatively we could also feed it the polluted water and first feed it into the water sieve Something else I haven't taken care of is the excess that we'll be getting. At some point, we'll fill everything up with the fresh water. It's going to queue up everywhere. And then the polluted water is going to queue up here, eventually filling everything up. Because with every poop, of course, the duplicates add a little something to the water. One easy way to deal with that would be to use a plant. So maybe instead of this bottle emptier, we're going to have a farm tile here. And this farm tile should be a hydroponic farm, which we haven't researched yet. There's also the refrigerator. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Refrigerator and hydroponic farms is the most notable things that we'll be getting from that research. And then maybe we can already set up a pump. This is going to be my fresh water pump. We bring this over first, I would say, and then over there. Though this pipe here is more or less temporary since we only need it initially to fill up the bathrooms. 
Also, maybe now I'm going to unlock more blueprints. I should have about six or nine queued up, depending on how long I haven't played yet. But we got a painting. We got basic crimson pants. We got Satsuma Glovelets. Basic orange pants, solid charcoal drywall, nice. Violet glitter atmo helmet, oh my gosh, are you serious? Magma diagonal drywall, the petal diagonal drywall, and apparently that was it in terms of blueprints, so maybe next week again. You know, I'm getting more than enough juice from my Plux Lux. I think I'm just gonna go overboard with my batteries. Add as many as possible here. Looks like we got rid of the slime lung germs, but now they got replaced by polluted germs, which is not much better. But the solution is the same. We just need fresh and clean oxygen to get rid of it. This means maybe I'm gonna replace this bottle emptier yet with another deodorizer. Yeah, I think that might be a good idea. And this is gonna definitely help out. Whoa! Research already completed. I just love my researcher. This goes so quickly. We have the fertilizer now. A refrigerator. So I might be replacing this guy here with a refrigerator. But I'm gonna do that once I got enough refined cobalt. For now, the hydroponic farm is the most important one that goes right here here okay and the pipe is going to directly lead into it and of course the thing we plant here is a thimble reed because it takes polluted water and we'll be using the excess polluted water from my duplicants to fertilize that plant with my water pump already in place let's go ahead and connect this like i don't want to go overboard with the amount of water we'll be using so i'm just gonna allow it to dribble up to this point and then we're gonna shut down the pump for a brief moment also for now i don't want it to continue beyond this point so we're gonna cut this pipe as well and it's only gonna go up to here and that means we can now get rid of the next set of wash basins and outhouses and we should be able to replace everything okay now these are already filled up and it's not gonna continue here okay so we can also already get rid of that connection there it goes let's add the second sink and there should be the second laboratory well me decided to give up on the deconstruction by the way we also unlocked the farm station not going to be using that for a while the park sign that is very useful and a radiation lamp with this actually already functioning yeah look at that we have the polluted water going through the water sieve and then of course fresh water is being delivered back again it would be delivered through this pipe here honestly so yeah actually i should be able to already do that if i connect this then the water should follow and just queue up very nice now the reason i don't really want to do that yet is because there are going to be some more sinks and laboratories and i want to first use the water here to fill it up and it cannot go into either direction there's always going to be a dedicated direction it goes to but yeah let me get rid of the last sinks here as well and get this finished well meep earned another skill point we're gonna continue inside plumbing that's for sure and we can upgrade your hat. Yet another achievement. We got the Royal Flush achievement, which is basically replacing all the wash basins and outhouses with laboratories and sinks. We already got Sheen here taking a shower. Seems to be enjoying it. Okay, there it is. So that was the second to last, and we almost used this up. This is very good. Let me get rid of these pipes. It is finally finished. We can close the pipe here. Let's maybe empty these pipes here so I can get rid of them. But yeah, as soon as the water here has queued up, then we need to be ready with the hydroponic farm. It has been built, and all the way at the back, we should have one thimble reed from this cavity here. Yeah, and then as of this point, we'll be able to get rid of the excess polluted water. Very nice. With that out of the way, we should be able to wrap up the episode in Dignity. We got the bathroom going. This should now also count towards the washroom. So we have already a bonus of plus two. Now we should also upgrade the mess hall to a great hall to get plus three morale. But morale wasn't really the issue. We'll get to that when it's necessary. Before we continue, really, I want to make sure that we clean up the rest of the base a little bit. If possible, I would like to have the entire base in clean oxygen so we don't spread the germs. For that purpose, I set up another deodorizer right here, and I actually want to put this into a separate system. So I'm just going to set up another jumbo battery, something very simple, maybe a manual generator, and connect this together. Then I will be taking away the connection right here, so we don't also have to upgrade this cable. We can leave it, and therefore have to two separate circuits. I'm still refining some material here in the rock crusher, so we'll see how that turns out. 
Okay, so starving plug slugs seem to be the ones that are only producing the 40 watts, and this is when I have to feed them. They seem to be eating 5 kilograms of ore, but I also noticed you can actually feed them the refined materials, which of course we have an infinite amount of, considering we have the cobalt volcano here. And I think even more, we also have a gold volcano and an aluminium volcano. So we could theoretically go for a lot of plug slug power in this playthrough. That would at least be very interesting interesting to me. Something we could do to help the carbon dioxide accumulate for the dust caps a little bit is add airflow tasks here and allow the carbon dioxide to actually go down. So everything that somehow lands here is then most likely forced down and then we can fill this up. At this point, I also want to move my rock crusher out of the way a little bit. I'm just going to put this all the way up and everything else that produces slight heat. Because up here, of course, we don't really care about the cooling mechanism. We can just let it free roam. Also, we got so much chew by now i think i'm gonna add a few more batteries just to take advantage of this a little bit more you know actually one thing we could do to save on materials is replace the cabling with heavy watt wire where we already know it's gonna happen like eventually i'm gonna replace everything here with heavy watt wire that is inside the ladder shaft at least for the starter base we will then set up a worker base somewhere else where it's compact and everything they need is gonna be together and of course then just using transit tubes to get them to the place where they need to Go. but right now being centralized is actually useful for me so of course the ultimate base is gonna have the cables mostly hidden but right here in this case i could save on time a little bit by replacing some of these wires here with the heavy watt version and therefore we don't need to use the conductive wires like for all of this and all of this this would be possible let's just go ahead and replace that i think that's gonna be fine this way i can maybe reduce the amount of cobalt we're still crafting i'm just gonna do 10 more crafts and then hopefully we have enough refined find materials until we can go for a smelting setup or maybe even tame one of the volcanoes. I'm also going to close off this part of the base here at the bottom because here we're just going to deal with the yucky lungs and on the top I would like to see the fresh air. Oh no, okay, so this duplicate sensor here isn't actually reaching the last toilet here with Jean because the dupe is registered on the left side of the tile. However, if I move the dupe sensor one over, then we'll cover both of the toilets. That should be good. The problem is with the ceiling light then. We can just switch them. Yeah, the ceiling light will then also reach all the toilets. Okay, just switch the sensor and the light and we're golden. So I'm assuming it's going to be the same way here. We have to move this one over so we cover the left side of the contraption and then the light here should also cover the left side yeah okay just move this one over also we should now be able to see the axis going right into the plant here and therefore we're getting some thimble reed useful of course to craft and repair the atmos suits Good, it looks like we managed to get rid of the germs and no more dupes got sick so far. Good, in my humble opinion, it is now time to move the research station upstairs. The supercomputer is also going to move here. I think we should have the space for the virtual planetarium on the left and the material study on the right side, at least for the beginning. And also we should be able to get rid of the manual generator and the jumbo batteries here as well. Yeah, I don't think we're going to need any of this shebang anymore. Let's also get rid of the cabling here. And and instead, I'm going to be adding it right there. Yeah. Now, of course, this is not really good for the decor value overall, the heavy watt wire. And the dupes are not going to be amused. But it's not the type of morale that we actually need in the beginning. That decor value only really becomes important once you have a whole bunch of skills assigned. Right now, it's much easier to just go for the room upgrades, for instance. Right here, we only need like a decor item. And we could even go with just some flower pots right there. And this would then already be upgraded to a great hall, giving us an additional plus three morale. And we should also have some seeds here, the Choya seeds from the printing pot or the Mallow seeds from the actual planetoid. We're gonna go with them. Now, I actually also have the space to set up another deodorizer here. This might help us, but let's also do this with heavy watt wire. I think at this point, I also wanna dig out the entirety of the starting biome so it stops off gassing. We can dig up four tiles like so, and we can dig down three. So all we need are ladders every eighth tile. One, two, three down, and the next ladder and this way we can efficiently build the ladders and still dig up everything. I also would like to gain access to all of this shebang now and of course figure out what type of volcano or geyser we have here. Now one thing you could do is go into priorities, choose the top 
priority and highlight this and this would allow you to check on the notifications what type of volcano it is but that is usually something I don't do since I dig over there anyways and it's not like it's going to influence my decisions over the next three cycles or so. Okay, we survived the first 50 cycles. I'm still missing a cook and a operator. The operator is almost more important because it will take quite a while until we reach mechatronics engineering. We don't need it right now, but you know, in about 30 cycles, it would be nice to have a mechatronics engineer capable of building more advanced infrastructure. I could have taken an operator earlier on that would have been better, I think. But this time around, we have Ren with plus four in machinery and plus four in science. The science is going to help him to improve quicker. So we're starting with four machinery plus the skill point we can assign. So six machinery and we also have immune to food poisoning and increased food morale bonus, which is not bad. Yeah, I have no problems taking Ren aboard. Let's print him and also give him a mess table. I'm gonna go ahead and put him into the second or so schedule. He should already have a bed, so let's head into the priorities. Operating is going to be his highest priority. We don't want to do any research though. And the second highest priority is going to be set to building. And I think what I'm going to do is lower tidying, storing and supplying. That looks about right. The next thing I would like to do is improve their schedule a little bit by cutting off the printing part here. And what we're basically going to do is cheese the duplicants to start working during their downtime. Looks like I have some more research points to assign. I'm not going to finish the analysis researcher just yet. I'm going to go into improved carrying first. As for me, I'm going to keep going here with sustainability training. That's plus two athletics, not too shabby. And then Ren is going to get into improved tinkering. So we can go straight for mechatronics engineering in, uh, let's see, it takes about six cycles per skill point. So we should be able to do it within the next 30 cycles. I also want to quickly set up a bottle emptier here in order to dump some liquids that I cannot currently use. For instance, I have some brine from the printing pot and I'm going to do sweep only for this bottle emptier. As for the pneumatic doors, the upper ones I'm just going to go ahead and lock and the lower ones I'm going to prevent duplicants from accessing the printing pot so they can only go out but not in. Let's for instance have a look at Nisbet and May. Right now they are eating and I set the downtime so they can barely eat something and then they have to work again. But now we can set the downtime all the way to until they get plus four morale. That would be a maximum of five downtime slots. Nisbet right here seems to be full now and what she's doing is uh, taking a shower or maybe going to the printing pot. Ooh, okay, so I see a problem. Maybe they take a shower every day, but that wouldn't even be the worst because once they took a shower, they shouldn't do it anymore. Now she's going to the printing pot and this part here I want to avoid. So as soon as the dupes are done showering, they want to go to something else that gives them pleasure, but I don't want them. It's the worker dupes. Only the hotel dupes are allowed to enjoy life, basically. But yeah, Nisbet is now just wasting her time socializing. I mean, who needs that? And now they are going back to work. So that is not satisfactory. I'm just gonna get rid of the brine here and then I'm gonna shut down this printing pot madness. So yeah, if we wanted to be really cruel and even make them work more, we could take apart the showers. For now, I'm not doing it because if somebody actually contracted the disease or germs, the shower might come in handy. We now got new uh, blueprints to unlock. Let's check this out. A dusky glitter. Ah, it's just a different balloon artist overjoyed response. Interesting. Ooh, look at this, a smog slug egg. I had absolutely no idea these existed. Good, now we can put this to the test again. They are going to sleep here and now they shouldn't be going in here anymore. So I'm only gonna allow them to go outside, not in. After sleeping, they are going to take a poop, of course, washing their hands and afterwards they're going to eat. So the eating part isn't solved very well because the ration box should be close to the mess tables, but we're gonna fix that. May is now eating, the downtime is still going on. Looks like they are taking a shower every day. So maybe we disable the buildings for the time being until they become important. But you can now see, May is going to store materials even before the downtime is over. So we can have maximum downtime without wasting dupe labor. So what we could do to make this better is disable the shower. Maybe when I see sick duplicates, I'm gonna enable it again. Again, but right now the dupe labor is important since we have fewer dupes in the beginning. Not that I'm in a hurry, we're gonna have all the time in the world to make this playthrough, but still, we wanna get somewhere. As for the mushrooms, we're now 
collecting more and more carbon dioxide, all of this eventually is going to come down here and fill up the room. Oh, I almost forgot. I, of course, also need to add the downtime here for the other schedules. To not lose the benefits of the light of the printing pot, we can set up another duplicate sensor here and then simply add a ceiling light. Very easy and straightforward. Ah, I love to see it. My first dust caps are now starting to grow. Well sporadically but still we had more than enough food so far as a matter of fact i think i'm gonna uproot all of the bog jellies here on the top and eventually we're gonna replace them with something else we still have over 200 tons of polluted dirt and when it comes to breathability we're not doing very well at the moment so i think i'm gonna set up the same system we have here on the left side also on the right side this can still be part of the same circuit here there we go amari with another skill point rocket piloting and suit training or improved carrying first honestly he's not dependent on the 400 kilograms extra weight i'm gonna go for rocket piloting and then suit sustainability training by the way now that we have the mellow seats we should also see the upgrade here to a great hall uh, somebody please build this mess table thank you oh no <sighs> look at that we got joshua 14 cuisine oh i'm so tempted but he's got flatulent which is not something i want for my worker force Natural gas should be above oxygen, I believe. Either above or below. But it's definitely going to be above the carbon dioxide. Ah, we have to do it. Otherwise, it's the second cook I would decline. And I think I'm just testing my luck this way. Oh, yeah, let's do it. Oh, I'm so sorry, base. I'm so sorry. Maybe it's not even that bad. Joshua, welcome aboard. Yes, I'm going to put him directly into grilling, of course. And that means now we need an electric grill. I think I'm going to put it on top of here. I don't want to spread any more heat towards the plants. How far can they go? They can only go to 30 degrees. We're already at 24. This is contributing the sludge press as well yeah we're gonna avoid overdoing it and i'm just gonna set up the cooking station here let me see let's get started with a simple micro musher is there a kitchen room by now i think there is i never built that we need a spice grinder electric grill or gas range refrigerator no mess table what the heck is the spice grinder we could definitely go yeah let's just go for that and set up a kitchen why not we need an electric grill as well but first i want the egg cracker and micro musher sure there makes more sense to me this way i can have my ceiling right there and a door a door and some airflow tiles here and maybe also there and there oh actually i might not want to do that i'm not yet sure i want to keep the hydrogen just a little longer and then we just hook it up this way for the time being yeah i'm so stupid i just realized the plug slugs are actually creating the hydrogen of course it's not a huge source of hydrogen, but it is a little something. So we could even replace this manual generator with a hydrogen generator. And since we are only doing the lights, this would probably be no issue. Nisbet earned another skill point. Very nice. We're going to keep going towards the path of demolition. We're going to need that to take apart tables like these. Let's actually already hit the button there. As for the ration box right now, I think I want to replace it with two fridges. Because right now we are accumulating the bog jelly and otherwise it's just going to go bad. Very 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 quickly here we have two fridges i might be removing them very shortly again because i don't know the situation yet it would be ideal to just store the food here or at least a certain amount of it so the bulk of the food could be stored here temporarily and then just a little bit in the great hall for consumption so i'm gonna set to all edible and to priority eight and then maybe right over here we have another fridge that we can hook up it's just gonna take 120 watts while it's actively cooling and then 20 watts while being idle and we should be able to see that now it's cooling all the way down to i don't know four degrees or so which now only takes away five percent of freshness per cycle instead of 18 which is really good then this fridge here also all but we're gonna have priority nine and we're gonna only do five kilograms or so that's enough for five dupes at a time eh, let's maybe do four and here we can see it's already full now it's not in sterile environment it's in contaminated air oh that's not good there should be yeah okay this is contaminated but if it's not contaminated it's not gonna be that bad uh are we gonna get rid of this i'm not sure maybe well time will tell before i forget i want to put joshua maybe into this schedule here and then we also want to sort out his priorities naturally cooking is going to be the highest priority apart from toggling and then i think i want to avoid digging and supplying maybe he can help out with storing a little bit operating should maybe have the second to highest priority and tidying 
should be the lowest. That would be stuff like mopping or disinfecting. Let's keep it at that for now and see how it turns out. Wonderful. The kitchen is in place. We can set up the recipes. I'm going to do forever mushrooms and swampy delights. And of course, also the barbecue. Always eat the barbecue instead of the meat. Sure. That also means we want to go into consumable and disallow everything that we don't want, such as the raw meat and the raw bok jelly, the raw mushrooms. And I'm even going to disallow the raw paku fillets. And we're also going to cook them forever. The good thing about cooking food is you also get rid of any food poisoning germs that were in in there they're then going to be stored in here again in the sterile environment so let's wait for joshua to do his thing there he is coming with raw ingredients looks like he's going to deliver a bunch of them first and now we are finally cooking for the first time. Suppressed notifications mod is unfortunately not working, so we see this annoying insufficient resources tag. Let's now see this in action. Amari, where are you going? Ooh, that's not good. Why aren't you going to this refrigerator? So he rather goes all the way over here. Is that because we don't have the delicious food in here? Ah, the food we have in here, of course, I just disallowed. Okay. That makes sense. So let's remove everything and only add the cooked version. So barbecue, fried mushrooms and swampy delights. We need to wait for the cooked seafood still. Much better. Now we have the right food in here. It's gonna go that minus 6% per cycle. That's not much at all. It's gonna survive. So we can now see Meep going to the toilet and he should also be taking the food from there. Go, 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 go. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Tell me what you're thinking, Meep. About slime? Yeah, I figured. At this point, I would say we're going to create a little bit more sand. We have over 200 tons of sedimentary rock. Let's do 99 crafts. Get that sand number up again. Let's now also replace this with a heavy watt chime plate and some heavy watt wire. Also, I always forgot. Nisbet should have the highest priority in attacking. I totally missed that. But luckily, I got reminded uh, two or three times. <laughs> By the way, you can now see the effects of the farting dupe. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I find the idea intriguing. You know what would be funny? To have all the hotel guests be flatulent dupes and then use that to our advantage to create whatever. But it looks like the natural gas is gonna settle below the oxygen layer. Good. Judging from the situation here and your comments, the meteor showers we are experiencing here have the potential to become problematic even before we breach the surface. So everything might actually heat up eventually and the one problem and the very specific challenge about beginning this series is gonna be to get the necessary iron to craft steel for bunker tiles. And I figured as long as we don't breach the surface we don't really need it but we might have to build a temporary barrier to prevent stuff from getting out of hand. And then we need to explore space ASAP and figure out where we can find the iron ore. So that is going to have a priority. So far, I believe the meteor showers are coming about every 15 cycles. If that is correct, we should have another one around cycle 60. We did the next research, so we now have access to the spice grinder. I'm going to set that up. Let's see what we can do with it. Probably make the food better, but I suspect we're still missing the pinch up pepper nuts to do so. Let's maybe have a look at the Atmo suits. This should be easily researchable. We have to do a whole bunch of research though. Let's have a look at that. We first want to do improved ventilation. Yeah, that is going to be useful together with the Atmo sensor and the high gas pressure vent. We get some decorative items, some drywall. That could be interesting. And then of course the Atmo suits, the forge and the checkpoints. Good. My researcher is going to be working on that. Very nice. Let's set up another deodorizer. We still cannot really keep up with the sublimation stations. But it is looking much better when it comes to breathability. It looks like I failed to protect my dust caps. I'm gonna close this off and make it available from this side with ladders. So just get a heavy watch on plate here instead. And we're gonna forget this whole situation ever happened. Meep now is gonna get into pyrotechnics, which allows him to use the blast shot maker, but we're gonna get to that later. Gonna add some airflow tasks here on the sides. So the hydrogen is moving up a little bit quicker. We're accumulating it at the top at the moment, so we can use it anytime. Ren earned another skill point. Let's put it into improved carrying first. I'm gonna need that either way. The problem is we cannot really keep up with the rate of deodorizers we have going on. So it's nonsense to add more even if I continuously use the rock crusher to make more sand. So maybe in certain areas we have to cut our losses, be a little bit patient. It could very well be that the sand problem is solved with the second planetoid. But I don't think the iron problem will be solved. 
Well, I think it's time to figure that out. Yeah, let's just build something over here. By the way, you can use shift in order to build a straight line. A little nugget of convenience there. Oh, okay. There's some slime emitting here and we cannot actually reach it. Yeah, I think I want to build a ladder down here just in case we need to pick this up. I don't want any slime off gassing. By the way, in terms of duplicants in the beginning, I'm going for more specialized duplicants. Later on, I want more duplicants that have a variety of interests, especially the duplicants I'm sending on different planetoids. But the ones staying on the main planetoid will mostly have one specific task to do, and that's why I want them to have a very high beginning skill. We're still missing a farmer that is dedicated, by the way. But other than that, I will also look out for duplicants that have a variety of interests. Very good would be a combination of operating, suit wearing, building, digging, anything really that I can use on a different planetoid and assign many skills. However, in this case, of course, I'm going to go for the sand that is absolutely incredible in our specific situation right now. No question. Okay, very good. I made my way to the teleporter. We can now go ahead and analyze them, maybe see the destination. It's called Blizzona, and we'll find some cool slush guys here. Chlorine vent, hot polluted oxygen vent, and some minor volcano. Let's oversee the planetoid here on the surface. This seems to be a cold planetoid. Chlorine gas vent here on the top left. And oh no, ah, this is so disappointing. Ah, I was kind of hoping that I wouldn't find iron. On the other side, thinking about the meteor showers, we desperately need the iron, but this is going to make it much easier. Even if we just find a little bit of iron here in the crust, this probably means we find some more down at the bottom. Good, then the question is, do we still need to build something here or should we just have a quick sneak peek over there? Maybe in the next episode, we're just going to send over our builder in order to take care of preparing the planetoid for another duplicant. Maybe we can even use the frozen duplicant we'll find there. We are currently still establishing our starter base. You have to imagine that none of this is gonna exist in the future. We will be making a dedicated worker base, maybe on the second planetoid, I'm not sure yet. And then this planetoid eventually could become the hotel and the petting zoo. We'll see about that. More concerning right now is that we are slowly but surely getting into troubles here on the surface. It seems you are one or two meteor showers away here from breaching the surface. So I think investing research time into the bunker task could be the solution to go for. At the same time, we're also researching the metal refinery and the metal task. So yeah, both of these researches are going to be useful. However, we do need some applied science research for this. So maybe we should go ahead and research that first, which is right here together with the material study. In terms of radiation, we don't have many options, but we might have some options here on the second planetoid. We also have some skill points to give out. I think now would be the time to get into rocket piloting so eventually we can do the data analysis researcher but i might first go with suit sustainability training yeah let's do that rocket training as for Joshua, it's clear we're gonna get into grilling too so that is out of the way and may i might want to start with the research tree for them yeah i'm gonna wait for nisbet's next downtime and then i'm gonna send her over to the second planetoid to check it out and maybe prepare it for a permanent duplicant i also removed a lot of the deodorizer so we can accumulate more sand which of course means we are having more polluted oxygen so i decided to also put a deodorizer here that is protecting our refrigerator Wonderful. Nisbet is done with her downtime. Let's go ahead and send her to the teleporter. There we go. Are you ready? Let's do it. Have a good journey. Oh, here we go. Wow. She didn't even get printed. I love the printing animation. Over here we have 13,000 kilocalories. We do have some Weezwords that we could bring over to generate radiation. And we also have pips. Very nice. Now looking around, there's a lot of aluminium, but actually not a lot of iron so far. So maybe I was wrong and we don't even have enough iron. By the way, we should start digging a little bit here. We get igneous rock. So we can use the igneous rock to build a ladder up here and maybe another one there. And then we're going to build our infrastructure on the top there. It looks like the entire planetoid is really cold. So growing crops on here might be an issue. The teleporter back home is located down here, which is something I can reach eventually. Let's go all the way down with this ladder. When it comes to oxygen for now, we're going to live off the oxalite here. And I'm not going to yet defrost the friend here. Nisbet is much quicker anyways. Good, I now have access to the material study terminal. In order to run that, I would need a whole bunch of coal, which I still don't have large quantities of. 
Yeah, 17 tons is not gonna get us anywhere and the material study terminal is gonna take 120 watts to run. And if we want to collect wrap bolts, we could use the manual generator. Maybe there's some uranium to be found. And if that doesn't work, we'll have to go for the rat bolt generator. But this one here sucks 480 watts, which means I cannot really supply it with a manual generator. We would have to upgrade it. It doesn't look like this planetoid comes with meteor showers. How about the light? It is bright so a good candidate for solar panels. The solar panels are just one research away, also applied science, but that still means I cannot do the applied science on this planetoid, at least not from the start. So the easiest would be to get a Weasword on this planetoid, let it produce some radiation and charge up the material study terminal this way. Let me just go ahead and set this up here. We can get rid of the ladder and then the material study terminal could reside somewhere. Mm, this is not good. It really should be on the other side so my dupe can work safely. Let's put the box over here and a little bit up and then we're just gonna make a wall of radiation protection. Eventually we could use better materials but for now I think this is gonna be fine. At least when it comes to to these words they don't penetrate the walls quite as well so i'm gonna put the material study terminal approximately here that should be fine maybe let's leave the upper row here free in order to access the power wire on blazona then i want to get to the closest wheeze ward which i think is here and we're just gonna dig it up and then eventually i want to bring it to this conveyor loader but i think we need our researcher in order to activate this yeah requiring the field research skill so before we send over the researcher, I want to make sure we find the other teleporter and maybe even get to analyze some geysers. On the second planetoid, I'm already going to inspect everything so we get the data banks. Okay, then I would say we're gonna give Nisbet something to do here. We're gonna start with the basics. We need some toilets, we need a great hall, and we need a bedroom. Let's set up a laboratory here. In this world, I'm gonna give them a shower because there's more radiation pollution, and the shower might help in that regard. Naturally, we're also gonna need a sink, and that should be everything for the bathroom. Let's also set up some doors. Actually, thinking about it, I should first build the bedroom. That makes more sense the way they actually use the facilities. So let's say this is going to be our bedroom for up to three duplicates. And then we're going to have the bathroom with the laboratory, shower and sink. Well, it's just going to be a barracks, but at least we can accommodate three duplicates. And then finally, we need three mess tables, get a water cooler in the joint as well as a flower pot. And then finally, I'm also going to set up a fridge. Then on the very end here, we still have the space to maybe set up a small power system. Let's go with a generator and then just a jumbo battery with bunch of wires. For now, we only have to support the fridge, but there will be more, such as the water sieve. Speaking of the water sieve, we're gonna set this up right here. Oh, there's also some mealwood. So this could be another plant that we're going for now. And we also have oxyburn. Very nice. Either way, we're gonna set up the water sieve now right there. Also get some plumbing hooked up here in a loop. And this will go up. Uh, let's only make it go up one and then all the way over into the sieve. Now, is this a problem temperature wise? It might eventually become a problem. Let's head into research and I'm now interested in researching the insulated tile. Are we researching something currently? Yeah, I think we're going for the wrap bolt generator. It can wait a moment. I want the insulated tile and maybe even the space heater is going to be useful. Okay, I think I found our first interplanetary duplicate here, Lyra. She's got suit wearing, researching and rocketry. And if we look at the skills for an interplanetary dupe we definitely want the rocket piloting and we want exosuit wearing there will be a lot of light skills and we only use the morale for mechatronics engineering yeah i think we have to do it but i'm not going to print her right now because we would have to feed her well at the moment we have enough food actually i forgot about the super duper hard digging we still need morale for that as well but still she's good yeah, what the heck, we can support her. We can already print her. Let's just forget about caution. Lyra, welcome to the party. What are you going to do first? Well, I guess we're going to do the free skill here. Or maybe if we put the points into research, she's going to learn a little bit quicker. That might be good to begin with. For now, I'm going to put Lyra here into the last schedule. And in terms of priorities, she's going to be an overall dupe. She should be allowed to help out with farming. And then we got some decorating. We got cooking she's definitely gonna prioritize rocketry 
and she's allowed to do doctoring. Well, that might not be useful. And she's also allowed to do the attacking. Just researching is going to be for the researcher and rancher I'm not going to do on a different planetoid. We'll just probably send over the food. In this case, I'm probably just going to disallow cooking as well. In the meantime, on Blizzona, we're making some progress. Nisbet is sleeping. She will want to pee at some point, but we are not at the risk of actually polluting something. So I'm just going to allow her to pee on the floor once. Also, the upper layer here, I'm probably going to make out of insulated material. Let's maybe get that sorted out first. Oh, there it is. Nice bed. It's all good. We're all looking away. All good. Nice. Research completed. We got access to the insulated tile. This is basically not going to allow any heat from seeping through, at least not the kind of heat we're seeing here. And I want to insulate everything that will have to do with our bathroom loop. Maybe we're even going to have to protect it a little further all the way down to here. Looks like Nisbet already slept inside the bed. Where's she going? Ah, of course, grabbing some food. And then she's enjoying her meal in her own soil. Good times, good times. I think temporarily for Nisbet, I have to enhance tidying because honestly, the poop all over the place is still a little bit disgusting. You know, that's a funny dupe. Farming nine in agriculture, but then allergic reaction to floral scent. Good joke there. Nisbet, in the meantime, is making her way all the way down to the teleporter. And there is actually the other teleporter. Very nice. So maybe we can also already dig over there. On the main planetoid, we're just gonna make some progress here with the digging project. Even without our digger, we can do quite a bit of it. And then I'm also gonna process my sandstone to sand forever. And another thing we can do is eggshell to lime. We even have four tons of fossil that we can refine into lime already getting ready to smelt some steel later on. By the way, cycle 69. My theory with the meteor showers is not working out. The next meteor shower was now way more than 15 cycles. But let's see, is this site here gonna survive or not? I mean, it also depends whether or not we experience a strike over there. There was a minor strike. Yeah, I think we're gonna be good this time around. But there are definitely some breaches now going on. We can see that happening and our time is limited. One thing we could do to get ahead of the curve is already set up the smelting area, for instance, in this cold biome. We could really also do it at the bottom. This might be the easier solution. And then we also have all of these volcanoes. Though it would be interesting to activate a volcano and then just utilize the chill we have going on in the surrounding blocks. You know what? I might actually be willing to test this out. We're already gonna reveal the volcano here. Right now it is already in a vacuum. So maybe we can preserve the vacuum before we make our way in. All we really need is a bottle emptier and then doing this right. Uh, let's just make it the safe way. Just adding a little liquid lock to make it in there safely. We will then be using some igneous rock in order to insulate the volcano. Maybe only... Yeah, let's just go and make it as small as possible. Uh, we're gonna give it some breathing room. I think Nisbet enjoyed a proper toilet now. She's been messing around for a couple of days, but this has an end right now. Just need to hook up this pump and... Oh no, consequences. Um, okay, okay, we can save this. But it sucks. Nisbet, where are you? How can we fix this? This is just gonna swap over. I don't like this. So maybe, just maybe, we'll be quick enough to open up this pocket here and then allow the liquid to just drop down. Uh, is she gonna do it? No, she's going to sleep. Of course. Well, Good night, Nisbet. It's not like we need you right now. We're, we're screwed. Now the water is going to drop all the way down. <sighs> okay, I hate to do it, but Nisbet, you slept enough. You now need to make room. That's more important. So I'm quickly going to put her into the next schedule. And then she should go back to work. Okay, 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 okay. I think we can prevent the worst from happening and still collect a lot of water down here. No, Nisbet! Okay. <laughs> It's my fault. It's my fault. Don't worry. Don't worry. But maybe if we mop this up, like with high priority, she's going to do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. No. And there we go. We did it. Was that so hard, Nisbet? Was that so hard? Now there's no more time. Let's put her into that schedule just for one moment. No. I want Nisbet in here. Well, in this case... I would say we're gonna build this pump somewhere else. I can bring this down, no problem. Liquid pump goes here and the power wires as well. 
By the way, we already had a minor radiation sickness, even though I only had like 35 rats or so. That's kind of crazy. I'm already curious how this will turn out. Recently, we just researched the power control station. We got access to the smart battery. I also got access to the rat bolt generator that we'll be placing with obsidian somewhere up here. Maybe we're just gonna have two or three in a row. We'll see. Let's build one. And now when it comes to research, I wanna go for the solar panel next. We got some more skills to give out. Ren, first of all, is going to get into electrical engineering. Meep right here. Eventually, I want to make quicker. So we're going to get into rocket piloting. As for Armari, let me see. Suit sustainability probably now. Yeah, let's do it. And then Nisbet on the other planetoid, I'm going to put into demolition. Right now on the other planetoid, she doesn't have the required morale. So I'm just going to wait with that. Also, I need to allow my duplicates to get in in order to get their skill points properly well they would still be getting the skill points technically but it's still better i don't know what it does really nice looks like joshua earned another skill point i'm gonna invest that into improved carrying in the meantime we're almost done here all i need is a little bit of power so we probably need to prioritize that or maybe it's time to defrost the friend why not let's go ahead and see what we actually get come on nisbet give me something good it is and Ari. Hello, Ari. Welcome to the tribe. What can you do? Some skills in science and cuisine. He's also interested in research, operating and grilling. This is wow. This is great. He has a decreased bathroom use speed. He has a lower germ resistance. He's an ugly crier and a sticker bomber. Okay, very interesting. Let's see. I want him in the first schedule. That is probably fine. Actually, I might not want that since Nisbet is on the planetoid as well. I'm going to put him here into the last schedule. In terms of priorities, he's going to spend his time on this planetoid. He should be able to do everything, including maybe decorating rocketry i don't know doctoring attacking just everything to the same priority also gonna allow him to do some farming now it would be great if you started by well okay never mind thank you very much and now we can utilize the machine here if we hook this up for a brief moment we should be able to fill up the necessary things that's already good enough i'm just gonna allow this to fill up the toilets and i just see i built the water sieve the wrong way around no wait a second i don't think i had it the wrong way around yeah geez what am i talking about good at this point i think i want to send over my researcher for a brief moment Chin, you can do it Use that teleporter, make me proud. There you go, let's teleport over, maybe inspect these guys as well. And then as soon as we're here, I just want to go ahead and activate the two teleporters. Chin should be going for them right away because it's a research task. Going to change setting, yeah, there we go. Activating the teleporter, very nice. There's another thing I would like to install here and that is a rock crusher. We're just going to go ahead and hook that up. And I'm also going to bring the cable all the way down here to the conveyor loader. Both my teleporters are already activated that is essentially everything i wanted to do we're gonna set up some mesh tasks here and then send gene back as for the conveyor loader there are a few things that i would like to collect for instance well just everything that i don't necessarily want on this planetoid that might even be the critter eggs maybe we want to collect them on the first planetoid to set up the zoo then in terms of filtration medium we still need sand on this planetoid so we're not gonna send that over but i'm gonna send over the data banks that's for sure it might be interesting to send over all of the ice and snow and polluted ice and i definitely want to send over the iron ore so we might have to dig some up in order to get some gene is using the teleporter so he can go back thank you very much for activating everything and before i forget we probably have to do that here on this planetoid too where are my teleporters here activate and activate wait nisbet making more messes that can only mean the water sieve is not doing its thing i just don't get it let's cut it this way and now wait yeah this way it should be going inside okay better and now all we need is the filtration medium we can go with igneous rock we also have a little bit of sandstone here but igneous rock is what we're mostly getting from this planetoid let's do 50 crafts and that should be enough to get the water sieve started let's set up some more skill points lira for instance I want her to go the rocket piloting route, right? Eventually, she's also going to need the field research. I think for now, I want her to be a little bit more useful when shipping materials. 
and then Nisbet could go either into Demolition or Improved Carrying too. Uh, I think I'm gonna finally do the Demolition skill here. Yeah, let's even give her the cap. And then as for Ari, I'm gonna start with Advanced Research. Let me see, do we even need that? Not necessarily. Well, we'll be needing the Field Research. So Advanced Research and Field Research. He's improved in Science a little bit and that makes him quicker in learning. I think I'm also gonna give him the crazy Field Research cap. And then we're also gonna go towards the improved tinkering route. Right now, I don't really need it, but carrying capacity could be useful. There is my metal ore, so it should finally appear in the conveyor loader. Iron ore. I'm also gonna send over some eggshells, maybe the Archie that we find here. Polluted dirt can also move over rot piles, slime. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the entire organic category can move over. I'm gonna send over the fossils since we're processing that there. And then I'm also gonna send over all of the seeds. Allow manual use and then a duplicate can come and just bring that here. It will be automatically brought over as long as we have enough juice to support it. But there we go. That's a pretty good start to the beginning of this world i'm gonna leave nisbet for a couple more cycles in order to help with the digging process but afterwards ari is gonna have to handle it himself also, I want to make sure that we finally get the toilet going. I just wanted to show you that we also experience meteor showers here on the second planetoid. However, these ones are really interesting because it is oxalite and it doesn't seem to be damaging anything. If we just check out this meteorite, it is creating some oxalite tiles without destroying any of the other ones. There are also other types of asteroids in this, such as this one here, which is just named a dust fluff meteor. It is creating some regolith, but it is it's also not damaging any materials. So we wouldn't have to set up any bunker tiles here and we might get away creating oxygen using the oxalite here. We just have to bring it down in time. Now, I don't really think we can actually do this in time. However, we can try just going up without a ladder and therefore also make it harder for the gases to escape. Then we might be able to collect some of this oxalite here and immediately bring it back downstairs. We could set up a storage right here, maybe some air flow tiles at the bottom and then kind of wall the storage bin in. Nisbet thankfully is already on the task. Very nice I gotta say. I can still count on her. So by the time we get the next meteor shower we should be taking full advantage of that. Until then let's set up a fire pole as well and then maybe just continue the ladder. But I want to emphasize digging up the oxalite we already have here so we can immediately bring it down before it evaporates away. We can then also install a mechanized airlock right here in order to prevent the gases from escaping. And if we wanted, we could even continue the wire all the way up in order to make this faster. Alert surface breach. Yes, we know that. I got my storage bin in place here. We're gonna target oxalite, set this to the highest priority. And now I also want to speed up the building of this. So now Ari should be bringing the oxalite. Yeah, because we have it at priority 9 and he's bringing it down here. Oh no. We got Ari with a radiation sickness already. How many rats do you have? You have 39 rats and that already gives you a minor radiation sickness. This is... Wow, okay. We gotta be slightly careful about this. So I think for now I'm not gonna dig too far away. Maybe just the stuff that is closest. Oh no, Nisbet did something terrible. Ah, why did you do that? How are you gonna get down now? Uh, do I have materials? We have some mafic rock right here. If we dig that up, I should be able to build a mafic rock ladder. Mafic rock, build that here. And also highest priority. And so nobody has to die. Okay, wait. Are we storing the oxalite? Ari, how are you doing? 65 rats. Not good. But it's still just minor radiation sickness. Now I need to be careful. As soon as I open this up, we're gonna have the full load of radiation well it's barely safe so i think what i want to do is emphasize building the mechanized airlock so right now we have what what is that 179 rats per cycle and now with the airlock ooh, that changed nothing 140 yeah okay it takes away about 40 rats so maybe we even build two more of these guys now for some reason they don't want to store the oxal ah of course <laughs> i'm such an idiot 
Yeah, let's take that away. Now we're actually storing the oxalite in the correct spot. And once we replace these tiles with airflow tiles, we should be filling up the interior of the base as well. Now let's check out Nee's bed, currently 34 rads. And once she uses the toilet, she loses what? Okay, I think that is also much more with the lower setting. Now she's washing her hands. That doesn't get rid of any rads. Good. There are now my airflow tiles. Let's have a look at the oxalite here. Is it even off-gassing? At least it looks like there is new oxygen coming in from the top. Yeah, there's definitely something happening here. Okay, good. You know, I realized there's one problem here. They use the toilet, then they try to wash their hands, but all they do is stand here, grab their food with the food poisoning still on them, and then they wash their hands with the food, and then they go eat. So that is entirely bad, and one way we can fix that is by putting the fridge over there. Printing some murf leaf seeds for the first time, that's also just a decorative plant. By the way, on the main planetoid everything should be good. Let's pick up the eggs here. Slowly but surely the bathroom loop here is filling up and that means we need to take care of the excess. And I think what I'm gonna do is just drop it down so it drops all the way down and it will be frozen and therefore shipped over to the main planetoid. On the main planetoid my biggest concern right now is making it inside of the gold volcano so I'm gonna emphasize building this part here a little bit. By now we have accumulated quite a bit of sand so I think we should be able to install more deodorizers. Yeah let's go ahead and do that. May also got yet another skill point. What should we go for? What do we eventually need? The problem is always we at least need super hard digging so there's gonna be another three morale points spent into that but most of the the time may is just gonna be in space it's gonna be a space dupe maybe with some field research but i don't know yet let's just go for rocketry but in the short term probably exosuit training is more beneficial i'm gonna lock it in this pip is emptying my storage you bastard come on i'm gonna take you on what i already got a major radiation sickness with only a hundred rats Oh jeez, this playthrough is gonna be horrible. But at least it's gonna force me to at least use some radiation protection. And what is this freaking shine bug? Just get out of my base. Okay, now we're down to 100 rats and all the way down here, it's barely anything. Okay, so it's mostly safe. Yeah, now we got some radiation vomiting. That's just gonna be part of the course, but it's good. We need to get it out of the system. There's uh, more rats going. Ari, right, you're doing a good job. Major radiation sickness, if you didn't know, in normal mode is 300 rats. And here it is just above 100. Let me actually see, does showering help anything? 67 rats and after showering the same. Well, too bad. Also, by the way, major radiation sickness uses minus 4 athletics, 50% stamina and 30% increased bathroom use speed. Jeez, it's not something we want to deal with on the regular. Okay, you know, at this point, I might even be able to send Nisbet back in order to relax a little bit on the friendly home planetoid. However, before we do that, I would like to demolish everything I need to demolish, like these lamps here. We're not going to be able to reach everything in a reasonable time. Well, maybe in the name of exploration, I can make my way down here. We're going to inspect and rummage these guys, demolish that light, and that hopefully was everything. Maybe there's another something here, but then, alas... So finally, I'm gonna make my way through here. Demolish that thing. What is this? This just belongs to the filing cabinet. Doctorate degree. Cheese. Demolish. Landscape portrait. Demolish. Director's desk. Demolish. What is this? Pedestal. That's fine. This can stay. Okay, it looks like we at least need a little bit of support. Maybe with a simple oxygen diffuser. Set this up here at the bottom and then get a cable down there. Also, before I forget, refrigerator goes to the other side. And then instead of sending Achi over to the main planetoid where we are currently not using it, we could send over the Achi... Hmm, we only have four tons of slime. Oh my gosh. Sorry for the distraction. How much is this using? Just four kilograms a cycle. Okay. Should last for a while. Let's see, my current way over here to the teleporter is not very convenient. Would be nicer to maybe use this path here. So build a ladder up there and then we can easily go over and we can even collect some more algae. And then we send over the algae, organic algae. All the algae we can find, we're just gonna send over to the second planetoid. Let me actually think, we also have like 229 tons of polluted dirt. Considering the algae might be really useful for early space, 
space missions, I think I'm just gonna send over polluted dirt. So forget about that. But that still means we need a little bit of power over there. I think this is easy enough. Just sending it over this way. I'm even gonna take the opportunity to set up a couple more batteries. My plug slugs are just doing a too good job to not take advantage of it. On the main planetoid by now I feel like I don't need the entire dupe labor anymore so I'm gonna enable the showers and they're actually quite beneficial when it comes to certain states. It cures sopping wet, soggy feet, minor and major eye irritation and it also gives plus three morale so we can go a little bit further with the skill points. And especially the eye irritation by now is something that might be useful since we accumulated quite a bit of hydrogen. Speaking of skill points, we have some more to give out. Before we do data analysis researcher, I'm just going to go for suit sustainability training to make Gene even faster. As for Ren, we want to rush the mechatronics engineering. Well, we don't really have to rush it, but there you go. I just want this part of the tech tree out of the way. Okay, I think on the home planetoid, since we're missing the main builder, I need to prioritize some of that stuff here, especially when it comes to getting that conveyor loader ready. We're almost running out here of oxygen and I'm totally ready here with my sublimation station. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to send Nisbet back home and I'm going to leave Ari to his own devices. There we go. Time to go back home, Nisbet. I hope you had a good trip. It looks like we're slightly overproducing the food and I believe we can just send over the swamp chart hearts to the second planetoid. I'm gonna add that to the list here. Edible, we got swamp chart hearts. They're just gonna stay fresh forever on the second planetoid. And so I don't have to worry for approximately 100 cycles together with the food we already have there. It finally happened. Allow manual use. And I'm gonna give this a little bit of priority but just until somebody got the errand that's good and then we can set it back to priority five if we can get started with a thousand kilograms of polluted dirt that will arrive here on the second planetoid wonderful then we can already get the sublimation station going supplying critical materials that is exactly what i want you to do ari perfect there it goes. That was actually the polluted dirt from the water sieve, which is why we already ran out again. But there we go. We can now get this started just with two deodorizers because I still have to produce the sand myself, which we are still doing here with Igneous Rock. Let's just put this to 90 crafts. And I also made my way in here. So it's time to set up the liquid lock. I'm just going to do some auto bottling here with normal water. Maybe we can even make use of what we have going on here. We can make a pitcher pump out of granite. This is what I have lying around here. Let's see if Nisbet... No, Nisbet is not doing it. Who is doing it? May. I want Nisbet to do it. She's already here. So I'm just going to move her over. And before she gets a new job, I'm going to set that up again. And now nobody is doing it. Come on. Thank you. Okay, finally. We got that pitcher pump and now we can easily deliver the water. I'm also going to dig up here a little bit in order to get access to that polluted dirt that will off gas a little bit and allow my dupes to breathe. Oh, wait a second. Of course, we first have to insulate that stuff. Yeah, that's not going to fly otherwise. In the meantime, on the second planetoid, breathability is going up again and we are still on all the building projects. So I guess we can continue by starting to dig up some of the planetoid. I don't necessarily want to dig up everything because we have a lot of cooling potential in this, but a tiny bit won't hurt us. Also, I really would like to see another fire pole here, maybe. And then, of course, we also need to start digging out some of the iron here that we can find. I'm also transporting away all of the debris that is still cold, so the water cannot be influenced anymore. Looks like we have some more skill points to give out. Let's get started with Lyra. Let me see. Unlike May, Lyra is going to be a dupe I want to leave on a planetoid. So rocket piloting isn't going to be as important. That means we might get away just doing field research and then invest into digging and maybe tinkering. I'm going to do field research for the time being and also give her the hat. As for Joshua, we're going to continue with rocket piloting so we can get into the suit sustainability. And Amari, let me think, Amari, you could just finish off with exosuit training. Finally, Ari is kind of the same as Lyra. So we are done here. We don't need the rocket piloting except for the suit sustainability and we'll be needing mechatronics engineer so i think i should get started on that with that out of the way i'm gonna give my dupes access here quickly and also grab the materials i printed from the printing part 
Now, even if we don't have it yet on this planetoid, I'm already gonna set the meal lice actually to be cooked into lice loaf. Only do that if you have enough water. We should have enough because it costs 50 kilograms of water just to add 500 kilocalories. Thinking about it, this is not really worth it. Yeah, we do have the time to just cook it and make it preserve a little bit better. Like we could be making pickled meal out of it. Sure, we only should do the lice loaf if we are desperate for kilocalories. Calories. Looks like my liquid lock here is stable enough. We can take this apart and keep going with the build. Looks like some of our swamp chart hearts just entered the world here. We have another 10 cycles time. But of course we're delivering this entire ration here. Maybe, yeah, somebody should be picking that up. We can bring it directly over to the conveyor loader to the second planetoid. Nothing is gonna happen. Right up here I want to build my smeltery. But today I want to wrap up by getting into the volcano and checking things things out a little bit. We can dig away all the tiles except for this one here if we want to keep it over pressured. And of course everything is gonna remain inside a vacuum. We can even dig up this gold which is gonna give us 400 kilograms of refined material. Great and just like that we now have 95,000 kilocalories that's enough to survive 100 cycles. Well 95 cycles technically but we also still have lots of hexalent fruit to harvest. Speaking of harvesting let's go ahead and do that. And check this out. This is the other planetoid. I don't get why they can't fix it. Ah, maybe it has something to do with the zoom mod. Yeah, I usually probably wouldn't be able to see the other planetoid, but it's kind of funny. They are all next to each other. I think with Ari, I need to prioritize life support a little bit. So we should probably do that with Lyra as well. Now we're actually delivering something to the deodorizer and it can get to work here with the polluted oxygen. Also, Ari should be attacking whenever I tell him to do so because right now the shine box are not helping. I think something I want to change right here is add a pneumatic door so the plug slugs don't get out anymore. I found one actually snacking up some gold amalgam and that's a no-go. Now there's one thing I need to be aware of. Who is my farting dupe? There's a farting dupe and I forgot who it is. It is Joshua. Joshua is my cook and he shouldn't go down here because he's not allowed anywhere near the vacuum for obvious reasons. In the meantime, let's get all of these materials out of the way as well. And also we can add them here to the storage bin since it's the first time we're getting refined gold. This reminds me, we should probably continue in the tech tree. Yeah, I want metal tiles. Where do we have that? Right here. Metal tiles and the refinery. It's time to get that out of the way. Oh, by the way, now that I have a refrigerator in here, this should count as a kitchen. And yes, it does. This is also a great hall. Did we manage to get the great hall bonus on the second planetoid? This is a mess hall still. Oh, we need to add that flower. Ari is taking care of it. Yeah, the body temperature isn't right. Of course, that's fine. Because if I'm not mistaken, no. Ah, crap. It doesn't count as a great hall without it actually being active. Body temperature should be above 20 degrees. Eventually, we might get there, but let's protect ourselves from the heat. Uh, I want to save that oxy fern, so let's do it this way. Just need to wait for it to heat up a little bit. The fridge is going to contribute the deodorizer probably a little bit and then all of the sink stuff here as well. Let's put the move thing to the test. This is 1,800 kilograms of water. If I move this over here, let's see how quickly that happens. Wow, we got meteor showers on both planetoids at the same time well thank you very very much well on this planetoid i'm actually looking forward to it because we get lots and lots of oxalite that we can then use to support our oxygen system but on the main planetoid this could be devastating and we might want to observe that for a little bit i mean check this out what was that Jeez, all these different types of asteroids. Okay, looks like it is a shorter meteor shower here on the first planetoid. That is good to know. We got another achievement. Reveal 80% of the map by exploring outside the starting baum. With Ari, it looks like we really want to get into the first digging skill so we can finish stuff like this. At the moment, my pipes are breaking because the water is getting too cold. And that is, of course, because the cold is still seeping in here. But he's still a little ways off. 
Okay, in the meantime, on the main planetoid, we are basically ready. I just want to ship away these materials, and then the plan is to let the volcano erupt at least once. The liquid gold is then eventually gonna drop over here. It is gonna drop down and hopefully solidify or even turn into debris. I'm taking everything. And then once it's cold enough, I should be able to pick it up and bring it somewhere else, or maybe at least use it for building material. I'm gonna get Meep into the sustainability training and then as for Nisbet, let's do improved carrying. Yeah, may I'm not so sure. Field research maybe now? Ah, uh, no wait, it's the astronaut. Yeah, we're gonna go for rocket piloting. We now have some elderly Plux Lux. This guy is not gonna give me any more eggs, so I'm just gonna kill him off and then we can wrangle up another guy and bring him up to replenish the numbers. Also, I figured what I can do is just let them get hungry so they're not gonna eat every day. They're still gonna produce 1,200 watts or so, way more than I'm requiring. And then once I see them actually starving i'm gonna replenish the critter feeder once and then that's good now before i forget i want to check out slime lung slime lung does a minus one percent per second breath and minus three athletics and of course coughing so that's not good oh 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 crap is somebody new no, that's not good okay i can see the problem now so the slime lung is coming from here i did how did i not see that jeez is the problem the slime storage? No, we don't have any errands. So that means it's just the germs that are currently present here. We currently have 11 tons of sand, so we can go a little bit nuts. Maybe set up three or four deodorizers here. Yeah, let's just bring the heavy watt wire around there. Deodorizers everywhere. Cheese. And that is an emergency because slime lung, it's not funny. No, I can see some slime over here that is actually not reachable. So maybe if we go down here, we can go up there and go up here and then just grab this slime. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's freaking do it. We're gonna dig up the last tile right there. Get that volcano going. Also very nice to wrap up the episode is that we get the mechatronics engineering skill. This is gonna be super useful. Okay, we're now starting to clean up the air. That means eventually we might get rid of the slime lung. Cheese. How did I not see that for such a long time? I want to see this happen. Yes. Okay. Nice. Let's go ahead and pick up the igneous rock. Though that one might heat up very quickly. Uh, actually, not that quickly. Look at that. It's still at 2.5 degrees. It's not even interacting with the liquid. Okay, looks like we only got 70 kilograms of gold with the first eruption. And it's currently sitting there at 2000 degrees. Okay, I like where this is going. The next time we might be able to also analyze it and then start collecting that precious gold. I'm gonna leave this all intact until the actual tiles here start to heat up. And then we're gonna keep on digging and expanding a little bit. Just taking advantage of the chill here until we are ready to set up a proper volcano tamer. In the previous episode, we revealed this gold volcano it is now going to erupt approximately every one to two cycles and hopefully in due time it's going to give us enough materials that we can actually change the diet here of our critters so instead of feeding them cobalt i would like to feed them refined gold and that is going to make it much more viable to actually keep these bastards let's now maybe track that as well we got two and a half thousand just from the surrounding tiles and then I'm really curious as to how long this is going to take to get some proper results. Uh, looks like, yeah, it's 14.3 kilograms and it's only erupting for 24 seconds. Yeah, let me actually go ahead and add another tile here so we can cut this off. And I don't think we actually need to keep this open. I can just go above. Something else I would really like to fix now is the Plux Lug Ranch. I would like to make this slightly more automatic. And of course, one way we can easily accomplish that is with auto sweepers. So I think I'm going to have my critter feeder over here. Instead, we're going to deconstruct this, have two auto sweepers. So we can have one here taking care of the left side and then another one here taking care of the right side. And this way we can pick up all of the eggs and all of the debris they're making immediately. Well, they're only making the eggs, right? But as soon as we we drop an egg all of these guys always get cramped and of course that is not a good idea i want this problem to stop immediately but check this out this is going to be our main source of energy Ah, oh, will you look at that bliss burst seeds if i'm not mistaken these are the seeds that create a plant that actually produces a floral scent so honestly, what we could test out in order to get rid of these germs more efficiently is that plant. 
So all I really need is a planter box here. Let's go ahead and do that and then get that bliss burst in there. Power for my auto sweepers is going to be fairly easy. And then all I need to finish this. Oh no, I don't have the conveyor loader yet. Are you serious? Ah, oh, come on. The conveyor loader, however, is a fairly easy research. Yeah, we can do this right away. Also, by the way, let me check. Did we receive the ward seeds? No, they are still on the other planetoid here. For instance, we have a ward seed here. I wonder if Ari is ever going to bring that over. Technically, all the seeds should be brought over. Why do we only have one unit? That's so curious. I thought we dug up so many of them. Our ward seeds disap... I don't get it. Our ward seeds disappearing. For instance, right here, I'm absolutely certain I had a Weezwort that I dug up. This is interesting. I don't really get it. Maybe it gets planted again. I mean, what is this? This also doesn't make sense. All I know is that with Ari, we now need to get into hard digging. That is for sure. So I can finalize this construction and I can dig through most of the terrain. Okay, I just saw Ari bring some type of seed over. Uh, are you gonna... No, just Oxalite in here. And of course, the pip is gonna eject it again. <laughs> oh my gosh, well, at least let's go ahead and sweep that like at priority 9 and then sweep that as well. So we definitely get some Weezwords over to the main planetoid. Nisbeck currently has a huge issue. I think I'm gonna send her back. Yeah, look at that. She's losing an extreme amount of breathability. And right now, she apparently did not have the time to empty the bladder or to do anything reasonable. In this case, I think I'm just going to make an extra shift. Let's see. Like, we're going to need some downtime right now for... Where is she? Nisbet. There you go. So now, hopefully, she's uh, taking care of her needs. First of all, empty that bladder. Yeah, that's going to be so much better. Give her a little bit more downtime. Now she's getting rid of the eye irritation and everything. Okay, she's already doing much better. Slime long, devastating. In preparation for the analysis of this volcano, I'm also gonna put down a bottle emptier. Eventually, I'm gonna mop this up. It should be... Oh no, too much liquid. Well, we can mop it up from the edges. But my point is, once I want to analyze the volcano when it is idle again... No, when it is dormant, then we're gonna mop things up, put it into the bottle emptier, and we should be able to analyze it. Good, I have now two ward units here on this planetoid, and that means I could fill these up. This means we probably want to track Phosphorite because that's what we need to fertilize the Weezwards. Also, I built the wrong thing here. I don't need a planter box, but what I need is, let me see, a flower pot. There it is. So now basically what I can do is, oh no, it's not, ah, there it is. Body butt seed. That's what I was looking for. We can go ahead and plant that. It's going to give out a huge floral scent. Also, my research has been completed, so we have all of what I really needed. I should be able to put that storage right here, sandwiched in between the two auto sweepers so both of them can reach it. And then I'm just gonna bring these eggs out. Now, we could let them drop down here, but I think if we're so inclined, we can also bring this over. One, two, three. Yeah, that would be reachable. And then we just drop them right down here directly. So I will never have to care about it and... Down here, I will always have some plux locks to replenish my numbers or maybe even start another farm if I wanted to. And of course, Ren, my mechatronics engineer, is taking care of that. Now, what do we want in here? Presumably just the eggs, but since nothing else is going to land on here and I don't want nothing else, I can just say all. Oh. We're not going to allow manual use. The only thing that's going to be responsible for that is the auto sweeper. There's my body butt seat now. And what we should be seeing is the slime lung germs should be starting to be replaced. You know, maybe it is the bliss burst seed I was thinking about and not the body butt seed. So uh, we got that here and we should be able to reach it. And therefore we can plant it here. And maybe it's this one here that's going to give out the floral scent. Well, I gotta say also normal oxygen gets rid of the germs fairly quickly. But this is a fun method too. We are now not far away from the first gold actually dropping down. And I just noticed that probably this ladder and this one here are gonna heat up. The other ones shouldn't heat up theoretically, but I honestly don't know. One thing we could try out is replacing them with obsidian, which has a melting point of 2700, which I believe should be more than the volcano. Yeah, the gold is coming out at 2600. So if we replace these ladders here with obsidian, we should be good. Yeah, this should probably be done before the next eruption. 
Now, I changed a little something about my schedules. I moved them over slightly so that my sleep time doesn't end with the shifting of the cycles. And we should be able to see that in action now. Nisbet here is sleeping and she's not gonna... Oh no, she actually recovered her stamina. Ah. I bet she slept on the floor somewhere. But the whole point of this is now they should be oversleeping here in case their stamina isn't full yet. And the reason they got up is because I had this shift here. And there my duplicates are now taking care of the ladders. And I probably want to make sure to pick up the debris. There it is. We got some polluted oxygen. But it is just floral scent. Most of the dupes aren't going to mind. They're even going to enjoy it. However, more importantly, in due time, we're just going to push away all of the slime lung germs. Maybe even in this area. We'll see. Oh, by the way, I realized why I didn't have any ward seats. Of course, it's the pips. The freaking pips on this planetoid are replanting my seeds. You cute little booger you. Oh, something else I should consider. I'm now dropping a whole bunch of ice that I'm bringing over from the second planetoid. I might want to secure this ice in a cold environment, such as here, so it's not gonna melt. Wait a second, I think I wanna put it up one more block here, or maybe even two. Uh, let's go two. Then I'm gonna drop down the ice at least four blocks gonna insulate this with the abyss light it's already insulated but then if we go down three blocks then we shouldn't be able to reach the debris at the bottom and therefore all of the ice that we're gonna drop in here is just gonna reside in here until i decide to do something else with it well you look at that we got our first gold and it is indeed at 5.4 degrees and of course we still have a lot of chill to give it is just 27 kilograms but theoretically we should as of this point get the full output of the volcano with every eruption so technically that should be working out and we still have 81 kilograms here inside the critter feeder we got another achievement just by playing reach cycle 100 with at least one living duplicate harsh conditions huh oh okay so that change is now confirmed i just sent nisbet to bed and she just got up again. So it's no more the case that they actually sleep until their stamina is full. That is kind of a bummer. And that kind of makes me want to change the strategy. For instance, we could have one downtime slot here in the beginning and then two bedtime slots. So the one downtime slot they're going to be using in order to get back home. And then when they're inside the base, it shouldn't take long until they can go to bed. So let's try that. We're going to add one downtime slot in the beginning and then remove one downtime slot from the end, like so. Finally, Nisbet got cured of slime lung, so nobody is suffering slime lung anymore. The breathing issues with Nisbet were absolutely horrible. Wonderful, got my automatic dispenser here. We're going to do everything liquefiable. And we're just going to do that at priority 5. So whenever a dupe has the time, actually, let's do it at priority 6. So something in between normal and important. And then all of the ice that is dropping here is not eventually going to melt and flood my stuff. But here, just like Joshua is demonstrating, it's going to be brought over and stored away. Jeez, these guys sometimes sandstone. Okay, just build that and then you're going to be fine. Actually, <laughs> she's not fine yet. Is that your downtime? No, not quite. Okay, we have... We have some time we have some sedimentary rock that we can use to finish this but man these dupes get in trouble so easily by now the automation for the ranch has been built and the first eggs are own <laughs> I totally didn't realize that they could go through the pitcher pump. Well, that is a little bit of a bummer, but we could maybe trap them at least inside of the room with a pneumatic door here and then maybe there. All right, before I do anything else, I'm going to set up the wheeze wards here. I think I can take away the ladders now. The signal switch will honestly have to move a little bit. I'm going to move that up here like so. And then I should be able to plant the wheeze wards that take up three spaces. And look at that. You can see the floral scent is spreading and the germs are being pushed back so good but yeah that was quite an emergency there with the slime lung now while we're waiting for materials to accumulate maybe we can also already conquer this cobalt volcano all we have to do is come up with a similar strategy how much did i leave out here four tiles one two three four so this would be the surrounding i would then start with my staircase pattern somewhere along here get a bottle emptier right here and we can make this liquid lock then we can move up there. But first, I want to make sure we get this liquid lock filled up. The volcano here is rising pressure again. Come on, do me the favor and give me something good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it is just immediately being turned into refined materials. The cooling period does take a while. Okay, so Amari is already picking up the gold and it is still 900 degrees. How can we prevent this from happening? 
I'm actually surprised these ladders aren't heating up. It's just the lowest one that is. Yeah, this is not good. Unless we pick it up with a auto sweeper, we cannot really say whether or not it's ready. One thing we could do before we actually set up an auto sweeper system is just prevent duplicants from going through here. Amari, I don't want you to pick that up. That is just nonsense. Go somewhere else. I mean, it is cooling down fairly quickly. It will only have to be in here for a couple of seconds. But maybe I just wait a couple of interruptions. Interruptions? I mean, eruptions. Before I allow my duplicants to pick something up. So now with the pneumatic door in place, I won't allow duplicants to enter. And therefore, this gold has the time to cool down. We can also see this tile is now heating up. However, it should be actively cooled by the other tiles, even if not very quickly. We could go ahead and set up some temp shift plates if we wanted. Like using a temp shift plate, do we already have materials that are worthwhile? Well, I guess any metal material is good, but maybe we just wait until we pick up some diamonds. I mean, for the time being, it seems to be working out nicely and we seem to be getting around 300 kilograms a pop. While preparing the Cobalt Volcano, maybe we can go ahead and already get a smelting setup going. All we need is the metal refinery. We can place it anywhere. It doesn't really come with an overheat temperature. We'll have to deal with that differently. Let me see. I probably want to put this here all the way towards the bottom. For now, I want to keep as much of the terrain intact because that is going to serve as my cooling mechanism. I then want to continue from here and dig out a little something. This is going to be a cavity for my coolant to occur. Accumulate. Right now, our problem is we only have access to liquids with low condensing temperatures. Even on this planetoid, I don't think we'll be getting access to oil. So that is another thing we'll have to explore in space and actually get from there. So what we're going to do is what I do a lot of the time, and that is passive cooling through the biome. And that essentially means we're going to take our pipes, bring them all the way over to where we want to drop them. Let me actually see if we set up a liquid pump here. Let me build that with gold amalgam for extra overheat temperatures yeah that's what i figured we don't want to go through here because the pipe going out should be going directly into the metal refinery for the coolant and then with this pipe i'm going over and then i'm just gonna drop the liquid again in order to be cooled actively by the biome and the way we do this is with a metal tile going from the water level up now let me see we're still gonna need a sensor to the side when the pump should be pumping i don't want it to pump all the time but only when we are at a certain temperature. So let's say I'm gonna bring these metal tiles up a little bit in order to profit from the chill. So the chill is going to be transferred through here into the liquid that we have at the bottom. Then I would want a temperature sensor, which we haven't explored yet. Let's see. We want a thermo sensor. Let's go ahead and unlock those sensors. The thermo sensor would be right here. As soon as we are cold enough, then I'm going to pump stuff out back into the refinery. So a very simple system and we're simply going to be using the chill of this biome to do it. Oh, well, you look at that. We got a pipsqueak that we could print out from the printing pot. And I think I'm going to do that so we can maybe start to set up something like a nature reserve. I'm also gonna drain the last of the liquids here. They can join my pool at the bottom. Also, let's get in here, inspect that and demolish. Okay, now I just saw Nisbet goes back in her first downtime slot. That is actually perfect. So now when they reach sleep time, oh no, she actually performs the action. Ah, oh, this is really bad. Well, in this case, it's not too bad, but still, it's bad. That still means I might need three downtime slots because now her stamina is going to stop at 70% or so and she's going to eat. Oh no, why did they have to fix this? I mean, we could technically get a third bedtime slot in and then we add the last downtime slot in the end. I mean, they will go to work either way afterwards that exploit still works but with the bedtime it's a little issue when they start performing a task and that task actually endures all the way to the sleep time that is an issue but the rest should still be working now that she's still in her downtime she's gonna pick up work again there's my water dropping down lovely jovely by now we had a second eruption and we are at 611 kilograms at 219 degrees the degrees are still going down and the more mass we have here at the bottom, the easier it should be to cool it down. So I'm just going to wait a little longer. I'm also going to keep digging out the cobalt volcano here. We want to get this running just the same way we do the gold volcano. Until we tame it properly, we can still benefit from all the metals. We got our thermo center completed. I'm going to tune back into the solar panel research just in case I decide to finish it. 
And that now means we can set up the thermal sensor here right there and when we decide for instance 20 degrees is a good temperature we can start to pump things back into the refinery this will also have to be powered like so okay now i'm super confused ren is oversleeping what's even going on he was oversleeping look at that not exactly at the right time ah, that is so strange and i'm actually really confused let's maybe observe Amari. Amari right now is going to use the toilets and then because he's done using the toilets during the sleep time he's going to sleep. No actually he decided to get some food first. Ah that is so interesting but that means he might be late for bed. Let's see that happen going to bed now okay so he's not gonna get two full downtime slots and he's currently at 90 percent yeah he's gonna make it to the 100 percent Hmm, very interesting. And now he's taking a shower, just wasting one more downtime slot and then probably going back to work, right? Ranching, yeah. So this entire downtime here only serves for the morale boost, but still, this is not good. Maybe we need two downtime slots in the beginning and then the sleep time. I think I'm gonna change that to downtime in the beginning, like so, and then work can start a little bit earlier, okay? They still have five downtime slots in total, but they get a little bit more time before sleeping. Yay! Well, you look at that. We have now 960 kilograms of gold, so triple the amount, but it's already down to 155 degrees. Right here, I'm just making some progress. We seem to be in vacuum and everything is working. I'm also gonna pick up everything that I can. And then we're gonna make the same exact system down here. We have some chill minus, well, not too much. But maybe it's gonna be enough to get that little bit of extra refined material. Okay, we've made some substantial progress here with the Cobalt Volcano. We're basically ready to get this going. I'm actually gonna go ahead and analyze the volcano right away because it is currently dormant. With the gold, we accumulated two and a half tons so far, and it's just not quite enough to get the cooling power I would like to see. I also need to be careful about this oxalite. This could bite me in the butt. Yeah, really careful. However, what we could do is poke out a hole, maybe right here, and set up an automatic dispenser. So we can ship the gold over here to let it cool down completely without interference of the gold volcano. Okay, nice. I got the automatic dispenser in place. I want to set this to gold and the highest priority. For now, this is going to be fairly manual because I'm a little too lazy to drag the wire all the way from the top down. But we don't really have to do this very often, except Amari is actually prioritizing the ranching. So I'm going to make him drop it again and then maybe somebody else should be coming along come on this has the highest priority um let me do sweep only and then we're gonna sweep up that material with the highest priority somebody should now be taking that errand yeah meep is doing it wait a second meep you're not done yet there's still more gold. I see. Amari is back. That's why Meep didn't take the task. Now, Lyra is coming down, putting the rest in here. Okay, now this can easily cool down all the way, let's say to at least 70 or so degrees, and then the next gold can accumulate here at the bottom. And I just prevent them from whoop, entering again, like so. In the meantime, we are also almost done here setting up the metal refinery. So the next time we should be able to smelt up the precious iron and then of course also smelt steel, which was one of our early game goals. Gene of course is taking care of analyzing the volcano. Since we still didn't implement the atmosuits, this is going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. We reached another achievement. What was that? Ghosts of Gravitas recover a database entry by inspecting facility ruins. So that must have happened down below here. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, of course, we submitted the bioscan. That was it. Whoa, okay. Now the meteor showers always seem to come together. This is interesting. Let me see. Are we going to survive this? Uh, no, we still don't have to fix anything just yet. Check this out. We even get some gold amalgam here. Intriguing. But I'm way more interested in building a regolith smelter. And it's also going to be interesting to set up the rocket program. So now we have our first breach here. We need to fix that ASAP. So priority 9. All we want is to fix that breach as soon as possible. And there it is. Already fixed. Okay, that's fine. I decided to half my farms just because we are accumulating more and more edibles that eventually will go bad if we just overproduce. 
everything for the metal refinery is prepared all we have to do is to launch it for the next episode and then the cobalt volcano has been analyzed let's check it out it's going to be active in 17 cycles and it's going to produce an average of 338 grams per second continuously very nice i take it i'm also gonna build the pneumatic door here then we're gonna build a bottle emptier just in case i'm gonna need it and we're also already gonna set up the automatic dispenser right there my gold has cooled down to 80 degrees so i think what i'm gonna do is pick this already up here and i'm only gonna allow amari access inside because he's just bringing it to the critter feeder no matter the priorities there we go ah did you really i mean Come on. Okay, I guess I should have put this the other way around. So technically, this counts as further away than this, which is bad. But yeah, I guess I can move him over here and then he's going to grab the correct slot. There, now you can eat again and be free. Did you just almost eat everything? Jeez, are they eating so much? Minus gold. Yeah, holy cow. Okay, they do eat a lot more than I anticipated. Okay, so far, so good. I'm really happy. We will be analyzing this volcano once it is dormant. But other than that, I think the next time is going to be all about smelting stuff. There are a few things, according to your comments, that I would like to change right away. And the first thing here is getting rid of the hydrogen. The reason I want to do that is because I really like the plug slugs. And there is a second variant, basically the smog slug egg. I noticed that most of my plug slugs have now a increased smog slug egg chance. And I would like to avoid that from happening. This is happening when they dwell in unbreathable gas. So that's interesting. I had no idea. Thank you for letting me know what we can do is possibly allow the hydrogen to just move out so instead of dwelling here it will be going up and accumulating here where we are accumulating the rest of it the next thing i would like to do is get a little bit of liquid in the joint here now i just noticed we might actually have to do this with a mechanized airlock otherwise i cannot really temperature control my pool yeah let me go ahead and deconstruct these two metal tiles and we are gonna replace it with a mechanized airlock instead also if we quickly check on the other planetoid i think we're good here currently we have 6.1 tons of polluted dirt which is our oxygen source Ari is currently eating yeah we still have enough kilocalories okay i think we're gonna be fine so maybe just for a brief moment we're gonna stop sending over the polluted dirt until we need some more nice well you look at that we have another ton of gold that is at temperature this is so nice i'm gonna allow amari inside because he's just gonna pick it up and as mentioned he's gonna bring it over to the critter feeder without hesitation there he is i just gotta make sure yeah he's picking it up from the right stack there now it looks like amari cannot actually pick up enough stuff yet oh look at that we have lots of people with hypothermia that's not good uh who was it there amari yeah check this out we should definitely go for improved carrying too so he's actually capable of bringing more stuff okay this isn't perfect yet it did not work the way i wanted we might still have to go with a auto sweeper to take care of that anyways amari now has a stack of over one ton at 141 degrees and i wonder what happens if he moves through here then it should maybe cool down yeah it looks like it was only about two or so degrees that is not good. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it drop. Wait, I think I just have to move him elsewhere. And then it's gonna go here. So now at least it can cool down a little bit more inside the pool. Yeah, look, we're already at 130 degrees or so. Okay, that actually makes a huge difference. The liquid really helped here in this case. Either way, I just wanted enough food for my plug slugs here. Before I forget, let's set up the mechanized airlock here. And then some automation wire. Just bring this, I guess, let me see. We want to enable the pump and open up the door probably at the same time. So we can just go ahead and do that. No logic gates required. As for the metal refinery, our highest goal will be to process all of our iron, which currently we don't have any of that here on this planetoid. Did I already set this up to be shipped over? I should. Yeah, metal ore, the iron ore should be coming over. Allow manual use is set. Okay, what's the problem? probably we don't have too much of it yet yeah there's no such thing as iron ore just yet we will have to dig it all up which is uh, totally fine in my opinion 
But we better get started on it, I would say. So yeah, basically we just have to make some more progression here towards picking stuff up. Now the abyssalite here is extremely cold sometimes. Thankfully, abyssalite doesn't really transfer the heat or the chill. There are some exceptions, but it's more like a bug, so I'm not even gonna talk about it. But essentially what we can do is treat these like insulated tiles, and I can go ahead, set up, for instance, some brine, if we have that available. Let me see. Ah, uh, no, I dumped my brine in here, of course. That might not have been the smartest decision I've ever made. Yeah, you know what? I don't think we have a choice. It's also a really good amount of brine that i can get from here let's try to get in there and i guess all it takes is set up a pitcher pump here yeah let me actually try that there it is 2000 kilograms of brine available thank you very much and we want to enable auto bottle make this a high priority and then we're just gonna fill up this bit with brine now for the thermo sensor we're gonna check the brine temperature well right now we have the hydrogen temperature so let's wait joshua is bringing the bottle okay and wait a second yeah it's already being pumped up that's uh, totally fine and it's directly going into the metal refinery now this door here is actively gonna cool my brine and i don't want this closed all the time i only want it closed when we need active cooling which means as soon as we are below the 20 degrees mark then i want to send a green signal and open the door right and at the same time it's going to be pumped out and it's going to go directly into the metal refinery so that we can use it as coolant uh, looks like a little bit of brine here is obviously gonna get stuck and therefore always will be frozen yeah that might be a little bit of an issue we'll see we'll see for now i just want to fill up the metal refinery we can put 800 kilograms inside of the refinery and i think 400 extra to fill it up right now we have 400 kilograms yeah that would be half of it there it is more thank you very much and then we're missing about two more bottles to wrap this up in terms of germs, we made substantial progress where we actually were lacking the fresh air. We replaced it with floral scent. Also down here inside the base, we don't have dangerous germs. There are some food poisoning germs in the air. However, food poisoning germs are literally only bad for the food. And as long as we have food poisoning germs inside of the base, no other germs can actually go there. Only one type of germ can ever occupy one tile. However, it is still not nice to look at. And the easiest way we can get rid of it is just by cleaning the air. Maybe we can even help out a little bit by disinfecting a few more things. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to deconstruct this mechanized airlock and I'm going to put it one more block up. I just want to avoid the rest of the brine here from touching the cold door, which is still being cooled, you know? Okay, now moment of truth. Yeah, this way it is touching, obviously, but I wonder what happens if the door opens. There it is. Okay, door opens and yes indeed. Look at that. The water shouldn't be touching it anymore. So only when the door closes, the water is really touching it. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted to see. We're gonna do iron ore to iron is what we need. Currently we have 9.4 tons. Oh, I totally missed that. I probably didn't see that. But there we go. We just want to craft iron forever because it is limited currently and there's nothing else to do with the iron ore that we can't do with another ore. Actually, this might be a mistake. I'm certainly going to forget about it at some point. So let's just do 90 crafts. Okay, just going to try to get through all of that. And if we check this out, Nisbet, hold the phone. It's an operating and supplying skill. Well, I guess we don't really have to dig at the moment. So I don't even mind that it is Nisbet coming. But there she is delivering some iron ore. And it looks like the coolant will be used up right away, which is why you can have a little bit of extra. Just 800 kilograms inside the refinery, but a little bit of extra on the line. Oh, Nisbet stopped crafting. Yeah, we have to exchange that uh, hydrogen here. This is kind of crazy. Well, for now, I don't mind. Major eye irritation is something I've been living with for a couple of cycles, especially because of that. But we'll be taking care of this issue in today's episode as well. I just wanted to get the metal refinery going and... Wait a second. Did I already finish crafting something? Yeah, look at that. We got the first piece of iron. I can't believe it. 200 kilograms of iron. I just absolutely love it. So that means iron is the only ingredient we are really missing. We still cannot go overboard with the steel production, but we might be able to at least save our asses from the meteor showers. So when it comes to steel, for now, I'm just going to craft this whenever we can. Right now, we're missing the refined carbon. We also have only a limited amount of lime but 
both these problems i think we can fix we got fossil to lime and eggshell to lime i just gotta make sure that we bring over some fossil from the second planetoid i should have that set up here let me check just to make sure we also have lime and in raw materials the fossils is also being transported over actually do we even have fossils i'm not so convinced that we do actually yeah, you know, steel is just going to be a pain in the butt. But refined carbon we can make in the kiln. And all we need is coal. We have 32 tons of coal. Let's go for 90 crafts right now and just get this started. I'm happy enough that the metal refinery is working and we can also see that as soon as we go below the 20 degrees mark then the door is going to open and the liquid is going to be pumped back into the refinery. How hot is it even coming out? It's coming out at 50 degrees so down from the 7 degrees that we inputted or so and then we can see the metal tile here is being cooled the door is well maybe not the most efficient material maybe we're gonna replace it with steel as soon as we have enough but we can see something is going on here with the cooling and it is just going extremely slow yeah maybe we'll have to work our way up uh, okay i see the problem i have to move this once again i think the way i'm gonna do this is i have a metal tile here at the bottom actually i don't even have to remove it i could do it here metal tile and actually let's make this out of a better material i'm gonna replace those two with iron metal tiles and then maybe i can use the door more efficiently because it's not the door itself that has to cool down the material but the metal tile which is more efficient unless the door is made out of steel then it doesn't matter but we can easily check whether or not it matters we have a thermal conductivity which is the speed at which you can transfer the heat or the chill and that has a conductivity of four if we check out the metal tile with iron it has a conductivity of 55 which is more than 10 times as much also even the difference between iron here with 55 and if i build this out of cobalt then check this out this has a thermal conductivity of 100 okay that actually means the cobalt is much better yeah it's doubly as good okay 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 so forget about the iron here i want cobalt instead let's have a brief look at what that actually changes here 20 degrees and now the only weak link in the chain here is the mechanized airlock that should be built out of steel or some other conductive material okay so for testing purposes i'm gonna push this up to 30 degrees so we can already start pumping here a little bit and this can start to cool down again let me see how much cooling potential do we have we have quite a bit but we will have to bring this all the way up in order to take full advantage now let's actually tackle the hydrogen we have up here we can utilize that for power and also i would like to exchange this pocket here with something breathable so my dupes don't have to interrupt their work. You know, one easy thing we could go for right now is Atmo suits. Usually I do it much sooner, but the planetoid had a temperature structure that allowed me to push this back a little bit. However, now that we are working more and more upstairs as well as downstairs, it is time to avoid the dupes from being interrupted all the time. Towards the bottom, maybe even oxygen masks are going to be enough because we don't really have temperature issues here. But towards the top, we're going to make Atmo suits. And since I'm making Atmo suits anyways, I'm going to make a dedicated exit from this base that is going to force the dupes to actually wear an atmos suit for me personally this means once the duplicants enter the ladder shaft here they should be wearing an atmos suit if we go ahead and lock this door also lock this door then the only two ways they can access the ladder shaft are from this level and this level here we can close this level i think so the dupes will only be able to exit to the ladder shaft this way I also will have to prevent them from going this way. And also this door here should be locked. So all we have to do now is set up an Atmo suit checkpoint. I'm going to do that with cobalt. Uh, let's actually also smelt up a little bit of cobalt thinking about it. I'm going to do about 50 crafts here since with the smeltery we're now not wasting any ore. We will also not get the sand. Maybe that is another something we could do again. Let's do another 90 crafts of igneous rock to sand. By the way we need an Atmo suit checkpoint and we want Want to be facing to the left next we need an atmo suit dock and we're gonna set up let me see how many duplicants do i need outside at any given time at least three maybe even five i think five or even seven would be the better number yeah maybe let's just go ahead and do how many ever we can fit and then on the other side i'm gonna set up a quick exosuit forge and of course nisbet is already going for it she can be wonderful at times one more thing we have to do apart from giving this power is actually fill it up with oxygen also let's disable this building for the time being otherwise my dupes cannot go out anymore without actually equipping an atmosuit 
But yeah, eventually we'll have to set up some gas pipes here and bring oxygen to these stations. In order to accomplish this, I'm actually going to move my storage bins here all the way down. So by just deconstructing this tile, all the stuff that I've collected here over the last 100 cycles is going to drop down. But very importantly, it is not dropping down all the way. There it goes. Yes, safe and secure. Wonderful. Let's see what we can print. I need to be a little bit more picky about my dupes right now. We are in a critical transition phase and I already have a dupe that I want to send out into space. I also slowed down giving out the skills, not because of a strategy, just because I'm an idiot. Lyra improved carrying and then we're going to go down the rocket piloting path. Yes, May is going to get into rocket piloting too already. So we got that out of the way. Meep, of course, exosuit training. I might want to change his cap because it's the same as the mechatronics engineering cap. And probably nobody else is going to have the exosuit training cap. Nisbet, eventually I want to make quicker. So rocket piloting and then suit sustainability. The same counts for Ren, right? Yeah. And then Ari, of course, needs improved carrying. For the mechatronics engineering skill, we need the improved carrying either way. Joshua, I guess at the moment we can just make a little bit faster here. Yeah, or maybe much faster. Let's do that. And then finally, Jean, I think I want to finish the research tech tree. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. What kind of cap do we get for that? Mm, it's too similar to the field research one. So I'm going to leave the yellow on. And then finally, improved carrying as well. Let's open up the door of Doom right here in order to get access to the printing pot and all the upgraded hats. I think the way I want to do this is by setting up another system just dedicated to one sublimation station and we need to be able to reach the sublimation station or we need an auto sweeper to fill it up. We could make it so that we can reach the storages here and then an auto sweeper will be taking care of everything else. Let's say the sublimation station is going to go here. We then get an auto sweeper in there. We need a whole bunch of deodorizers, maybe something along these lines. Get some airflow tasks. I'm going to go with mesh tiles like so hold the phone the auto sweeper is going to be blocked this way oh geez my duplicates are really eager to build this okay they probably don't have enough to do let's maybe dig out some more terrain like right along here we can dig everything out that should be fine do this one here as well this is even going to give us more food for the second planetoid Oh, I just figured something else. Thermal conductivity of aluminium is much better than cobalt or whatever I have going on right now. So aluminium is what we should go for from all the materials we currently have access to. And this way we'll have a five times higher thermal conductivity. Yeah, it's even worse than I feared. We can only reach the first two deodorizers. If I put it back one more block, we could at least reach three of them. And honestly, that might be enough to make this functional and produce the necessary oxygen for our Atmos suits. I just made a huge mistake. Well, it wasn't really a mistake, but I just used the whole 480 watts with these rap bolt generators by actually having this enabled. I did. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Let me see. I did. <laughs> oh, man. Editing Nathan, you know what to do. For now, I also want to get rid of this entire row here. Let's finish the Atmosuit system. Yeah, look at that. Already at temperature. That's what I'm talking about. Now we are crafting. Except, well, we still need the Atmosuits to be able to craft in one go. But May here is working on it. One more thing I would like to fix is I want a crit drop off point here. And this is going to allow me to pick some of these guys up that kind of got lost somewhere. Furthermore, I'm going to set up a automatic dispenser here that I'm going to set to sweep only just like I have my storages in the beginning and all the items that I sweep up as of this point are going to land on this single tile. So I will have to remember that. Oh, whoops. This building unfortunately cannot be flooded. That is not good. I think I want to sacrifice a pitcher pump in order to accommodate this problem. I copied the settings from the critter drop off point here, but here I want to store how many ever I want without auto wrangling the surplus. And I'm also going to have it at priority one. So wherever else I want to bring the plug slots, they're going to have priority. But then if I wrangle up a whole bunch here, they're going to be brought over. And before I forget, I should include the smog slots. Most of them are just going to be processed to meat, but who knows, some of them I could use to replenish the numbers. Okay, now we can see we are at the point where we heated up this tile, so it became useless. Therefore, all we have to do is replace it with another cobalt tile, and we will be taking advantage of these three tiles then, which gives us even more cooling capabilities. And this way we just work our way through the terrain. There's my automatic dispenser, all sweep only and priority one. So whenever I have another storage with an item, the other one would be preferred. 
Now I have a little bit more space to actually set up a bottle emptier for the polluted water as well. The times of no germs has ended. Wait a second. I already had an exosuit forge. I totally forgot about that because I never talked about it. I just set it up here so that I don't forget. But this is good news because in that case we can just go ahead and build some atmosuits. Not out of iron. I need the iron. Hmm. Should we smelt up some aluminium? Would be nice to do those aluminium suits. Why not? I want to make six for the time being because that's the amount of atmosuit docks that i can fit here looks like we need 300 kilograms of refined material that would be three crafts times six so 18 crafts exactly to get those atmosuits oh uh, uh, yeah yeah more cobalt is coming please use that for this tile i need to cool things more efficiently nisbet supplying construction materials you should be doing this one ah look at that that's what i'm talking about just get your priorities straight and just like that we now have aggressively more cooling power and we can keep going here with the crafting looks like we still have plenty to do my sublimation station here has been built we should be able to kind of close this off now let me see if i do that then hmm i might still be able to reach everything and then a little further up here i would like to see a pump maybe be here yeah i think that's good and also a atmo sensor in order to check how much pressure we have one last thing i want to set up here is a conveyor loader that will allow the auto sweeper to pick up the resulting clay from the deodorizers so one storage here will have filled up with polluted dirt the other storage here of course uh what do i need sand so filtration medium sand or regolith both is fine then from the conveyor loader we can ship the materials out i'm gonna remove that fire pole and then it can drop into our storage so just a little conveyor chute missing here and maybe power yeah okay now we should also be able to set up the pump get that situated here and then we can drag this over now i would like to just make sure that we actually get the correct gases so we don't break our atmo docks so maybe to end it all a little filter here it first goes into the filter the oxygen will be coming out the polluted oxygen that we might still have going on we are just going to bring back here with a gas vent and then the good oxygen can go down and over into my pipes so remove that no actually there's more atmo docks here and then all we have to do is close this off yeah sure that is a nice easy and little temporary system that we can use to power our atmo docks and get this base really rolling i forgot to also set the repair atmo suit recipe to forever whenever we get a worn atmo suit we can just fix it with some reed fiber also we need some automation wire that goes into the pump here i only want to pump when we actually have a significant amount of gases in there now mind you the gases are still gonna escape on the top and at the bottom and contribute to filling up the base however this sublimation station here is very often at a max gas pressure and therefore we can probably utilize most of it for this pump but if it contributes to the overall base i do not even mind I just checked and I actually don't have that much aluminium. So I still think I'm going to build it out of the main material that I have here. Six Atmo suits. And to speed it up, I also added some to the rock crusher here. I mean, right now we have over 70 tons of cobalt ore. We can certainly use some. And as a side product, we'll also get some more sand. Hey, you know what? Why not take advantage of these guys as well? Hmm, I might have to switch the system or we just utilize this part. Yeah, that might actually be a good idea. Let me try that though one block lower right here. So we actually catch the power of the extra slots that we have going on. Add some heavy watt churn plates here and that problem would be solved. We could even go a step further and hook all of these machines up. Same thing right here. And therefore we could get rid of the majority of the cabling here. One more thing I'm missing here is a deodorizer. I think this fire pole is going to get exchanged with one. In terms of skill points, I'm not going to go much over the 15 or 18 morale demand. Except I really need the skills. But for instance, Amari has all the necessary skills I want him to have. And therefore, I'm not really worried to go overboard. So until I'm going to implement other ways to make them happy, I'm going to leave the unnecessary skills be. Oh, I didn't even realize we made our first piece of steel. Absolutely wonderful. Also, what you can do is lower the priorities on everything that is being served by an auto sweeper. But in my case, I also installed the allow manual use mod so I can just disallow the dupes to actually use the deodorizers there. Ooh, okay. We... Oh no, what did I do? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Meep, meep. Meep! Stop! Stop that. Jeez, I totally forgot about these hot pockets. Yeah. 
my bad. Let's build an insulating layer. Something along these lines should do. Okay. <laughs> Jeez, that's what you get from being careless. Let's set up a triage cot. We can do one here. Mm, let's do two here. Get rid of that deodorizer. Now we have scolding duplicants. Amari here is already hurt a little bit. I don't really want to lose anyone right now. There's our triage cot. And as soon as they go below the 70% health status, they should come to the bed. Oh yeah, that's already much better. Come on, just just get through it oh no 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 lira look at that lira is now taking too much damage so you come to bed and meep you come to bed too yeah <laughs> lira i'm so sorry it's really my bad but there we go the problem is contained once again let's now finish the atmo suits we already have one suit here that we can deliver to the station then all we have to do is set this to above let's say yeah a thousand grams is actually fine no not 30 a thousand that will then activate the pump and then all we have to do is set this to oxygen that should be filtered out and of course i totally forgot to power this up my oxygen coming in feeding the atmos suits maybe eventually i'm gonna set up a secondary pump move this atmos sensor a little bit looks like we also got some hydrogen here that's not good and carbon dioxide this would just then go back in here hmm yeah maybe i expel the wrong gases instead of bringing them back in i mean this would be easily doable just like that but yeah you get the basic gist we now have access to atmos suits i'm gonna start filling that up a little bit more get those last three dots in place and then the next time my dupes will have a much easier time outside of the base. In the previous episode, we finally took care of building a atmosuit infrastructure. I still kind of want to upgrade this because the oxygen is not really coming in quick enough. One way I guess we could do this is by replacing the atmo sensor over here. And then we can add an additional pump right here. Oh, looks like we have some more meteor showers. Though this time around, they actually kind of helped me. Uh, there is still no breach here. Okay, we should be good for just one more moment and of course that also means we have meteor showers here on the other planetoid they always seem to be coming together now also this is looking quite funny we have all of these uh, plug slugs actually creating energy for us and these guys here at the bottom i can completely neglect i mean they're just here for replacement and the occasional meet but there is my second pump now being activated and this should run for quite a bit i think the sublimation station should be able to keep up However, I have to cut this connection here and oh, I just see that's a problem. Yeah, I might have to cut this connection. No, that doesn't make sense either. Of course, I have to cut this connection so the two lines meet together and they can form one entire packet. Wonderful. Now my Atmos suits can be filled up one after another and soon enough we should be able to activate this and then eye irritation and all of that stuff is going to be a thing of the past. I just see that I accidentally made an infinite loop here with the clay. Yeah, of course, that's not gonna work. I rather have this guy fill up my deodorizers and the sublimation station. So instead, we might just want to bring it over here. So we just keep going here a tiny bit and make it unreachable for the auto sweeper. Whoa, looks like the cobalt volcano became active. I missed that. It's probably also gonna erupt every cycle. That theoretically means the other volcano is dormant. And yes, indeed, it is dormant, which means we can start to mop this up. Well, oh, no, there's too much liquid. Well, we can start mopping up here on one corner. We should be fine with that. Now, wait a second. If I take this apart, then the Ignis rock is going to drop in here and I'm going to probably regret that. You know, if it evaporates and we end up with all rock gas, I wouldn't be happy. Yeah, right now there's no good way to avoid it. So Nisbet here. Let me go ahead and just allow Nisbet to go in. And now if I let her disassemble this and then go ahead pick this up with the highest priority she's the only duplicate capable of doing it and therefore she Ugh. why do you have to disprove my theories come on maybe now no she's not doing it okay well in this case i'm gonna allow everyone in and uh, yeah we, we should be good i mean are we gonna be good me i count on you yes Thank you. That was at 350 degrees. I'm going to make sure she drops it into the liquid there. 
Good. Now we should be okay mopping this up. However, I want to do this with an Atmos suit, that is for sure. Let me see. We are probably ready to activate this. Let's enable the building and see how that goes for us. Oh, there. Amari is actually using the first Atmos suit. Where is he going? Ah, look at that. I'm not even getting soaping wet. Here we can see once again the sheer amount of power we're getting. The only problem is that at the moment my Plux Lux are still starving and that is because we're not getting in enough material. So we will have to tap in into multiple volcanoes in order to keep one of these Plux Lux farm available. But considering everything, this might even be worth it. You know, this does reach maximum gas pressure, which is an indication we can probably push this lower to maybe 500, eh, let's do 750. And so the system can maybe run 90% of the time. Let's actually see. Now this is still going down. So it might even make more sense to put the sensor down, maybe somewhere here. Because of course this tile where the sensor is right now is being directly affected by the pumps. Now we just have to wait for more atmosphere to become available. Should be just a question of time. And that means I can can start to mop things up let's see who is taking that errand unreachable wait what are you guys talking about oh, of course unreachable because i have no more atmos suits left i missed something some dupes have slime lung let me see where is the outburst hmm? what are you talking about we have completely fresh air well okay maybe here yep yeah, i see oh oh no what are you guys doing I see. Well, this is not good. We're gonna add a deodorizer here and then maybe we can make everything better by finally disassembling this and making a ladder up. Actually, I want to do this on the very edge here. That's better. And then we can take apart this biome and it can become something bigger. And of course, right now, the dupes should be going there with their atmos suits. Now, when it comes to skills, of course, I would like to see everyone having the exosuit training skill at this point. And it looks like Nisbet needs to work towards that a little bit. And then Ren as well. Lyra, right here. Yeah, we're going to continue with you as well. And Joshua, you're already good, but you could have improved carrying. Ari, as for you, you're going to continue towards Megatronics engineering. One thing about Atmos suits I should mention is it makes the duplicants faster at digging. However, they lose like five athletics and it makes them much slower. No, it's even minus six athletics here. So Nisbet now only has an effective athletic skill of plus two, which isn't that good. But at least the Atmos suit isn't making her slower than in the beginning. I'm gonna move my battery and manual generator setup a little bit higher. Oh, looks like I still have cabling in here that isn't supposed to be there, but everything by now is upgraded to the heavy watt wire, except of course for this little part here, which honestly we could also replace that. I mean, it's gonna make the decoration horrible, but then if we replace all the tiles here with gold tiles, then it, we're gonna neglect that. And I think for our starter base, we really don't have to go all overboard. Yeah, I'm gonna be going through here also going through there and then some for the fridge and this deodorizer so i can get rid of this entire circuit here get rid of the generator and the battery as well heavy watt joint plates and we're done i didn't see it erupt just yet but it looks like we have our first cobalt ore here and it is just cooling down from a thousand degrees and honestly it's not that much we might have to get into geo tuning to make this much better Looks like not having all the atmos suits available is resulting in the crops being neglected quite a bit. That is because we don't have a dedicated farmer just yet and generally it's not prioritized. Armari often has something else to do. But since I don't have another dedicated farmer just yet, I think I'm just going to do that. And then Lyra is going to maybe help out. But this should only be temporary really. Ah, I guess she can help harvesting. It won't matter. And then the same thing here with May. I also want her to focus on harvesting until I'm gonna send her to another planetoid. I have too many critters in here, so it's time to eliminate all the smog slugs. Poor bastards. I hate to see them gone. Oh, look at that. We actually did it. We managed to mop up some of the gold and we can just uh, keep on doing that. Also, then drop the gold down here in order to cool it down. Also, while we have nothing else to do, we could think about automating these. Let me go through here and then, well, we're just gonna follow the liquid lock in order to get inside. Then we go all the way down. Ooh, this might be an issue. Nope, the ladders weren't heating up. They were only heating up at the bottom, so we should be fine. Hmm. It's still going to be an issue to run an auto sweeper here in vacuum. It's eventually going to heat up. It has an overheat temperature of 75, and if we build it out of any refined material, we should be getting 125 degrees. 
If we build it out of steel, we would be getting plus 200 degrees. But then again, what do I do afterwards? I don't want to just take it apart and rebuild it. That's kind of cheesy. But we could use a bottle end here to cool it down every now and then. That would make it much less manual than it currently is. And then we can also do something similar here for the cobalt volcano. Actually, let me just go straight over here. I think that makes more sense. Same thing right here. We're going to go down here to the auto sweeper. You know what? I figured one thing we could actually actually try out is liquid tuning here. We'll be getting the insulated liquid pipes and I'm also looking out for the conductive panel. We can use this technology in order to cool down the auto sweeper without having to do anything crazy. This means we should be able to just pick up some of the liquid here, which is pretty cool, 7 degrees. And we can also power it up using the wire we're already building. And then what I'm going to do is just bring this all the way up. We're going to lead this across the ladders and bring it over. And since we are in a vacuum, we don't actually even need to insulate these pipes. They should theoretically never heat up unless I make a mistake and something goes really bad. And I'm still going to need a way back up. So I'm going to do that. And wherever we are at a critical point, I want to make sure to hop over. So for instance, right here, we don't want this pipe to heat up. And I think the sensor section cannot heat up, only the endpoints. Also, I figured out the Atmos sensor here isn't working either because it gets confused with the polluted oxygen. And so it turns on and off all the time. So I decided to just let it go. And then eventually, once the Atmos suits are all filled up, it should calm down a little bit but it looks like we could use even more deodorizers honestly i think another something i'm gonna do in the future is cook up all the smog slug eggs so we're gonna make omelets out of them now will you look at that quinn here actually could become our farmer and maybe helping out with operating every now and then the only downside decreased husbandry but we don't really have to use them yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and print Quinn. Now, I don't have enough beds. I think my next bedroom I'm actually going to make up here. We just need to implement a door. Then I would be making it three high. So we kind of complete this area. Quinn, the new duplicant, can be in the first schedule. Ari is on the other planetoid, so it's just three in this schedule and two in every other schedule. Quinn also comes with Excavation 10. That means we don't even need a digger on this planetoid anymore. Yeah, I'm gonna emphasize digging and building. Farming is gonna have the highest priority, and therefore Lyra doesn't need to do it anymore, and also May. We're gonna do operating at the same priority as digging and building, and then attacking is also gonna have a high priority. Wait a second, why does everyone have a high excavation skill? That doesn't make sense. Do I have a weird buff? Wait a second. I don't get it. Why do you have such a high excavation skill? Ah, I'm such an idiot. The excavation is plus 10 with the Atmo suit. Holy cow. That is so unexpected. So forget about the attacking. I need to think without excavating. Yeah, digging and building also not, but farming and operating the way I originally intended to use them. Quinn is going to get into improved farming right away. And now the one problem Quinn has is with the Atmo suits, it's a minus six debuff to athletics, making them way too slow. And now got access to insulated pipes and the liquid reservoir. Nice. What is that? Hydro sensor as well. My research has been completed. We have access to the conductive panel that we would set up behind the auto sweeper. Just hook that up like so and then get out of here. So instead I'm going down, then hopping over and then going back up again. Of course, that means we want to add all insulated tiles on either side. Well, we don't really need it on the right side. All good. Hmm, you know, since we have an auto sweeper here anyways, we could also just as well set up a conveyor loader. We can probably set that up right here, then go for another one of these conductive panels and just set it up the opposite way. And now we can move across here, cool down both of the devices and then go out. So my bridges will go here and over there. Now all we have to do is bring this out and over. And if we do it this way, then we could also set up some metal tiles. Once again, I I just want to check my cheap materials. We could make some more aluminium and that would result in double the thermal conductivity. I think it might be worth it. So instead of the natural tiles, we're just going to set up some aluminium tiles all the way up to the abyssalite. And then those items will already have cooled down substantially before they will be dropped down here in the polluted water to completely cool. So all I have to do is keep going here with my materials. Maybe just use the same path we use for everything and then add 
this point I'm gonna just drop it with a conveyor shoot. Another liquid bridge here to avoid the molten gold and then we can get out of here as well. Maybe let's reroute the upper pipe this way. Use the lower one to get back. Then we're gonna go all the way over and drop it somewhere over there so we don't drop it on top of the pump and actually heat up the water locally. Good, one last bridge and that should be everything here. Now I really want to test whether or not I can heat up a bridge. So let me go ahead and build this bridge here and then we're gonna dump a little bit of gold. <gasps> what happened? Ah, crap. Why do we have oxygen in here? Ah, I know exactly what happened. We had that freaking oxalite. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Okay, well, it's not the worst that could have happened since the volcano is dormant, but still, uh, no, that's not gonna work. No, it's 12 degrees. <laughs> yeah, we might be in trouble here. Let me just try the gas pump, get that going right here and pump it out as quickly as possible. Okay, there's my liquid bridge. Now I'm gonna dump the gold with a high priority. There it is. Picked up 200 kilograms. So now we should be seeing... Ooh, okay, wait. No, these ladders heated up because of something else. But yeah, we can see the heat. And if we check out the liquid bridge here... Let's check out the temperature. Currently it is minus 8 degrees. Yeah, it doesn't react at all to the gold that is dropping down. So that's good. Good. Now everyone is working on the pump here. We need to get that out of the system. Check this out. This can be devastating if you check out the speed of other duplicants that are already longer in this space. Quinn definitely has a disadvantage there. And what you could do is just put the new duplicants on a hamster wheel to train up their athletics as well as operating skills. But definitely keep a close eye and don't let them wander off too far. Didn't pay attention and Amari, little booger, already brought the hot gold over. So we'll just have to deal with that. Maybe actually the pox slugs eat it before it gets out of hand. <laughs> okay, good. The pump is already going for it. I don't think we're gonna get in troubles with the temperature because of the biome that is adjacent here, cooling it down. Then we just make a vacuum again as we build this. We still have plenty of time. Oh, I actually totally missed analyzing the volcano. My bad. But then we have to free it up again, I guess. It doesn't matter. The gold already cooled down. Easy peasy. And Gene can actually analyze it this way. This right here is a good example of I cannot let these guys starve. Right now a lot of them are starving and not producing the amount of energy I usually get and therefore I'm almost down. So I really need to feed them. We're now also gonna add cobalt to the mix even though I'm not quite ready with it. How hot is it? Ooh, it's kind of hot at almost 500 degrees. On the other side, I also cannot let them starve. And I think if all of them eat, we might get rid of that hot cobalt immediately. And I can still let it drop inside the water to cool it even further. I also made a little contraption here for Quinn because the speed is just too slow and they already struggled a couple of times. So essentially, I'm not gonna let Quinn leave and before they are idle, they will use this low priority generator in order to give power to the ceiling light. Now let's check out the power. Yeah, look at that. Devastating 40 watts. That's just not good. Not acceptable. But it looks like it's still going to be enough in order to fully get back to battery capacity. As a matter of fact, we might be able to add a couple more. Quinn is going to eat and completely missed the first two downtime slots. Okay, I guess Quinn it cannot wait. Okay, don't, don't look at me like this. What you have to do is sleep. Ooh, that was not enough sleep. Yeah, stamina 58%. Okay, they're gonna spend the rest of the time in the base either way. So now manual generator to priority one. And as long as we have enough Atmo suits so nobody is idle inside the base, Quinn should be using that. As for Quinn, not allowed to go out, but allowed to go in. And oh no, somebody else took over. Uh, wait, yeah, that could be a problem. Quinn is taking over and they should be doing that for the rest of the work time. And then once we got some athletic in the joint at least six then we're gonna allow them to go out again cobalt here being all fancy and hot but the plux lux are eating it eagerly oh wait looks like the cooling loop is already in place that is nice and that also means the conveyor loader here should be cooled down let's go ahead and pick up the gold that we'll be getting from here and all the way up to here it should already be cool enough we'll see right now i still have to prioritize the rails actually let me see that's something we could change in the priorities ren at the moment doesn't prioritize 
building enough, I'm going to set it equal to the operating priority. The difference is most of the stuff that requires operating, I have set to a higher priority than I do the building. But that still means this rail is then going to be built in due time. The gold volcano is going to be active in another six cycles. Until then, I'm pretty sure we'll have the vacuum re-established. Now, of course, letting this pump run and also other inefficiencies in the base is something I'm going to address in the future. But the fact remains, I feed the plug slugs no matter what. And as long as I don't or cannot even use up all the energy, there's no sense in me to preserve it. Now, let's do a quick test here. Amari is picking up the very hot cobalt and I kind of want to cool it down. He already went through the pool, so that didn't do anything. Let's make him drop it right there. And now Cobalt is uh, going down quickly. He's probably going to pick it up again. Lyra picked it up. It is still at 1,200 degrees. I need to observe this. We're now down to 300 degrees, but everyone wants to pick that up. I mean, don't you have... Oh, they actually don't have anything better to do. So how about we try to complete this part? Maybe dig out a little something here. Just keep going with the shenanigans. A lot of the germs we managed to get rid of. There's still the problem wherever we have the polluted oxygen, of course, they are gonna spread, especially in this place now. The dupes are mostly in atmosphere, so it's not that troublesome anymore. But we're down to 10 tons of sand, which probably means I need to craft some more. Let's do another 90 crafts with igneous rock and granite, respectively. And this might allow us to set up some more of these deodorizers. One here, there, and there. Okay, this is now hot enough for my taste. I think what I'm gonna do is disable the conveyor loader, then empty everything out. Let me see. I just need to empty the refined cobalt, and then I'm gonna make sure to sweep this up really quickly so it can cool down somewhere else. And now this area here can kind of calm down. Everything's gonna be fine. Looks like at the moment we're using three fourth of our total power but it might still be worth going for the next level i think i want to drain this pool let's just do something like that and then allow it to dribble all the way over and we are gonna let it hmm yeah let's just let it drop down all the way i mean some of it could just flow into our storage like this one here yeah let's open that one up first and that is just gonna dribble right into here Quinn earned a skill point. Of course, we're going to go into crop tending and everything. Or we could also help with the athletics training. Yeah, I think that might be good. I mean, we don't have to really improve the farming right away. Gene on the other side is going to get into exosuit training. Amari is fine how he is for the time being. Ari on the other side, mechatronics engineering. Thank you very much. That's going to make it possible to build all the contraptions. But I still need the super hard digging next. As for Ren, also exosuit training. And that is all I want to do right now. Looks like we managed to establish a vacuum. I might have to increase the airflow here a little bit to finish the rest. Uh, no, actually, it's not even necessary. It's already going so we can go ahead and destroy the pump forget that this ever happened thank you very much to make this pump a little more eco-friendly i'm gonna set up a switch and maybe shut it off until we actually need it there we go 3.4 cycles before its next activity we actually managed to build everything and then we can hopefully see it in action not 100 percent sure if we have enough cooling power yet we'll check it out when it's ready to go Oh, whoa, 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 wait, wait, I need to close this. Oh, this is important. We should do that before breaking through. Oh no, I totally missed it. But there it is. We have enough polluted water again. And there's even more to be collected, but I will not be able to fit that. Okay, things are slowly but surely coming along. Looking at this cooling area for the cobalt, this doesn't really look good. And I think what we have to do is pick it up after all and then let it go through the aluminium task just like we do on the other side. Maybe we can already go ahead and set this up. Let me do the auto sweeper first. Say that would be going right here. And then we also have a conveyor loader. This is, oh, this is actually not reaching all the way down. We might have to put this one more block down. By the way, we also have to run this through a conductive panel. And it just occurred to me that we could maybe cool both at the same time. But then I use more space than I would like. So we're just going to go down and up like we did previously. And that will be the setup, just like so. As for the conveyor rails, I set them up here. We're going to run them through a couple of aluminium blocks. Just a few, maybe like that. And that also reminds me, maybe we should replace the pipes here with insulated pipes. And I'm actually going to do the same thing here on the other side. Yeah, just see, the way I'm doing it on the other side is way more logical. So maybe we should swap the loop. 
Now, instead of directly dropping down here with the liquid vent, we're first going to go over, complete the loop right here. Wait a second, I'm missing the conductive panel here. Anyway, then it goes back and we got to make sure that we don't break through here. Oop, that would also be a mistake. So first go down and over like so. This would be the incoming pipe and then the outgoing pipe would be going down here. And then we can actually drop it back down. I'm really curious as to how this is exactly going to function. We'll be seeing how it performs in the next episode. Quinn, where are you? Yeah, there you go. You should be on the hamster wheel by now. What's your athletic skill? Just two. Yeah, you still have a long ways to go. In today's episode, I have two goals, one of which is going to be to conduct some research. And then I also would like to utilize the pip I have captured here in order to set up a nature reserve that is going to benefit most of our duplicants. Now, I've been observing Quinn here for a little bit and the skills just don't get up. The athletic skill stays the same. So maybe that is something they changed. I'm not 100% sure, but it looks like we're going to benefit more from allowing them outside. In order to do the research, maybe let's first lock in. We want to go ahead and research the solar panel, though I think I'm still missing the glass forge, aren't I? Yeah, without glass, we cannot even think about making solar panels. So let's go ahead and research that first. And in order to do that, we're going to plant some Weeswort seeds right here. They are going to cool down the Rappel generators and at the same time create some radiation. The radiation is then going to be shot over here. And I want to make sure that we actually shoot at 51 Rappels because because we're going to lose a little bit on the travel and I want it to be an exact 50 or at least 50 when it arrives here in the machine. In order to start the nature reserve, what I would like to see is it walled off. Uh, let me see, maybe actually right here. Every now and then we're going to have some doors in order to be able to make it over to other areas. Now, actually, they patched so many things. I first have to try if this is even still possible to create natural tiles. It might be that they patch this out as well. Let's try that. All we need is a mechanized airlock trapped in between two tiles. You could probably also do it with the manual airlock, not so sure. Okay, here we go. We can already go ahead and deconstruct this again. Let's see that happen. And it should drop down into a natural tile. Wonderful. So they didn't patch everything, thankfully. Now I want to probably leave approximately three tiles empty and then do it all over again. So right here, I would set up another set of walls and mechanized airlock right there. To get to the nature reserve status, we'll be needing four plants. I have two up here, but then I kind of would like to stop it going even further up. So maybe we can add two more tiles here at the bottom. We'll just have to move a few things. For instance, these guys here, I think we can deconstruct. And then I will be moving over the door slightly and this as well. I'm also going to deconstruct one refrigerator to make this a little bit smaller, this footprint. Um, let's do something like that. We'll be taking away this heavy watt wire and I will be moving it over one block. Looks like one Weasword is already going to town. Let's maybe just enable the Rappel generators. The other one here still requires the Phosphorite. Who are you? Amari just brought it over. And now, let's see, we're producing 75 wrap bolts per cycle here and then another 59 right there. Of course, in reality, we are producing much more, like 757, but we can only collect a tenth worth of the radiation that is going on with the wrap bolt generator. Still, it's going to be enough in order to fill this up. We can store 100 wrap bolts in here and then do one research point per 10 wrap bolts stored. Now, I want to make sure that out of all the research stations, this has the highest priority. So my researcher is always going for that first and then the other two next because I don't want to waste the wrap bolts going through when it's already full. Something else I would like to see taken care of at least temporarily is the hydrogen. We're just gonna pump it into gas reservoirs, get that all the way here at the top and then just run it into the reservoirs like so. And we have to make sure there is also an output pipe, even if it doesn't lead anywhere. Well, we can already bring them together. And then, of course, some proper flooring. Get that cabling all the way up and connect it to the pump. And finally, I would like to also see a switch there that lets me control the pump. But yeah, I don't necessarily want to do all my research in the hydrogen here. And it has been accumulating for a while. Now, before I forget, we should now also be able to open this up. Let me see. Yeah, just open all of this up and allow the polluted water to escape. 
Now, people always wanted me to make the laboratory room. So I think this is a good time to test it out. We can fit the supercomputer up there and also the normal research station. We should totally take advantage of that. Uh, yeah, let's do it this way. It's a little bit of a waste. Oh, and look, Jean is already totally going for it. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. You stopped almost all the rat bolts at the cost of a major eye irritation. What can I say? We're taking care of it right at this moment. Anyway, now it's time for some more mechanized airlocks. Uh, where do I want the second natural tile? Hmm. It's not very convenient where I want to enter the farms. But honestly, these farms have got to move either way. So if I leave the three spots empty and then build another door here, I think that's good. Looks like I have too many critters here. I'm killing everyone that is above the age of 15. Please don't clip that. There is... 23 you're way too old uh, 24 go away there 15 our youngest victim okay now i feel much better there we go this should turn out nicely now we can deconstruct this as well and oh where did that go ah wait i think we need all surrounding tasks that's why it didn't work now i gotta be careful here a little bit there is some debris right here as you can see and if there's debris you will get a cracked tile once it forms so i want to make sure somebody is picking that up before i actually deconstruct the door good the very last thing that i'm gonna need is a room divider here i'm just gonna use a pneumatic door that i'm gonna keep open oh hold on a second did we already get some drops yeah look at that we got some gold i don't want to miss the next eruption in 0 0.8 cycles and here we didn't set Ooh actually they brought some cobalt where did they bring it i don't see anything let's maybe speed up the building of these aluminium tiles so we can also get this one going there's my door just keep it open it's still gonna serve in dividing the rooms and then we have to do something similar on the top here where exactly do i want the end maybe probably right here i'm just gonna set up a heavy watch joint plate and then on the other side a tile and then again just a pneumatic door to divide this into a room we are are done with the research we got the bunker tiles and the bunker door very nice actually let me see bunker door Ugh, 500 kilograms of steel that is devastating however we got access to the glass forge that i'm just gonna put here as a reminder and then additionally we got the geo tuner nice and also we got access to the gantry for the rockets now let's choose the next research right away which was let me see all the way up here solar panels i thought i picked it up oh my gosh now i have to do it again okay so Somebody please dig that up. Actually, we can just go ahead and build the mechanized airlock. Anyway, once I got this pneumatic door in place here, I should be able to invite the pip. Where can we place it? Nowhere. Let's make some room for the critter drop off. Come on, Lyra, make me proud. Yes, finally. I rebuilt this like five times, but now we got it. We're also done here on the top. And that reminds me, we should probably... Ooh, wait, I took away too many tiles. But yeah, for now, we want to keep it on auto because I want my pip to stay inside here. Let's already go ahead and wrangle this guy up at the highest priority. And then I'm going to allow my duplicates in. Wait a sec, I'm going ahead of myself. I first need the critter drop off point. And now that we have the room division in place, we can check out this room. Ooh, no, I still need to divide this up. Let's get a trunk plate in there as well. Oh, that might have been a mistake cutting off the power here. Now I immediately need to build this again otherwise my rap bolts are just gonna go to waste well never mind they're already going to waste it's okay we have all the time in the world for those freaking solar panels <laughs> there now they're producing again oh well what you gonna do oh it seems like the radiation has increased slightly also since we're using the wee swords maybe we should ah we're already tracking phosphorite that is good and the pump here is also almost finished. Good. Now it's time to bring my pips over here. I'm going to allow my duplicates in and pick up all of that stuff. Especially the pip here. And we want to bring it over into the new room. But yeah, my point from before was this is now a room. And we can see the room size is way too large let me see we can fix that the maximum size is 120 tiles i figured this wouldn't be that much but yeah i can see where we went wrong here the one thing that i of course forgot is this room here everything is counting towards it so if we just check this out one more time it's all of that that counts towards it and if we cut it off maybe here we might be able to get away with it i mean the research station and everything here is gonna move either way i'm also gonna move my light and duplicate sensor so that i can cover these two machines there's my pip already in place that's good 
all I need now is a storage bin in order to collect some seeds that I want to plant. But yeah, also we have to limit this room right there. And now the room already shrank to 146 tiles. We need to get rid of 26 tiles. If we got rid of these, that's 28. It does suck a little, honestly, but I think it's going to be worth it. Let's also add more Atmo suits while we're at it. Let's do eight. Now switching this is going to be slightly stressful. At least I believe so. Well, maybe not. They're just going to keep on their suits. Some of the dupes are going to go out without the suit. That's totally fine. Let's just place the Atmos suit checkpoint one block over. Then I want to add two more docks. And I also want to make two more Atmo suits. Then all I need to do is bring in the power from a different angle. And I should be able to place a door. We can now see some Atmo suits here on the floor. But we can simply deliver some more to the stations. Also, we shouldn't forget to expand the power cable as well as the pipes here inside the storage bin here i want to set up some seeds that easily grow something like choya seeds and then maybe murph leaf seeds as well since this is not going to be the final setup and just a boost i do not really mind which seeds end up being planted okay okay we got the seeds in here and the pip already seems interested are you doing something come on grab the seeds you can do it Ooh. Put, 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 put. Ah, ah, that's what I'm talking about. And now eat it and plant it. It's not that difficult. We just need to do a tiny amount of research still. And wow, okay, she came here really quickly. Using up the wrap bolts like a pro, we don't even have to have the ceiling lights, honestly. Okay, now research is completed right now. I'm gonna disable the wrap bolt generators. Actually, instead of disabling them, I'm gonna shoot them one more time, but I'm not gonna fertilize the wheeze warts anymore until we need more research done. That research gave us the steam turbine, the solar panel, and the sauna. Okay, good. Now all of these Atmos suit dogs should have a suit delivered and then hopefully no suit is going to be laying around anymore. In the meantime, we're also pumping and storing the hydrogen right here. As you can see, this wrap bolt generator just shot. So I'm going to disable it from the grid. And then as soon as this one here is done as well, I'm going to shut it off. And this will leave us with a full wrap bolt storage for the material study terminal. There we go. Wonderful. The rest went actually through. Let's disable this. The wheeze words, of course, are going to continue at least for a little bit but the dupes aren't gonna mess around with it anymore i now also feel ready to drain and deconstruct the rest of the terrain here the slime baum can go i oh know i wanted to show you that the joya seeds have been planted uh let me see maybe he's gonna do it here for the gold amalgam i think it helps if we move the seeds downstairs so if i just go ahead and do that then it might be a little bit closer to what i expect of the pip and hopefully it will work Instead of this storage bin, what I would like to see is a park sign. So we're going to exchange that. Let's just build it out of gold amalgam to celebrate the extra six morale we're going to gain out of this. There, park sign is in place right now. It do anything for us because we need the additional two plants. And for that, I need this pip to act right now. They never do it when I watch them. Ah, he is tempted. He is tempted for sure. Okay, well, we'll just leave this be. And maybe let's focus on that. It's going to erupt in 90 seconds. Let's see this happen. I just want to know whether or not we cool it down before we are through the metal tiles. There it is. Okay, okay. We are picking up the gold. Now, 9 kilograms. Yeah, that cooled down quickly. That's at 5 degrees. This one here was at minus 1. This is good. Yeah, as soon as they are at the top here, they're already at 0 degrees. And oh my gosh, did you... Me? What? What? This is unacceptable. You picked up what? The gold at 900 degrees. So I really have to prevent them from getting in. This is crazy. Yeah, May, move out of here. You have nothing that you should do here. Now I have to send everyone away that is coming with the wrong intentions. You should just build that tile and not allow anyone back in again. Okay, there it is. Now the dupes cannot interfere anymore. This is all fully automatic and it apparently seems to be working. So all I need are these metal tasks, which means my metal refinery is making troubles. Yeah, look at that. There is nothing really we can do except expand our metal tiles. I'm gonna go all the way up here where we actually have some real cooling capabilities. If we check out the specific heat capacity of these guys, it's one and the gold amalgam is just 
1.0. So Golden Magnum has 10 times worse of a cooling power overall before it is the same temperature as my TAS. That means if I build my TAS all the way up and touching the Ignis Rock, I will be improving my cooling power by tenfold almost. Of course, it still has to translate over, but you get my basic gist. I'm gonna make a little exception and add a bit more cobalt to the mix. And some of my plug slugs here are quite elderly, though I'm gonna allow them to do one more egg before I actually kill them. Or maybe I'm just gonna allow them to die naturally once. We should now be able to see this in action. This is currently zero degrees here and nine degrees there. And as soon as I do that, we are going down with the temperature. 14 degrees, 13.7, 6, 5, yeah looking good okay this way we'll be able to pick it up again in the meantime i'm gonna make another six crafts here of aluminium ore this is just gonna allow me to cover for these metal tasks and then we can get this refined material going as well the pip decided to still not plant and my suspicion is my plants here are just too close i have to uproot a couple of them just mm, maybe that's already enough i'm just gonna do four i don't really care we have enough food pips will only plant the plants in certain intervals and so this could be the issue looks like my gas reservoirs are already full this is kind of crazy though the pressure is low yeah we might be able to get away just setting up some airflow tasks here and then i think i'm just gonna make a second row of gas reservoirs like that okay there we go we actually did it totally missed it metal ore no we want to get refined ore the cobalt in here the auto sweeper should be picking it up immediately and then the rest right here i'm gonna pick up with my dupes okay and let's see this happen right there okay and oh no well i totally forgot to build the rest of this oops so let's bring this down and over into the same slot here. Now this is potentially bad because now I have the hot stuff in here. Though it is cooling down. Uh, might be heating up the conveyor loader. No, it's not even doing that. I mean, right now I don't have my cooling loop running. If we wanted to, we could enable it for a brief moment. But it is at the moment not really necessary. I just want to get this rail done. So I see my material getting up. And then finally, once we have the last seed here, we just need one more little pip. One more seed, please. There was actually a worn Atmos suit, so they still do break, but it does take much longer. And right here we have the resulting oxygen. It's 169 kilograms of oxygen. For some reason, there's also polluted oxygen. But my point is there is a lot of oxygen in here. We have to empty them manually until we get another research out of the way. Let's see. Inside gases here, we want to gain access to portable gases, allowing us to get a canister emptier installed and take care of these bottles. Oh, we just finished it. And there we go. Yeah, that's what I figured. At a nice and cozy temperature, down from 620 degrees all the way to 12 degrees. But it is a closer call. Maybe I'm going to add another aluminium tile here. And of course, eventually we'll have to dig into the biome because we're sucking out the chill from here. And also this beginning here is going to be a little bit harsher on the system because we're allowing a lot of material through at a time, which usually wouldn't happen. Research already completed canister emptier we either set it up inside the base or it could feed this contraption again i wonder if i could accomplish this actually i think i'm just gonna do it here at the bottom of the base we're not gonna bother anyone this way i think we can also prevent the popped eardrums this way okay so now we should be ready to switch this to cobalt here the refined version and therefore we can allow manual use again my duplicates shouldn't make their way in here because i want to prevent it so i'm gonna do that mm, we first need to build this a door would be much better wonderful my two volcanoes are secured and fully automatic I should be feeding all of the refined materials to my plug slugs if necessary and then hopefully we'll also get some additional stuff. Of course there are more gold volcanoes to take advantage of so it's not all gonna be for the plug slugs but right now I just wanted to see this done. Also we got rid of a large portion of the hydrogen as you can see. I think I'm gonna let it rest a little bit. Yeah, this is probably good. It can accumulate again. And then as our third goal, we had that nature reserve. I removed even more plants, but this darn pip 
just doesn't want to play nice. And I feel like by now it would have done... No, okay. It just does it right now. Well, never mind. Okay, I take that. Nice. Okay, now we have a nature reserve and that is going to give every duplicant that goes through it a plus six morale boost at least for half of the cycle, maybe even more. But every time they go through here, and mind you, they are forced to go through here whenever they leave the base, even the farmers. So yeah, that is going to make our life much, much easier. And we can go a little crazier on how much stress we give our duplicants. As you can probably see, I've made some progress here digging up the terrain on the right side. My goal is to eventually get rid of these slime lung germs and so I installed some more deodorizers. I think we can take it. We still have, well, we have nine tons of sand, so it is diminishing. Granted, at the moment I have the most of, so I'm gonna craft some of that. And igneous rock is an unlimited resource with the volcanoes, so I'm gonna do 90 craft of that. I noticed we received five kilograms of glass here. Ah, of course, I deconstructed something here at one of the panels. Okay, that makes sense now. I wanted to spec Ari a little bit into super hard digging. Let me see, is that really what I wanted to do? Yeah, we are digging up some of the terrain, also shipping over some material. We're gonna find out what we can find here. And also there is a cool slush geyser that seems to be our first source of infinite liquid. So yeah, there's a lot we cannot dig up, most notably the abyssalite, but we can go through abyssalite with super hard digging. With our newly gained morale boost of the nature reserve, just check this out, we got like 32 morale. I don't want to go overboard though, unless I'm really settled down with a bunch of dupes. But yeah, at some point we could probably go with some more variety within them. Exosuit training for Nisbet, that's for sure. Ren, I think I'm gonna spec into improved construction. He's gonna be my mechatronics engineer on this planetoid and probably remain here. Quinn, of course, is our farmer, but we have to make them faster. Yeah, let's work towards suit sustainability. Lyra is gonna get the exosuit training, and that's all I wanna do for now. Now let's do something else right here. Just gonna add a pneumatic door to make this a room, and that should become the new laboratory room. We're now really digging up a lot of slime. I think I just wanna close this off. Can I even do that? Let me see. Yeah, we can do it. Uh, let's deconstruct that. Close it off so we don't get too many germs inside the base. Uh, okay, we got a plug slug that got away. That's fine. That's fine. We have way too many of them anyway. <laughs> Now, let's have a look at that laboratory efficiency bonus. I mean, we take it. The science isn't really something that goes too slow for me. But, you know, why not have it if we can? Something I totally neglected is the canister emptier. We should absolutely make use of that. We're gonna get the polluted oxygen and the normal oxygen in here. And it's just gonna be emptied out into the base again. There it comes. It's gonna be quite a bit, probably. Actually, that wasn't that bad. Something else I wanna start doing as of this point is crafting some ceramic in the background. We accumulated 120 tons of clay and we also have a little bit of coal that we can use. So I'm just gonna do 99. We could also do this forever, but I still wanna be careful since we have no real source of coal yet. I'm also gonna do another 50 crafts of refined carbon. Now it's time to change this mechanized airlock to either steel or we're just gonna continue the task because at the moment we cannot fight the heat we're crafting way too quickly. I'm going to set the sensor to below 40 degrees to pump out the liquid. And now with a little bit more surface area touching this, we should be fine. I mean, it's not too cold. The brine should be fine. And now this hopefully can do a little bit of a better job. We actually don't need this for much longer. I only want 1,200 kilograms of steel crafted in the background. So we have enough for our first aqua tuner. Now I think it's time to finish exploring this planetoid a little bit and figure out what we can find in each of these points of interest. I'm also gonna go ahead and reveal the volcano over here. We're just gonna keep the tile in place that keeps it overpressured. Wait, I exposed some more of that nasty abyssalite. Uh, um, let's just do another insulating layer here. And then I'm also gonna finish digging this up. 
find out what this volcano or geyser is about. At this point, I don't really need any more duplicants for my initial workforce, but what I would like to work towards slowly but surely is the dreamer force. That essentially means I want to take advantage of the somnium synthesizer. We need about six duplicants just dreaming and doing nothing the entire time. Now that also means I need to feed six more duplicants and provide oxygen for six more duplicants. I think we can do it. I mean, the meat and the omelets are coming in and then we can totally expand our farm. We could also think about alternative farms. It is absolutely doable. Oh, and of course, we can also just start a Paku farm. Should be easy enough. So that is another way we could generate food. But yeah, for now, I think I'm just gonna add another row of farm tiles in order to also grow some meal lice. And I know this is all beginning food, but... Honestly, the real benefit of good food is good morale, and that's the one thing we don't need at the moment. So I'm just gonna go ahead and complete the farms, and we're gonna start to invite duplicants that are really good dreamers, aka that have a really high athletic skill already right off the bat. Gossman here is going to be our first dreamer duplicant and it's not going to be Gossman. It's of course going to be one of the numbered duplicants. Dreamer 1. The dreamers will have a constant debuff of being 90% slower because of wearing a pyjama. It is hilarious but also devastating. So the best thing we can do is just put them into exosuit training as quickly as possible. So I'm just going to go ahead and work towards that. What we then need to do is activate the Somnium Synthesizer, also create a pyjama, and then make them sleep the entire time. This is going to be my dreamer schedule. Let's actually rename all of the shifts. It's going to be shift 1, 2, etc. So we have four shifts and then this would be the dreamer schedule. Right now I'm just going to do a normal schedule but other than that they are just going to sleep the entire time. So that's going to be dreamer but we will change that as soon as we get access to the somnium synthesizer and then also we just need more duplicants. But yeah I don't really want them to live inside the same infrastructure as my other worker duplicants. I will be separating them eventually. For now it's probably a good idea to have them here. We could actually test this out. We need a cot. Jumir 1 would be sleeping here. Then going to the toilet, going to eat and then sleep again. And even if they decide to do something else, they shouldn't wander off too far. So maybe it's good to have them here temporarily. And so my next goal is going to be to gain access to this room. Easy enough. Wait a second. I might want to drain this first. We can make this all go over here. And ooh, that's probably not good. Let me make a little lip here so it doesn't influence my liquid lock. This is not really going to drain the way I want. I think I have to fill this up. Well, I don't have to, but I want to. I'm just going to keep this one here in place for the Paco. Just securely stored there for me for the future. As for the farm tiles, we wanted to plant some meal lice. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm also gonna disallow meal lice. They're gonna go ahead and eat the pickled meal version instead. Nisbet, of course, made her way to the Somnium Synthesizer. Let's go ahead and activate it. A new dream analyzing building buried deep inside our asteroid. Well, let's go ahead and activate it right away. We do not want to demolish it, no. And we also want to dispense one pajamas because we have one dreamer. There we have Amari choosing a pajama. Uh, that is just hilarious. Um, did somebody activate it? I think so. Okay, now that we have a pajamas, we should be able to move that up to the base because we don't want to equip it at the bottom. That would be a horrible mistake. Let's bring it up here right next to Dreamer 1's bed. Okay, I went a little bit too high with the temperature. 40 degrees was probably too high when crafting steel. It was heating up too much and then it evaporated. Broke some of my pipes. It's all good, but 30 degrees should be the better setting. And look at that. We heated up the entirety of the gold amalgam already. Now we're just eating through here. So my suggestion would be to increase the amount of tasks that are touching the igneous rock. Also, if you help the duplicants mop up a little bit by canceling the commands, they are much faster at it. It's kind of stupid how this is programmed. They can spend literally the entire cycle mopping up one single tile because there's always new liquid coming in from the sides. My pajamas have been moved. Yeah, here they are. Okay, Dreamer 1, that's yours. Go ahead and pick it up. 
Yes, we got it. Okay, it's on. And now we can see wearing pajamas, it's athletics minus eight. Okay, so it's just 80% slower. Well, it actually depends on the athletic skill of the dupe. That's why a better athletic skill means that they will not lose as much speed. So Dreamer 1 is absolutely well equipped to go ahead and do whatever. However, what Dreamer 1 is supposed to do is uh, they're going to have a couple of downtime slots. They need enough in order to eat, poop and maybe take a shower. So they eat, poop, take a shower. Let's give them four downtime slots and then the rest is going to be bedtime. You know what? I'm going to give them five downtime slots for the morale boost. And if it is way too much, then we're going to reduce that. But let's see how that goes. Dreamer 1 is going to sleep and they are now going to produce the dream journals. The dream journals will be fed to the synthesizer. And as soon as we have 25, it's going to give us a insane colony buff for every single duplicate. It is absolutely mind boggling insane, that buff. That's why I want to go for it as soon as possible. However, it means we're going to need about six duplicates sleeping the entire time. Once we have 25 journals, we're going to get that buff for about 1,400 seconds. And then we just need to constantly feed it the dream journals to get more seconds before the buff runs out. If the buff runs out, we have to go ahead and do another 25 journals first. But yeah, with approximately six to seven dreamers, you should be able to always keep that buff up and so we need to produce a little bit more food and maybe even oxygen we'll see now will you look at that two in a row i mean the athletic skill in our situation isn't even that dramatically important but you know i'd rather go with plus nine athletics than not so max is gonna be our second dreamer uh, am i going too crazy wait no no we should be fine i can also still add another mess table max welcome to the tribe First of all, let's give you a skill point, improved carrying, whatever. Then we're also going to need another pajama. And before I forget, I should also change the priorities. Like Dreamer 1 should not do anything. So I'm going to disallow everything. No jobs whatsoever. Okay. And of course, the same thing counts for Max here, aka Dreamer 2. We have Meep here taking care of uh, choosing the pajama and there it is. Now, let me see if I go ahead and move this over here and then I tell Meep to stay here. Nope, not going to do it. I don't think you can currently increase the priority of the moving command. Ah, you know, I think I can risk it. Let's just go ahead and equip it. And then let's also rename you to Dreamer 2. There he goes, equipping the pajamas. And because of the athletic skill, it's not that bad. Okay, nice. Let's put him into the correct schedule here. Dreamer 2. And you can go ahead and produce some more dream tunnels for me. Okay, that's actually not too bad. We are going to need one, two, three four more dreamers and maybe we just go with five more to be secure and that also means i'm probably gonna need another great hall is this even a great hall yeah it's a great hall so we're probably just gonna build this here at the top have those mess tables we're gonna have the exact same layout oh just don't look at the decoration bridge and then another set of mess tables that's fine we have a duplicate center here and there we have some ceiling lights and what else automation wire oh another thing i want to check is that we don't have overlapping downtime slots at least not too many yeah i think what i want to do is start my downtime here and then bedtime here that's better they of course go ahead and take a poop then the next step seems to be eating okay that takes about three slots and then they want to go ahead and take a shower dreamer one isn't doing anything so we could probably risk it with three slots only i'm gonna try that go back to bed and produce some journals also i want to increase the priority of this building to seven so the duplicates will bring the journals over and there is another meteor shower let's observe it what about the temperature yeah, we should still be good. This thing here is slowly heating up. Looks like some of our critters have died. Maybe I should take care of actively killing the elderly. Yeah, anyways, we need to recruit two more. Let's go ahead and get some young ones. Age 12, wrangle this guy up. We have age 18, that's already quite... Yeah, age 11 is better. You get wrangled up too. You know, this is crazy. We even have some slime asteroids. 
Now, this kind of feels personal. Is this even coming with... Yeah, it's coming with germs. Are you serious? We now have a total of 20 tables and how many beds? That's 16 beds. Yeah, I guess we could go for another bedroom here at the top. That would make sense. I'm gonna rearrange this a little bit so that we can actually disconnect this part and then we should be able to just close off the room. There we go. Easy as that. We have expanded the base slightly to accommodate more dupes. Whenever I get a good candidate for a sleeping dupe, I'm gonna go for them. Even if it's just plus four athletics or something, they should be cozy inside the base as long as I ensure they are in the right schedule and that they are disallowed to do any of the jobs. It's gonna be the dream team. There's one more thing I would like to do and that is make this supply teleporter part of the base okay well not three in a row but a little bit of sandstone we take that okay i think i already found the third dreamer it's not as good this one here let me see just plus three athletics it's still better than nothing i'm just gonna go ahead and print her Ada, you're gonna be dreamer three inside the skills we're working towards suit sustainability as usual and then for dreamer one we can already get into that okay nice dreamer three already has a bed and also a mess table so all we need is to get into the priorities that disallow everything i'm gonna wait until somebody crafted the pajama let's also do something else set up a storage here that's something i wanted to do for a while and what i want to see inside the storage is all the seats that we ever find so all the stuff that's dropping here on the floor cluttering my farms will now go into that storage bin near the spice grinder where we can actually use it and while we're at it we're also gonna collect the pajamas here let's put this at a higher priority but just temporarily actually we don't really need to increase it i have to be careful certain things like these i just temporarily increased and then others i want in a specific priority like the material study terminal should always be higher than the other sign stations but it doesn't even have to be nine six will have the exact same effect we could even do something like two and then one because our researcher is always going to prioritize doing the research but yeah, usually I'm happy with just priorities 5 to 9 and then I'm using priority 1 for other things. But you see, having priorities 2 and 1, for instance, for the science stations is then gonna prioritize the analyzing of a volcano and geyser, even if we have it at priority 5. By the way, we now revealed the first aluminium volcano. We're gonna analyze that. Oh, well, already initiate the analyzing. I'm not yet gonna destroy the tile that protects us. And there's also another cobalt volcano. I also figured that the cobalt volcano is much harder to keep cool. Like this material heated up quite a bit and all of this material here lost its chill. So maybe sooner than later, we'll have to enable the cooling loop and maybe even set up some radiant pipes here in order to help cool down the tiles. For the gold, it's absolutely no issue whatsoever. We'll be able to cool down the gold volcano for quite a while. So cobalt is going to be the one we need to automate first. Here we have our pajamas. Let's make sure Dreamer 3 is equipping them. Oh, come on. Look at that. This is going to be an absolutely insane journey here. Making her way back. <laughs> Now, thankfully, we should have just enough time. Actually not. Yeah, this might be a little bit of an issue. She's gonna take a while to make it back. You know what? Unequip the suit. This way we are at least a little bit faster. Okay, and then I'm just gonna sweep that Atmo suit and deliver it to another station. And so now Ada can at least take a poop that is the most important part and then she can eat in the next downtime cycle. There we go. Three dreamers at the works. Nice. I'm gonna go ahead and expand this all the way to six dreamers. If we look at the journals, it's already 17 journals inside the synthesizer. So it's not gonna be that hard to reach the quota. When it comes to germs inside the base, I almost got rid of all the slime lung germs. I think I'm gonna wipe down the base one more time, just give this a good cleaning, and then maybe set up another deodorizer here so this can get finished. I also added a bunch more slime storages because we were exceeding the capacity of our one storage and I also added some more polluted dirt storages as well. So now we're slowly but surely collecting everything that is capable of off-gassing. I also want to take apart this last little bit here that I neglected and that should be the rest of the mud that we still didn't dig up. Well, there's actually a little bit left here, but ooh, I want to make sure to not break that vacuum. So maybe we build a barrier from the inside that makes more sense. And if we do something like this, we should be able to preserve the vacuum. We're not going to need the bottle emptier anymore. 
Mm, well, at least not right now. We could certainly just put it over here. That might be easier. Story trade completed. Somnium Synthesizer. Meeting the initial quota of the dream content analysis has triggered a surge of electromagnetic activity that appears to be enhancing performance for duplicants everywhere. Yes, unlock maximum aptitude mode. I wonder, can I do that or is it just gonna do it it's just gonna do it so we get a thousand five hundred seconds even and this is just gonna count down from a thousand five hundred seconds so now the only thing we're missing is a source of oxygen in order to feed this and i figured we could just take the oxygen from downstairs at least in the beginning this should be okay if we also set up a deodorizer here then i'm gonna do a little gas pump and we're gonna power this up most likely we're not going to get anything other than polluted oxygen and oxygen. So we're going to set up a little system in order to get rid of the gases that we don't want. So I first want to bring this over and then we're going to come back down and feed it into this slot. On the way over to the deodorizer, I want to get rid of the polluted oxygen. So we're going to set up a gas element sensor for the pipes. Set that up here and then a gas vent as well. All I want to do is expel the polluted oxygen so as soon as we detect polluted oxygen i'm gonna open up the vent it's gonna be expelled and then the normal oxygen can continue and feed the somnium synthesizer and now we can already see we're missing the oxygen however the seconds are still gonna count down and i think overall we're gonna be losing that buff i'm already gonna dispense the next pajama here for my next sleeping duplicant oh we're already down with sand again well it's no wonder with all the deodorizers maybe it wouldn't be the worst of ideas to start collecting the regolith here instead of just breaking down my precious minerals let's see i could probably set up a nasty quick and functional liquid lock up here something along these lines should be good there also should be no vacuum behind this from what i can tell get a bottle emptier in here and then we're just gonna fill this up and start collecting some of that precious regolith which then basically has the same functionality as the sand as a filtration medium the sensor here i want to set to let's see polluted oxygen that's what i want to expel we only want to bring in the normal oxygen there it is wonderful in the beginning of course that's all going to be polluted oxygen and some of it might actually be able to go through depending on whether or not we're going to overpressure this area but if we check yeah look at that we had some overpressure let's just see what happens maybe it gets stuck or i will have to expel it again so if it goes over here then ooh, no it's not even stuck can i just pump in normal polluted oxygen as well is it gonna accept that or is it gonna just eat it well it is kind of working now that the area cooled down i think yeah we're just gonna have to convert all of this polluted oxygen and then we're gonna be absolutely fine i'm also gonna start collecting the stuff we have on the floor here nothing should be off gassing anymore we have new printables do i get another one not really i think i'm gonna go for the copper this time but yeah maybe we shouldn't even be that picky with the dreamers right now it's kind of an on and off situation and we can see this with quinn he is faster in short bursts right now it looks like we're gonna require two pumps but from experience i can tell that this is not the case yes that's what i'm talking about now we're getting somewhere and we can actually keep it up look at that okay let's have a look at the buff maximum aptitude is what we got from the somnium synthesizer it means minus 25 stress per cycles plus five athletics plus five strength plus five science plus five piloting and plus five machinery it is insane this just makes my entire colony a whole lot better and it's so much worth it to do this in the beginning you know we're gonna play for i don't know 3000 cycles and so we're gonna benefit from this across the entire colony even on other planetoids i think maybe we can check on that ari where are you right here you also have the maximum aptitude buff so now even the operating is going much quicker i mean look at the determination yeah this is gonna be absolutely incredible now we just need to make sure we have enough dreamers and then we need to make sure to have enough food but that should all be sorted out for now maybe oxygen is going to be a problem sooner because we are relying on polluted dirt still which 
eventually it's gonna run out. But yeah, I would say the next time we're gonna get some regolith and maybe start securing some of the skies that we can see here, maybe experiment around with some materials, see what can withstand maybe a meteor shower or two. What I would like to do in today's episode is kind of start securing the portion towards space, maybe try out a couple of materials, which ones will be better to hold off the meteorites before we have enough materials to set up a layer of bunker tiles. But yeah, essentially I finished my liquid lock here so we can start digging up some of the outside here. And I'm especially interested in the regolith, of course. Also, let's see, we have some sedimentary rock here so we can just keep going with that material. But what I would like to see is a little something like this. And then someone in the comment section mentioned that regolith asteroids or meteorites cannot damage the airflow task. But this is not the only type of asteroid we're getting. We're getting far more destructive ones. But yeah, we're still gonna test this out and just set up a layer of airflow task here and then furthermore i would like to get all the way up in order to see where the border exactly is it's probably well it's right there honestly but still i just want to make my way up for now and of course on the way i'm gonna attempt to grab some regolith when it comes to radiation we get 125 rats a cycle which translates to oh already 13 rats just working a little bit outside yeah but it's not that dramatic like the other planetoid is much worse is it really much worse yeah here it's 187 rats now i just see my pump here is already starting to struggle this is not good i probably yeah probably want to make a separate system for this oh well it can wait a little bit i just see that all of this new oxygen is now coming over slowly let's just say for now we do not mind that the buff is on and off every now and then it's just gonna be annoying for the duplicates but not really for us oh guys you gotta be careful uh wait can you still make your way back? Nisbet with 26 rats. Okay, we shall be fine. I'm gonna keep going over a little bit at another ladder piece right here. And this should allow us to dig up the entirety of this shaban. Okay, right here we actually have the border. I certainly want to go down, let's say, about five blocks before we have the top tile. This is going to allow me to set up some infrastructure here on the top in order to mine the meteorites and also collect everything. And then on the other side, I still have enough space to set up a proper rocket system. Let's see, this is probably about 30 to 40 tiles should be fine. Yeah, honestly, it's going to come down quite a bit, the rocket system. Maybe we have to build it on this side in order to even have enough space because right here we have the teleporters and this is a really close call. Looks like I got my fourth dreamer here. Catalina with four athletics so far cannot do cooking decreased medicine yeah that's all fine let's go ahead and print her we already have a pre-made costume here the pajama let's make sure Katarina where are you oh whoa, whoa. that's a little bit fiddly and then also within skills I'm gonna get into improved carrying dreamer 2 also got a skill point I'm gonna assign that you're gonna be dreamer four all right I'm actually going to allow her to first equip the costume while still being in an active schedule. There it is. Equipped. Now you can go into the correct schedule down here. Dreamer 4. Uh, 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 what are you doing? Okay. And that means she goes right to sleep. Wonderful. Four dreamers. That should be good. Let's have a look at that. 1,100 seconds left so far. At this rate, we might not even get all the way down to zero before we have enough dreamers. I also would like to test building some igneous rock tiles and then maybe we're just gonna have a couple of layers beneath it to block more of the radiation and so that we can work safely. I think the best thing we can do right now is just build like three tiles in a row here so that when a duplicate uses the ladder shaft they are already safe in terms of radiation. I'm just really curious whether or not we're gonna need the insulated tiles if they block a little bit more radiation. Actually, maybe that is something we can see in the properties. No, it says radiation blocking zero for the both of them. Does it even say anything for other materials? Maybe it only says it once it's actually built. And then maybe at this point, I also would like to see a storage bin that I'm gonna fill up with igneous rock so we have an easier time building everything. By now, I feel like setting up another pump here for the Somnium synthesizer, and we're just gonna do that right here here next to our oxygen production system. If we catch a little bit of natural gas or carbon dioxide, I don't even mind because it looks like it's just getting destroyed. So all I really have to do is bring this down. Do I have a preference? Yeah, I think I'm gonna go down this way. And then we just enter this pipe and kind of help out the pump here at the bottom. That seems easy and straightforward enough for me. Okay, now that we build it, 
yeah, radiation blocking 56% with the normal tile and 60% with the insulated tile. It's not much more. So in my opinion, it's not worth it to go for double the amount of materials. We're just going to use normal tiles. And if I set this to priority 9, this one to 8 and this one to 7, I should be able to build them all. Then we're going to build a ladder just going over into both directions. And then it's basically all about radiation blocking. So we can really take care of the surface here without harming our dupes with radiation sickness. Now, of course, every time we get a meteor shower, a lot of this is going to be destroyed. But it's just going to make it easier for us to collect the meteorites. I'm also going to do that into the other direction. And now if we check the radiation here, after putting down three tiles, it's just eight rats per cycle. So it's going to be no issue for our dupes whatsoever. And that also means now they're pretty safe here on the ladder where they're gonna spend a lot of time good i want to say we're gonna make the switch to regolith right now i have zero kilograms of sand totally missed that happening but we have 25 tons of regolith which is absolutely amazing oh i just see i stuffed my system here of the polluted dirt since i'm storing it here in these storage bins that's not good and also instead of sand we're now well regolith is already registered here i kind of want to make sure that we prioritize building the top portion here instead of the ladders and yeah, building this now makes it much easier with the Igneous Rock nearby. Nisbet can just go to town and she's still far away from a major radiation sickness. They shouldn't really complain about a minor sickness. Come on, it's just minor. I had to move the pump over slightly. I was picking up way too much polluted oxygen, but this way I'm mostly picking up the oxygen more than 90% of the time. I also increased the amount of deodorizers now that we have a steady source of filtration medium and this is just going all the way down i removed the other pump and you can see this is now pretty much constantly filling up the machine so now we can focus a little bit on finishing the rest of this going all the way over from one side of the map to the other okay looks like dreamer 3 wasn't capable of eating in time i think i need to assign the mess tables this should be the dreamers mess tables so i'm just gonna say this is gonna be dreamer 3 then this would be dreamer 2 and this will be Dreamer 1. OCD. Okay, let's go Dreamer 1, Dreamer 2, and Dreamer 3, and Dreamer 4. And then maybe it would be in my best interest to kind of pump out the hydrogen from this room. Finally, it doesn't really go up quickly enough on its own. So we can just bring this up over and maybe release it right there. I also would like to see the same settings here on the refrigerator. And then also the beds. This should be Dreamer 1, Dreamer 2, Dreamer 3. 3 and Dreamer 4. And now Dreamer 3 is actually eating. Okay, she even snatched some barbecue. Little booger. Actually, it looks like now I cannot reach the sublimation station. That is interesting. Yeah, I need a ladder piece like right there. I always thought they could reach two tiles here. And there we go. Okay, that did the trick. Wonderful. Good. Now we're pumping out the hydrogen out of the base. This should then push the oxygen up and it's going to be much easier to produce the journals for my dreamers. We even got some more skill points for them. Rocket piloting for you and then suit sustainability. Very nice. In the meantime, we're making good progress here on the top. If we just get meteorites every 15 to 30 cycles, then I am not too worried about having to actually maintain and repair it. I'm also going to open up this part here in order to get access to the top and it shouldn't be on the same part as my ladder. Okay, nice. We're now inside the breathable area. Barely, but it is working. So that is good to know. There's not going to be any more sleep delays. Unfortunately, we're still going to lose this first buff here, but then we're going to accumulate another 25 journals. It's no problem. As a matter of fact, what we should do now is probably decrease the priority. So the journals we're already acquiring are not going to be wasted. We're just going to allow this to go down to zero once. And then all we need is a fifth and maybe sixth dreamer. We'll see how many we exactly require. Now looking at everything, I imagine my rocket stuff to be on the right side as mentioned, but then my ultimate worker base is going to be on the left side, including the teleporter system. That still means this teleporter is a little bit too close for comfort. I should figure out the maximum height of the largest rocket so that we can accommodate for that. Now we're going to lose the buff and hmm, maybe we don't even have to input another 25 journals i thought we did 
I also think what I want to do is combine this pipe here with the upper portion because we always struggling to keep enough oxygen in our suits. All we need to do is get this up here and then connect it to this pipe and it's going to combine with the other two and still supplement the oxygen system. We should still be able to keep up with the somnium synthesizer, at least in theory. There it is, the connection. Yeah, that's going to make it much better, hopefully. We're almost done here at the top. I think I'm just going to go for two layers. The third one would be a little bit annoying to build. And we only get about 20 rats per cycle this way. And now the top portion here is pretty much safe to disassemble, which I'm probably going to do right now. Okay, it appears the maximum height of a rocket can be 35 tiles, which means I want to leave 35 tiles as of this point free. That would go all the way down to here, okay? And that means right here, I would want to set up my rocket platform. Hold on, I wanted to do this on the other side. That means right here would be my first rocket platform. Maybe let's go ahead and research that. There it is, rocket platform. It is just one research away, even a simple one at that. And then I guess I also want to start digging away the rest of the terrain. Should be quite a quick job like this. Another ladder structure over here. We're gonna sacrifice the gases and critters in there. As long as we don't breach through to the actual base here. Okay, by now we're also pumping up a lot of oxygen. I think I am moving the pump up to the next level. And I'm also gonna connect this to a switch so I can shut it off once I'm done. Maybe replace these tiles with airflow tiles. Make those gases flow more freely. No, I was actually correct here. We have to fill it up with 25 more journals before it gets started again. But we're totally on it. And now pumping out the rest of the hydrogen here. Wonderful, Jean. Thank you. Research is completed, giving us access to the rocket control station and the platform. I'm going to build the platform out of cobalt and it's going to go right here. Yes. Now the good thing about Ren is that he is more focused on building than digging. So he's doing the ladders first and not dig all the terrain away getting himself stuck. Honestly, this might be a good idea in general. Just have the digging skill a little bit lower than the building skill. And then the same thing here with Ari. Whenever I have something to build that should be prioritized. Same thing with everyone that eventually might visit other planetoids. May right here. Uh, who else? Lyra, of course, building no printables. Do we get the next dreamer? Yeah, actually, look at that. Devon cannot do decorating errands and increase the decor morale bonus. Yeah, we should totally go for Devon. I wasn't prepared to already get another one. So let's get another pyjama in the joint. Dreamer 2 can get into suit sustainability and Devon is just gonna get started. I want to make sure this bed here is dedicated to Devon and then this mess table here. Uh, come on, get out of the way. Mess table. This shouldn't be Ari's, it should be Devon's. Devon cannot do anything. Oh, I forgot that with Catalina, aka Dreamer 4. Everything is not permitted. Dreamer Okay, now we're just lacking one more, I believe, in order to constantly keep up the buff. How are we doing on food? Excellent fruit should be sent over here. Let me see, why isn't this being done? Maybe increase that priority slightly. Oh, oh, here we go. Meteorites incoming. Uh, uh, okay, so far these are not destructive. Looks like we're totally fine with the slime here. That isn't gonna destroy anything. So we gotta wait for another type of meteor shower. Wait, Dreamer 4 is starving again. Also, where are my pajamas? Dreamer 5 needs to equip those pajamas. Where is Dreamer 4? Come on, eat something. Yeah, pickled meal should be fine. Of course, the darn major eye irritation gives them minus four athletics. Yeah, <laughs> that's not good. I think for now I have to increase their downtime schedule. So we're going to go up back to five slots. And then, yeah, we might need more oxygen. This could be a problem. Well, at the moment we have enough regolith. So I'm just going to set up another system here to supplement what we already have going on. More deodorizers. We can take it. And it seems to be absolutely necessary at this point. Pyjamas are coming up. They, yeah, have been stored. I got two people entombed here. Oh, wow. Okay, I see how you managed that. Ah, yes, uh, this is completely stupid. I cannot even get through there. Please free my dupes. 
Okay, much better. So I think what I'm going to do is open this up and give them access here in another way so they don't have to go through the water. Okay, so far so good. We have a plan as to where to set up the rocket silo and as to where to set up the finalized worker base. We should be working on that very soon so that we can slowly but surely transition this planetoid to be an industrial planetoid rather than using up the entirety of the space for the worker base. It's going to be more pushed over to the sides and then we can start to disassemble one bit after another to make space for crazy industry and everything we are going to require to supply the hotel. To wrap up the episode, I want to shave off a little bit more of the surface here. So we're going to build over here. But now this is where I'm actually still sucking out the chill. Well, not very efficiently, but we do want to keep a large portion of this still intact. So I'm just going to dig down about three tiles over and this way we should be able to reach the rocket platform as well. But yeah, honestly, the metal refinery, we should be moving that by now. Unfortunately, oil is not something we have access to, though we still have a lot of really cold liquid. I think I'm going to enable the cooling loop now. And even more than that, we might be replacing some of these pipes here with radiant pipes. I think that is a really good idea. Aluminium would be great as a material and since the cobalt volcano is gonna become active sooner i'm gonna start here replacing this with aluminium pipes we are still crafting a little bit of aluminium let's actually stop everything else so we are just focusing on that you know what i'm just gonna move my metal refinery setup downstairs this is absolutely fine we can do this temporarily right here actually the heavy watt wire is in the way but there we go just get a bunch of tasks going set this up here connect it to the wire and then i'm gonna take a little detour here bring this in here and then bring this out again in order to just drop it back into the pool this is gonna allow us to quickly craft one material after another because we don't have to wait for any coolant to actually cool down still gonna leave this one in place for the time being but we do not really have to be mindful about keeping the terrain in place and then another thing i would like to see is a layer of obsidian insulated tiles beneath the rocket platforms obsidian tiles can take a lot of heat and therefore it will take time before they overheat and we might have to do something about it. Ari got himself in huge troubles. Okay, so my plan of building first, digging later didn't add up. They still get themselves in trouble. However, we have some mafic rock here. If we just do that, mafic rock, where are you? Right there. And we prioritize this. Come on, Ari, stop rubbing your eyes. And now you can go ahead, breathe a little bit. Yeah enjoy life come on you're too depressing man good now with this metal refinery setup we should be able to quickly craft 20 pieces of aluminium ren hopefully is coming along yeah there you go filling this up with aluminium and of course right away it is gonna fill up with more coolant nice now joshua is doing the stuff we are now crafting aluminium exactly what we needed and then the hot liquid is going out and it's eventually gonna heat up everything but you know we have plenty of cooling still available much better than waiting for the other refinery okay now i gotta do this quickly just replace these pipes therefore the cooling loop is gonna actively help cooling down these metal tasks for the cobalt volcano next activity in 0.6 cycles we closed it off again so no dupes are gonna grab that incredibly hot cobalt today i would like to make some more progression towards the solar panels by making Making the glass forge let's build it down here also temporarily next to our smelting system i'm then gonna go ahead and grab some insulated pipes and i'm actually gonna make them out of the ceramic material that i prepared just bring them over have the molten sand travel as little tiles as possible and then we're gonna go ahead and dump it right into the liquid here now even though i don't think that's still important but i want to go ahead and insulate the tiles this is standing on and then we also want to hook it up to power another thing i want to do is set up a storage bin here where we're gonna collect the sand because now we don't want to use the sand anymore to filter the nasties it should be dedicated to the forge so within filtration medium sand i'm gonna set this to the highest priority we should always be bringing that here and hopefully thanks to the proximity settings they will not be using that for our deodorizers they might still go ahead and occasionally use that to fill up the deodorizers nearby, but generally the regolith should be closer. Right now we do not have any sand, but there is still some sandstone here in this pile. And within the rock crusher, we are actually crushing that up, if I'm not mistaken. Sandstone to sand. Yeah, right there. There it is, my beautiful glass forge. Let's bring it into action. I'm going to start with about 30 crafts and see just where this is going. Whoops, I totally misplaced that storage bin. There we go. That's much better. 
gonna set this to the same priority I have all of my operations buildings at. There we go. Jean is crafting the first glass. It is dropping over and into here. It should be okay with the temperature though. Making the solar panels on this planetoid is really not worth it, but making them here might be extremely beneficial. So maybe first things first, we want to improve our situation here a little bit. We're going to build the mafic rock ladder all the way up. I'm also going to leave five tiles free right here, and this would be the top level right there. And then we're going to do something similar here on the second planetoid, making sure we don't suffer too much from the meteorites. Have a storage bin here with all mafic rock, and then we're just going to tile this up. Now, the funny thing here is that I need to change Ari. I need to downgrade the building priorities again. Otherwise, I'm not going to be storing any materials that I want. With the storage in place here, I'm going to be collecting some mafic rock at a slightly higher priority. Ari needs to hurry up a little bit in order to build the protective layer here. What are we at? 49 rats. Okay, just don't want to get to 100. Okay, there we go. That is already much, much better. As long as we prioritize the upper row here, we shouldn't be in trouble anymore. There's my storage bin. We're gonna store mapic rock. Looks like we're almost ready to build the first rocket platform here. We're then just gonna keep on going once we disassemble the metal refinery part. Now with some of my duplicates such as Joshua, I also want to prioritize storing a little bit more and I'm gonna do the same thing with Quinn because they don't really have anything to do otherwise. We already got 755 kilograms of glass. I think I'm gonna add that to the products for now that we're gonna send over to the second planetoid. That probably goes under refined material. No, manufactured maybe. There you go. Oh, I just see. We also need to send over some more polluted dirt if we're so inclined. Now, another thing I really want to test out is the Geo Tuner, just to see what it does. I think we should be able to get this hooked up here, maybe even build a door right there, honestly. Oh, check this out. We actually ran out of power for the first time, and it's just before nighttime. That begs the question, are we going to be able to completely fill up our battery storage? No, it doesn't look like we will. Hmm, okay. So slowly but surely, I will have to think about maybe adding another farm. Good, it is daytime and we were able to fill it up three-fourths. That's not a lot, is it? So maybe it is beneficial to add a bunch of solar panels to the mix here as well. I mean, we don't completely have to go overboard, just a little bit of backup power, maybe four panels or so. And then it begs the question where we're gonna put them. But I think for now, I just wanna fix my power problem. And so all I want to see is this one hooked up here. Let's bring this cable all the way down, then make our way through here and hook it up. Some heavy watch joint plate and maybe another one here. You know, I think people are contracting slime lung again. We might have some germ issues every now and then inside the base. This is not good here, but I'm working on it with another deodorizer that should be fixed. Still, I'm really looking forward to now actually making a fully fledged out worker base with all the features and bells and whistles. Okay, now with the support of the solar panels, it seems I can barely keep up now with my power demands, which is good. So this is just helping out a little bit during the daytime. Now, of course, one easy thing we could take care of is making use of the hydrogen here as well. That would honestly be fairly easy and also efficient. So let me just go ahead and set up something here. What is this? just random abyssalite but yeah essentially i want to go for a bunch of hydrogen generators right here which is gonna set up let's say four yeah with a smart battery in the center so my smart battery would be going right here and it would of course influence whether or not the hydrogen generator should be going for it then of course we could go ahead and combine all the outputs of our gas reservoirs and i think for now i'm just gonna bring it down into a filter that might be easier there it is gas filter the hydrogen i'm gonna extract right here it's gonna go into the various hydrogen generators and all of the other gases i'm just gonna expel right here i also took apart the two science buildings that we had standing here and i brought them over here the research station and the supercomputer i will be putting down the last science station here on the top as well as a matter of fact maybe we can already research it right here the data analysis research yeah we need the virtual planetarium let's just go ahead and research that this here already counts as a laboratory room the one that i want us to use to try out the geotuner with the geotuner it seems we can target a gold volcano 
and then what happens? I think, yeah, Duplicant needs to toggle that. Okay, now we require some experimentation. Wait a second, is the Gold Volcano... No, it's dormant at the moment. Next activity in 22 cycles. So we would have to go for the Cobalt thingamabob. The problem just here is that it is extremely hot. Like, I do struggle a little bit cooling down the Cobalt, contrary to the Gold, which is completely easy. Double click to view... Okay. Ah, interesting. But yeah, honestly, I think the Geyser needs to be active or the Volcano. Let me see, is there anything we could do about the other Gold Volcano? I mean, we we could definitely make a similar system. I'm actually tempted to do that. We're gonna dig it up and then I'm just gonna insulate this part right here. So I just want to make sure we have some kind of a barrier in terms of heat distribution. Like here is all abyssalite so all of the chill here is gonna be contained and then right here I also don't want any heat to escape or whatever. But I think if we did something like that it doesn't even matter that we have gases going on here. We could then allow the gold to just touch the terrain and then eventually be solidified but yeah i think that is exactly what i'm gonna do this one here is idle so it's gonna be active as soon as we dig it up you know something that is weird if i check this out yeah the journals aren't always being brought over like we have a whole bunch of journals here but i guess they can be brought over in one single go afterwards but yeah i noticed that most of my dreamers are getting idle around this point so i think i'm gonna risk it now to go back to three downtime slots we can serve them all oh actually we cannot serve them all in one go we only have three toilets but yeah three of them could first go ahead and eat and afterwards take a poop that's how I would do it, I'm just saying. Okay, Nisbet now wants to start digging. Uh, wait, we might want to wait until this is over here with the eruption. Uh, oh, okay, I did not wait for long enough. My bad, my bad. It stopped complaining, but there we go. It's just creating some gold, which is fine. As long as nobody's actually picking that up. Amari, you freaking booger, you. You just can't let it be. Yeah, sorry, Amari. You have to go back and I'm actually gonna disallow you inside. You're just making me lose it, man. There is my pneumatic door and Amari, you are not gonna be allowed in anymore because I cannot trust you. Yeah, and finally we are analyzing the volcano. That is good. There's some oxalite coming in. Maybe we can just go ahead and dig out the stuff. And now if we're cooking up, we can at least pick it up. There. Now the gold has cooled down adequately, so Amari, you are allowed to pick it up. What's that so hard? Just don't pick it up when it's still at 900 degrees. That's all I'm asking you. Would you be happy if you were picked up at 900 degrees? No, you wouldn't. It's common sense. Okay, nice. Seems like we are out of the gutter with the battery power. Why is nobody building that smart battery? Would now be a really good time to do that and also hook up everything. And then inside the gas filter, we want to filter out hydrogen. Ooh, ooh. I can already filter out super coolant. Interesting. Ooh, we're almost done here. Come on, come on, come on. That's what I'm talking about. Now, I really want to make sure that we are picking stuff up here. This is TH32. Let me see. Yeah, TH32. That would be the one that we're targeting right now. Somebody just needs to toggle that. Uh, right here. Amari. Okay, thank you. Experimentation needed. And we are also requiring phosphorite. Phosphorite isn't something I'm actually tracking right now. Phosphorite 8.3 tons. We'll see if we actually have enough. Wait, it's refined phosphorus. I need to figure out how to make that. Refined phosphorus. Uh, yeah, I know it exists. I want to know how to make it, dude. Okay, here we have some phosphorus. What happens uh, if we melt it at 243 degrees? then it will become liquid, right? And therefore also refined liquid. And then we just cool it down again. How do we heat it up? That is probably the much better question. We should take the extra heat from our cobalt. Yeah, we definitely have to take the heat of a volcano. It could be much easier than I figure. Hmm, yeah, let me put that on my list. Hold on. Refine phosphorus. All right, we're gonna do that. But right now, I'm not too desperate. Rather than refining what we already have, we should go ahead and activate what we don't have. I mean, this guy is now gonna contribute to our overall refined gold. And I have to make sure that it cools down properly. Should be easy with the gold volcano. I wouldn't be doing that with the additional cobalt volcano. But yeah, usually Amari is the only one that immediately wants to go ahead and feed the critters. So I think we can just leave this running right now. And then as soon as we 
have enough. Yeah, it's just gonna cool down rather quickly. 52 plus 80 plus 140 kilograms. Okay, not too shabby. Research is completed. What did I do? Yeah, the virtual planetarium. We can put that probably right here. Well, once I remove the pump. Yeah, and we even have the space for a storage bin. Cool. Okay. This pump here has been activated for long enough. Wonderful. I really like where this is going. Virtual planetarium. And then we can collect all of our data banks, for instance, right here. Oh, we already crafted everything. This is actually going extremely quickly. Let's do another 20 crafts of glass. And then I want to smelt up some more cobalt. I'm going to do uh, 30 crafts. As for the iron, we're going to do 50 crafts. If we can craft some steel, we're just going to do that. And then gold would also be great to have some of that let's do another 50 of that aluminium i don't have too much left in terms of raw ore yeah i think we're gonna focus on gold and cobalt because that's what i have a lot of and also what i need a lot of okay so now looking at this as long as we have it on the neutronium it's not gonna really perform the way i want it to there's also not a lot of heat seeping through this barrier so that is actually pretty cool so i think what i'm gonna do is just set up a simple system i'm gonna take advantage of the fact that we have cold gas in here so all i really have to do is just set up a auto sweeper we're then gonna load that stuff into a conveyor loader and then i can have a bunch of metal tiles i'm gonna go with aluminium once again one two three four five should be enough but of course that's stupid blocking the auto sweeper so instead i'm gonna go up one two three four five inside i'm gonna build some aluminium radiant pipes and then basically all i have to do is make the loop right over here we can utilize the same cooling loop so instead of going directly over and dumping the polluted water we're first gonna go up bring this all the way up and then just connect that and complete the loop this way going all the way down like so now we can see the hydrogen generators are already going for it they're producing 800 watts a pop and we are slowly charging now of course during the night time we're gonna charge up really quickly and then the hydrogen generators are gonna stop due to the smart battery right, i'm also gonna set this to 95 percent and maybe 30 percent as a low threshold to start charging since the smart batteries can only hold half of the charge of a jumbo battery they are never gonna kick in unless we are really draining the power actually that's not true they're of course gonna kick in as soon as we have the low charge here which then means the jumbo battery is only at half the capacity but that's still good you know all the energy we are producing right now is almost free well the plug slots aren't free in just a moment we can witness another eruption and i'm really curious as to how quickly these tiles are heating up and cooling down because yeah look at that wow that is just incredible they got to 45 degrees okay um let's just see how long it takes Thanks. I'm more curious about the last ones. I mean, each one is probably getting a little bit hotter. Uh, we still bring them down to 80 degrees right here. Okay, it's still going on. Okay, that's the last ones. This one here is 90 degrees and 80. Okay, and then they drop inside of the water and immediately get cooled down a little bit better. Yeah, looks like they pretty much go down to water temperature. Okay, that's fine. And then in between each eruption, these tiles have the time to cool down again. Okay. It, but we cannot really count on the baum anymore unless we dig in a little bit further this is cobalt what is the heat capacity 0.4 so it's still much worse than igneous rock and even dirt probably oh actually dirt is really good but then again all of this is a little bit too hot at the moment i think i'm gonna try to go down here so just continue down here a little bit in order to catch more of the chill at the bottom yeah i think i'm just gonna bring this down a little bit in the future we can take this apart again in order to get back those materials if we need to ah that's interesting this is the second time i see it they have 24 journals in there and there is no more errands and what fixed it the last time for me was to reload the game there we go reloaded the game and do we have an errand now yes indeed that is so weird oh oh it is now actually turning on interesting oh well let's have a look at the skill points of the dreamers totally forgot about that but we can go into exosuit training and this is actually the cap that i want to give them the dreamers right or maybe something that is going to distinguish them from the others so i'm just going to go with the sustainability hat dreamer 2 you get that as well dreamer 3 
Yes. Dreamer 4. Uh, we have two points for you as well. Wonderful. And then Dreamer 5 is not quite there yet, unfortunately. Okay, wait. I have a clear issue when it comes to storing. People are just not prioritizing it enough. Chin could help out a little bit more with storing. And then Meep, I think think I'm also going to prioritize that with you a little bit more. That should theoretically be enough, but look at that. We only have one deodorizer filled up, and that's because the storage bins here aren't being delivered. I have too many storing priorities all around the base, and they never get around to it. Oh, Ari, I totally forgot about you. H how are you doing? Let's have a look at you. Absorbed radiation 74. We have some radiation vomiting going on, but that is good. Get it out of your system, buddy. Well, I guess we've been working on that a little bit. I should prioritize building the second layer so we protect ourselves a little bit better. Yeah, this is honestly extremely weird. The storing doesn't seem to be working. I need to test this out. This just doesn't add up. What if I put Lyra to the highest priority? She should be storing all the time, right? Lyra delivering something. Let's see. Let's just follow her. Whoa, she's quick. Yeah, she's now storing. Okay, well, maybe I need a dedicated stoop just for storing. Picking up Dream Journal. Now she's finally doing what she's supposed to be doing. Okay, really interesting. I don't remember ever having problems with the storing. Usually the Meep guy would just be taking care of that. In this case, also May should have the highest priority in storing. And then we have three duplicates taking care of that. Okay, one more thing we're missing are the rails. We're just gonna lead them through our aluminium tiles. And then I can probably just drop it here outside. Since it's the gold volcano, it should be enough just leading that through these tiles. And since my cooling loop should then also be functional, we're taking care of everything. Now, oh, guys, you have to hurry up. We are scolding here a little bit. Yeah, this is not really good. Especially, wait, why are you coming without an exosuit? What? Nisbet, how did you manage to do that? You come back, you little booger. Yeah, take a suit. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to go. Ah, of course, they can make it through this part. Whoops, my bad. We have to disallow that again. Of course, we have sculpting duplicates. They will have to take a quick break after building this. Anyhow, we still have to bring over the cabling. I think I'm going to do that. Ooh, let me see. I want to keep the heat barrier in place. Yeah, I think we can remove that pneumatic door. So we're just going to go through here and then power this up. Okay, the hydrogen here slowly but surely goes on my nerves and I have to push it back all the time. I think I'm just going to increase that. That means we're going to now mainly profit of the hydrogen as long as we have enough of it and i'm just gonna set this to 70 percent so they're gonna kick in every now and then until i burn through a little bit of the hydrogen and then i can pump up some more put it into these storages we could also go for an infinite lock and i'm gonna do that in certain scenarios but not for everything there we go ren is coming to build the rest of the rails and now the volcano should be functional that means we're just gonna pick up everything for the time being until we have this picked up and it's gonna go through and it should be cooled down pretty quickly however i first have to hook this up here we're gonna cut this line so now it's gonna first go up even though well this mostly has the cooling power as well once the cobalt volcano becomes active of course this water is heating up quite a bit so now we're already at 40 degrees but 40 degrees is still enough to cool down this volcano so if we check this out the temperature of the aluminium indicates what temperature the materials are coming out at so that is only going up in small intervals and we should be seeing some gold very soon now going through this ah yeah look at that now it's heating up so that was the gold or at least some of the hot material and of course the water is now also incoming so the water is now counteracting the effects we have and then we'll find ourselves somewhere around the temperature of the 20 degrees or so i just see okay now i messed up another thing and that is meep was responsible to actually do the life support and now that he's storing a lot he's not doing the life support so that needs to change storing goes down again for meep because a lot of the deodorizers here are not doing their thing and of course that means we're not getting fresh oxygen and that probably means germs well it's not that bad it's just food pollution okay and we can see gold is coming out at around 30 degrees a little bit lower than that and we should be okay because we immediately take away the gold and then in between the eruptions this has the time to cool down so i'm pretty happy with what i'm seeing here so yeah i guess slowly but surely we are running into the problem of not having enough dupe labor and i'm actually really surprised about that because we have what nine duplicates that 
do work but i guess an overall dupe that is just responsible for storing would be a good idea in general so the somnium synthesizer actually gets supported and then other things like this conveyor loader here well right now we don't have any pending deliveries i guess we still have to make more glass let's do another 50 crafts but yeah this is now coming along we already have 1800 kilograms of steel that should be enough in order to make a rocket silo here and then well before we do that we have to explore space a little bit oh there seems to be a meteor shower yeah they're coming in from over here but let's go ahead and maybe in the next episode already start exploring space a little bit by setting up a telescope after the next meteor shower. Also activating this aluminium volcano might not be the worst of ideas. But I'm happy we now have two gold volcanoes that we can actually use in order to feed our Plux Lux. In today's episode I would like to start exploring space a little bit. I want to figure out just what we can find within the near vicinity. And I might be tempted to do the very same thing on the second planetoid. Now when it comes to the second planetoid my first suggestion would be to set up a bunch of solar panels we already sent over the necessary glass to do so we're gonna set up about four of these panels let's do that I will be breaking through this little bit, maybe set up another barrier here, and then we wiggle around, kind of keeping the radiation protection in place. And we're just gonna hook that up, we'll be going through here, and then all the way down. Then when it comes to this part, I think I'm just gonna disassemble the cable here, also take away these two doors, and then we're just gonna go around here, still trapping the gases inside, and we'll be able to continue with a heavy wire. And then all we have to do is basically replace all the cabling we have currently going on. That will be a pretty extensive task here for Ari, but it should be doable. In the meantime, we're trying to burn through the hydrogen. However, we are just not quick enough from the looks of it, and my dupes have to eat in hydrogen, but even worse, the dreamers have to dream in hydrogen, though this is slightly breathable here. <laughs> Maybe another thing we can already prepare here is the rocket silo, and basically what I would like to see is a ladder going all the way up to here, and then on the very top we're gonna have our bunker doors. And then whenever we can we're gonna set up a ladder sandwich in that rocket of course that's not gonna work for all the rockets but we should be able to set up for instance a steam engine or a carbon dioxide engine as a matter of fact let's go ahead and research that we can find the sugar engine the steam engine petroleum engine hydrogen engine and then at the bottom here we have the carbon dioxide engine this is the very starting engine i think apart from maybe the sugar engine could also be a starter engine but it it burns to crows which I don't think is something we have access to just yet. And then of course another thing we have to do is set up a telescope. I'm just gonna do that right here because my dupes are in Atmo suits and if we don't do this too extensively then the radiation sickness should also be okay. Okay we're free we should be able to set up the bunker doors. Now let me think this is not gonna add up very well. Hmm. If I want this to be on one level, then we need to cover two rocket platforms. Let me see. We would be starting here, there, and there. And this would be... No, we cannot even do that. Yeah, the bunker door is only four tiles in size. That's stupid. And then the rocket platform is seven in size. The thing is, I probably want the rocket platforms next to each other so we can cross-feed everything that we extract. So eventually the next rocket platform is going to go here and I don't want a gap in between them. But then how would I set up the gantries? That's not going to work. Wait a second. Is there another way to connect these parts? Yeah, I did not find a module that is just going to allow me to connect two rocket platforms other than, let's say, a liquid port unloader. I could probably use that to daisy chain the platforms and then feed everything through it yeah automatically links when you build to the side of a rocket platform or another rocket port okay so we could theoretically use those that might not be the worst of ideas so i'm gonna research that next so what if we leave some space for the gantry? Let's say the gantry will go right here, which means our wall would be here. Maybe I need one more space for a ladder, to be honest. So that's one, two, three. This would be the size. Here would be my ladder. Then I have the space for a gantry that isn't going to disturb the rocket. And I have the space for, let's say, two liquid ports. And only afterwards comes the next rocket platform. This would allow me to get about 
five rocket platforms in. I don't think that's going to be enough for what I have in mind. Maybe I'm going to need the second planetoid as well in order to get the complete rocket program going. But yeah, I think that's the way I want to try it. And now when it comes to bunker doors, I'm missing two tasks in order to be able to place three bunker doors or we could alternate them. Yeah, let's say we have two right here and then one right there. That would even make it kind of symmetrical. You know what? I think I should maybe set up a airflow tile here or a couple of them and then another one here in order to allow these gases to go through. Nice. Research completed. Let's dive right into the other one. Uh, what was it? Yeah, the liquid stuff here. And we're also directly going for the wall toilet that we're going to need inside the rocket. There are unloaders and loaders. And it looks like the unloader is a little bit higher than the loader. So I'm first going to set up the loaders. Let's maybe build it with gold or steel so it has a higher overheat temperature actually it doesn't matter the overheat temperature is 2000 degrees so we can just as well build it out of cobalt i'm gonna do that and then i'm gonna leave the space for a liquid unloader here and oh meteor showers oh okay well it's probably gonna be fine right oh look at that i'm so glad Sheen wasn't actually researching anything but yeah this is not good i already know that we're gonna need some glass okay we already have 33 crafts that means we're totally out of sand granite is a good candidate let's do 99 crafts another 99 crafts with igneous rock that should give us some sand and then enough materials for the repair now let's hope nothing is gonna get through here the meteor shower shouldn't last too long oh my gosh wait wait just wait until it's over but yeah this is uh, clearly devastating i mean we're gonna survive it that is definitely not the issue there yeah, airflow tiles in place and that means now my hydrogen can move up and some oxygen is gonna flow in very good we might want to do the same thing with this tile here in order to do just that but yeah overall honestly we probably have to slowly but surely get into the ultimate worker base like the starter base is working and got me rolling but now i would like to relocate them in order to make it much better and what i'm gonna do is set up a ladder here on the very edge and then i'm gonna do a row of igneous rock tiles let's go ahead and do that here on the very top i would like to set up a layer of bunker tiles tiles of course so that's gonna be a thing here then i would like to leave two tiles free for maintenance so my dupes will be able to run across here okay nice i like where this is going let's not do the entire thing just yet we're gonna go up here and then right here i'm gonna start my worker base with everything necessary for the next 2000 cycles or so oh and another research is completed so we got the liquid rocket port loader that i'm gonna set up right here and they should daisy chain with that issues so that i can set up my next rocket platform right next to it this is good very good let's also get rid of that metal refinery we're still crafting a little something but i think we're done here in terms of efficiency it's time to get this out of the way uh, let's just deconstruct everything deconstruct the pipes and the power wire and oh geez i don't have enough obsidian i'm building these out of obsidian this is probably not a good idea i'm just gonna build the tiles beneath the rocket out of obsidian because it can take a little bit more heat before it overheats and then the rest should be igneous rock now actually before i go too crazy with this i just want to make sure that i am allowed to set up a gantry here without it being attached to a wall yeah it's not giving me any errors Anyways, let's get that new rocket going. Carbon dioxide rocket. We are just going to explore the immediate surroundings here with that. So this is going to be nothing special, but let's start to set this up. We might also want a spacefarer module on top of it that we can already start to set up. And of course, this is going to be a teensy tiny little rocket contrary to the ones that we're going to have later on. Another research completed. We got the wall toilet. Very nice. Also the mechanical surfboard, liquid intake and output. Let's keep on researching. There's probably more stuff that we want for our first rocket. Maybe a rovers module could be nice. A battery module as well. So I'm going to research that next after the rover. When it comes to the worker module, what I want to do here is basically build everything out of gold tiles for the decoration. They're going to be maxed out on decoration even if we use heavy watt wires inside. This is going to allow me to keep the footprint a little bit smaller, not having to set up many statues and the like. I will be tempted to get started with a bedroom and I would like to make three bedrooms. Let me see if this is going to be the ceiling, then the bedrooms only need to be about three tiles in height. 
let's build the cards out of granite for plus 20 decoration. Uh, it's going to be about eight beds per floor. So that would be our first floor right here. Also, since we can afford it, gold amalgam door right there. Okay, and we would have to repeat this three times to get the 24 beds. Something like this. Yes. Further down here, I will probably set up two bathrooms. No, wait. 24 dupes divided by four shifts. That means six duplicants need to be able to poop at the same time. That essentially means we want to have this four tiles in height so I can set up some lights. But yeah, I can have three here, then another three here. And that's already six. Sure, let me just keep going here. I know we have way too few resources right now, but that hopefully over time is going to change. Laboratories also three right here and there and then of course i'm gonna give my duplicates here the showers something along these lines here is gonna be the size of my worker base and i think i'm just for now gonna build a ladder up here so that we can build everything and it's gonna take a while but we do have two gold volcanoes running for us most of it of course is being consumed by the plux lux but then again we also have uh, five tons no that is actually the iron so never mind how much gold amalgam do we even have we have have uh, 51 tons so why not also additionally craft a little bit well i'm already doing it how are the temperatures looking hmm okay this is gonna heat up let me check out the second planetoid if i'm not mistaken there is a little something we could make use of yeah this cool slush guys here right here if we free this up and just go ahead and pump stuff out we can bring this directly over to the first planetoid and we don't even have to go far just bring it right here and it's gonna be fine so all i need to do is make sure to extend the heavy watt wire here and go down and then we can also take advantage of that guys here let's see where it leads the teleporter is right here no wait it's here at the bottom so this would be coming out yeah we could just go ahead and bring this right here and if we drop it wait what did i build this out of that's the wrong material let's pick granite or something anyway if i drop the polluted water here it's gonna drop all the way down and therefore keep this side of the pool a little bit colder i'm already gonna go ahead and research the next thing for the rockets we did unlock a couple of tiles but it's just gonna go in a circle like fashion three tiles away from the planetoid so technically we could do the same thing on the second planetoid but in order for that to work ari first needs to complete his race radiation blockage. Alrighty, I've been playing for a couple of cycles right here in the main base. Everything runs smoothly, except the new building projects aren't being tackled that quickly. So probably my next dupe is going to be used to supplement the building and digging role also on other planetoids. I want Nisbet to remain on this planetoid, maybe the second planetoid, but then I need other dupes that will be taking over on subsequent planetoids. In the meantime, we haven't quite fixed the roof. That is not really a problem because we have all of this hydrogen oh by the way we've used all up here so that is good to know let's uh, bump this down back to 50 percent or so my dupes have started to build the first things right here this is just gonna go slowly and be done over the course of the next few episodes on the second planetoid we're almost done with the important infrastructure we're now building the solar panels and once that is done we will be power independent for the most part and i think what i want to do is maybe set up a couple more batteries and afterwards we can go ahead and start this pump which is already ready mm, maybe i'm just gonna go ahead and connect it up so we can already start pumping things over it's just gonna go up into the teleporter right there and it's coming out the other side right here being dumped all the way down and this of course is very cold so we will be benefiting from that for quite a while in the future we might want to utilize this water in order to do something that doesn't matter when it comes to heat but yeah this is still looking pretty sustainable now we just need to tackle the building projects that allows us to finish the roof section there of course we also completed the research and yeah I actually messed this up here a little bit. Ah, such a pain in the butt. Well, maybe we can add a little bit of phosphorite and then we just uproot these guys. So if I uproot this, then inside the planter box, we get to keep the phosphorite. Okay, that might actually be the better solution than to disallow because now we can just wait for these guys to discharge and oh no, this is already full. So I did not actually mess up. My goal was just to keep this full once the research was done. 
in this case uh, let's forget about that editing nathan leave that out we are no fools okay here we had the previous metal refinery and this is also all of my ice and snow and whatever else we had it is thermally protected here with the abyssal light and insulated tiles so it's always going to remain in that state until i decide to do something else with it I mean, this is potentially a lot of liquid that we could add to this pool. And actually, one easy way to do that would be with temp shift plates that we could build out of ice. We can actually go ahead and test this right away if I build the temp shift plate right here. Let's do that. This is one absolutely wonderful process. Nisbet seems to be taking care of it. Very good. Let's have a look at the temperatures. This is reasonably hot here. 35.4 degrees and there is the build. We can see the water from the temp shift plate that has immediately melted is now 0.6 degrees and it's just gonna spread the chill a little bit. It's not gonna help us a lot but considering we have approximately 100 tons of liquefiable material we should be fine. Wait what was that? Another colony achievement? Uh, super sustainable. Generate 240,000 kilojoules of power without using coal, natural gas, petrol or wood generators. Wow, that's actually a really hard achievement. That is especially surprising. Well, it's not that hard, but considering that I didn't know about this achievement, it's a coincidence that I didn't yet make use of another power source. Well, Ari doesn't seem to be quite happy about this achievement and I can see why. We're gonna deconstruct this ugly generator and we finally finish the build here. Once we get the solar power, this is all gonna sort itself out. Now, this is getting us nowhere. Ari is really struggling, so I'm gonna tell him to build that storage. And in here, we wanna collect some aluminium ore. Let's do that very briefly with a higher priority. Now, as you can see, he can collect 1,800 kilograms of aluminium ore instead of just the 400 kilograms he usually brings for building four wires and of course all of this is also gonna require aluminium so be a good boy and just bring this all up thank you uh, not really worth going down one more time maybe you're just gonna start building yeah, yeah you can do this okay time for sleeping see ya well okay that was actually perfect well never mind considering it's cycle 226 i'm definitely not min maxing however i'm gonna build the ultimate base oh I'm looking forward to it. First things first, the worker module. But considering we are already down to 108 tons of polluted dirt. Well, that's not good. Am I still sending this over? Yeah, we'll have to switch to liquid oxygen production very soon. And that might actually be a problem. Unless we find more cool slush geysers. I mean, this could be another one. Let's check it out, maybe. Oh, Ari, you need more skills. Let me check you out right there. You need the super duper hard digging skill. He's already got the field research, so... Theoretically, we could go ahead and research that, analyze it. But before we do that, of course, finish the solar array. And yes, indeed, he seems to be doing just that. I'm so sorry for not giving you an oxygen mask just yet. There it is. First solar panel hooked up. It's not going to give us the maximum energy, but four of them are going to give us a thousand watts or so at the peak. And this should theoretically be enough to, you know, charge my batteries. We'll see. Actually, as a matter of fact, we do have more and more is better. I'm also going to add some glass to the storage bin here. Right now, it's probably time to fill up the storage bin because we're getting sick. 51 rats. Okay, that's acceptable. And we're bringing over all the glass that we have and maybe two more loads of aluminium. There is one right there. And yeah, we can do another one. And once that is done, we're going to set this back to priority five. So the next time we're going to go ahead and build again. But now, um, yeah, just go ahead and uh, take a poop. No, 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 no. Boots, boots, boots. There you go, buddy. Oh, yeah, we're looking away and get rid of 33 rats. Okay. Ah, look at that. We're actually making good progress here. And if we check out the decor overlay, this is already pretty good. So there's not much we can do wrong. Oh, let's also unlock some more blueprints here. What do we get? Maybe a nice drywall. No, just an Atmos suit, bright hanging pot and some basic green pants. 
Maybe next time. There are my drywall patterns so far. Not anything I want for my bathrooms. So I guess I'm just going to go with fresh white here. And we're going to build them out of granite. Build them right here in order to avoid gases from escaping into space. But also to make it look nice. So both of my bathrooms are going to get that. And then as for the bedrooms, I'm going to go with solid charcoal. Make this nice and dark. I'm now going to bring the hydrogen back down to 20%. So mainly the plug slots are now going to be responsible to charge my network. I just want to make sure that we get this jumbo battery down a little bit further before nighttime hits. Also, I noticed five dreamers are not going to be enough, even if I let them sleep one more slot. So we're definitely going to need a sixth duplicant in order to keep the buff up. But as long as I cannot really keep up the oxygen production either, it might be a bit difficult. So I think what I'm going to do for now is disable the Somnium Synthesizer. I'm not going to allow manual use, so the duplicants aren't going to input anything. But we could just also disable it. And then we're going to build this storage bin where we're going to store all the journals. Uh, story trade, maybe. Yeah, dream journal. We can store them in here. And then we're just going to accumulate a whole bunch with our five duplicants. And eventually we can unleash them. Ari, radiation vomiting. I totally forgot about you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't want to let it come this far. 70 rats? Okay, that's... Oh no, you're at the beginning of the shift. Uh, how is it looking? Mm, maybe we don't have to do this now. So that means you can take care of something else. Okay, yeah, stop crying. Vomiting again, dude. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that was actually a clean thing. Barfing into the ditch and just close it shut. Ah, but that's what I like to see. Full batteries without Ari actually spinning the wheel. Nisbet, of course, is going crazy on the tiles here. I expected nothing less of her. Also, we should keep these doors already open. Now, before the next meteor shower hits, I would like to get these bunker doors built. And then I probably want another ladder going down here and eventually down into the base. One thing I forgot to do in order for Ari to do the cool slush guys here, I need to allow him to do some researching. So I'm just gonna set this to neutral. Yeah, look at that. More than enough choose to do something. Let me see. This needs to be prioritized now. I want to know what's in there. Also, we're gonna clean up the top portion here. Maybe speed this up a little bit. Oh, wait, are you serious? Another set of meteor showers. Uh, this is not good. Ooh. Oh, well, actually, it's okay. Well, I still don't appreciate it. But at least it's the kind of meteorite that isn't going to destroy anything. Oh, man. Okay. This one actually is even worse because this one is really hot. I have to try. Let's uh, dig everything up. But we're definitely overheating now. No, wait. What's going on here? Uh, the regolith. Of course. Okay. So never mind. It's the regolith that is hot and I should have dug it up quicker. <laughs> that also means I need to be a little bit careful. Yeah, these guys are already heating up because I'm probably using very hot regolith. And you know, I think this only happened now because we had some off-gassing. Yeah, crap. I need to put Nisbet back in terms of priorities. She's not doing a good job. So put her back uh, here when it comes to digging. And also, before I forget, there is another achievement. We got immovable object. Block a meteor from hitting your base using a bunker door. Nice. Yeah, finally dig up that crappy regolith. Thank you. Ari's doing a phenomenal job here. There's just one thing missing and that is the hydro sensor. We should have access to aluminium on this planetoid. So I'm just going to build enough materials to hook this up with a sensor and then maybe use this one here to take care of the aluminium. We're just going to do like 10 crafts or so. That should be fine. And let me see. Yeah, we're going to catch some air and then maybe with priorities we can make him use some stuff. Why did you input sand? Hold the phone. Yeah, we don't currently need that. Sandstone, as a matter of fact, we're going to send over. So all the sandstone we find, we're just going to send over to the main planetoid. Right here, we have over 14.3 tons of sand. Very easy. Now, one thing that is problematic is the stress for Ari. Let's check out his stress levels. Right here, 66% currently. 20% is from the sopping wet debuff. Then he's got some low morale. He's got a minus 25% boost from having the maximum aptitude buff at a point. And then cold air gives 
gives him 10% a cycle and low oxygen another 10% a cycle resulting in an overall change of 18% per cycle not good now let me see the low morale point hmm yeah okay we are very close here let me see is there something we could give you that would change the situation yeah of course one easy thing we can do is change this mess hall to be a great hall is it large enough 32 tiles the great hall's minimum size i think is 32 yeah so we're basically just missing the decor item which means this flower pot but since it is too cold is it still too cold oh my gosh yeah the entire base cooled down so instead of a flower pot maybe we find another decorative item such as this pedestal that isn't heat dependent though it looks like the pedestal only gives plus five decor and we need at least plus 20 so what if we went a little bit further and then even used moldings in order to bump up that decor value once we upgraded this to a great hall, it basically means we're not going to experience any stress from low morale, which is minus 10% at the moment. But as soon as we lose the maximum aptitude stress, we're going to be in a world of issues. It is still running. Somebody... Oh no. Somebody activated it. Are you serious? Who did that? I thought I disallowed manual use. Wait. Yeah, and now it's using my oxygen again. You guys only are supposed to bring it here. What are you doing? Okay, now I'm gonna let this run out. Let's put it to priority one. This way, certainly nobody is gonna take care of it. But once it ran out, we are really dependent on having a net negative stress cycle to calm Ari down a little bit. Ooh, okay, this is not enough. I need an item that gives plus 20 decor in just one go, like this flower pot here. Hmm, that's so weird. Are plants so powerful? Well, let's still try with a pedestal here. Put this there. And we can even put something on top of it, like some ore. It probably doesn't matter. Let me see. Okay, now we have something on top of it. Uh, rooms. Now, it's still a mess hall. We have enough decor value, but I'm just missing the proper item to make this a great hall. I'm gonna try that again with the flower pot, but maybe we find a seed that isn't affected by the chill. Yeah, well, you look at that. Zero to 100 degrees, the choya seed. So all we need to do is send over a choya seed. Just one single choya seed. I don't think we can actually do that. But we can send over all of the choya seeds. Somebody should be taking care of that because of priority nine is doing it there we go some choya seeds for my neighboring planetoid they have arrived so now i can go ahead and plant that right away and we should do that definitely oh please do it before bedtime that would be amazing yes ah so nice okay now this should have upgraded ooh, ooh, ooh. come on come on come on there we go great hold that's another plus three morale and i will be eating here this cycle and we are not dependent on maximum aptitude for our morale bonus anymore okay so now we're basically prepared to launch our rocket program the next time i'm also going to research with the telescope the second planetoid that means we should be able to discover what we can find here within these question marks and then to reveal even more we'll have to travel into space like i also want to know if this is a planetoid and if this one here is a planetoid that would be great in today's episode, I would like to make good progress here in terms of revealing as many space tiles as possible. To do that, we need to be able to use the telescope for which we need the astronomy skill. So I'm going to give that to Ari on the second planetoid. I'm then going to set up a telescope right here at the very top. Now, the thing is, we cannot currently make the lead suits because we don't have access to lead. That is another thing we're missing apart from oil and sulfur, I think. Of course, amongst other materials that we can only find on other planetoids. However, there's one thing we can do for Ari, and that is setting up an oxygen station. Let me go ahead and set up a crafting station here. Then all we need is an oxygen mask checkpoint at some point. Let's say we are setting this up somewhere up here. Yeah, right here seems to be a good spot. And then we can go ahead and set up a dock as well. Let's do two of them. Can I build some tasks for them here and there and maybe there then we're gonna dig our way through making sure we actually keep the ceiling in place then all we need to do is set up a pump maybe here should be good enough get some pipes all the way up into the oxygen docks maybe to be on the safe side we're gonna take a little detour first and do our setup to expel everything other than oxygen and in order to do that i actually want to research another little something inside the computers category and that is the not gate where is it right here so it's just the next research and the not gate is just gonna allow us to filter out all gases except for one this then needs a little bit of power and we should be done 
I think it would be best to prepare the rocket in order to do some more research. Right now we have a tiny amount of space left. All I did is set up a rover's module so far. And if we check out what else we could do, it probably would be best to fill these two spots up with solar panels. Let's go ahead and do that. Now we have the full size that is possible with a carbon dioxide engine. Also, of course, to fill up the engine, we need a little bit of carbon dioxide. We can find plenty of that at the very bottom. Of course, it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt to get this rolling. Let's see, granite. Yeah, that seems appropriate. And we're just going to go all the way up. And then I'm just going to bring this all the way over to where it needs to be, namely inside the rocket. This connection is going to vanish in the future again. Carbon dioxide engines are going to die out quite quickly after establishing more powerful engines. What's going on? This pitcher pump seems to be in trouble. That is really interesting. What are you trying to do? Let's uh, move that somewhere else. Please, uh, can you just deconstruct this? Thank you. Wow, okay, that was crazy. Maybe I lost one duplicate due to this the entire time. Or not, I don't really know. <laughs> Either way, something else that I temporarily want to set up is a large power transformer. And, well, it's going to be permanent, but not in this location. I want to use that in order to be able to go through the walls with a cable and then power up the bunker doors whenever I need them. Wait a second, I need to move this one block up or I can place it on top of tiles. But then we can just continue with some conductive wire which we shall do we can go up let's go up through the wall and this is going to allow us to power up these three guys of course we still have to kind of steer when they are going to be open for the time being i'm just going to do this manually but eventually we're going to do this automatically depending on whether or not the rocket is ready to launch for its mission so for now let's just go ahead and hook all of these guys up together and that should be good enough to get things going. Ari, of course, is eagerly building the oxygen station. He was wondering why I didn't build that a long time ago. From the crafting station, we need two oxygen masks. We're going to go ahead and produce those. And we're also going to set the repair recipe to forever. That's what I'm talking about. Good boy. I'll be back later. To be able to reach the rockets properly, I'm going to set up ladders. In the future, we're going to do gantries, but I'm only going to do the gantries when I know that it's going to be a definite rocket that is going to remain in that configuration. Otherwise, I think it's just a little too expensive. Well, it's not that expensive, 200 steel, but I'd rather use that for the bunker tiles, to be honest. Yeah, the more bunker tiles we can set up here, the better. And look at that. We only really get so far. We need to keep this in mind. However, before the next meteor shower, I want to test your theory here with the airflow tiles. Do they really not take damage? And we might be able to test that above the solar panels, right? Because we can protect them this way. And they should still get the entirety of the light source. And in the meantime, maybe we can also keep on digging up the terrain a little bit. And yes, my batteries are still charging. So they are fully charged in the middle of the night at the moment. Let's put this to 10%. In case we use down the batteries to 10% here. No, let's go all the way down to 0%. That means we start to use the hydrogen generator during the day as soon as the jumbo batteries go down to half capacity. Research completed. We got access to the sensors and the... No, the not gate. I wanted that one. But more sensors is also great. We're already pumping up some oxygen, which is fine because that's all we really have. Well, apart from some carbon dioxide pockets. So that could be a pain in the butt. Like this guy here is gonna damage our stations so for now i want to prevent this from happening and all we can do is set up a gas vent and a sensor like we did before so gas pipe element sensor we want to detect that but now we're also going to utilize a not gate and that is just going to give us more freedom with the gases we can accept from the sensor into the not gate and then into the vent that means if we set this sensor to oxygen then it's gonna close because it's gonna send a green signal that is going to be reversed close the vent and that means oxygen goes through while all the other gases will be expelled. This system isn't 100%. If you want it to function 100% of the time, you need to use a filter. When the gases get stuck and don't constantly flow, this is eventually going to fail, but it's okay. I'm just going to repair the stations whenever it happens. It shouldn't happen too frequently. Now, just see, we also have some polluted oxygen here. I think I'm going to do the same setup. Have a gas vent and gas pipe element sensor together with a not gate. Connect that with some automation wire. On the main planetoid here, I want to set the gas pipe element sensor to carbon dioxide and then on the second planetoid to oxygen. Now, of course, not forget to deliver some suits here to the stations and then we need to take away the ladder axis here. So if I take away three ladders, then we cannot go up anymore, but we will be able to go up this way and therefore we are being forced through this chamber. 
Maybe I'm even gonna replace this wire here, this heavy watt wire, with a joint plate. Sure, let me do that. And then you need to hurry up building that again. Otherwise, we don't get any solar power. Good. Now, I feel like we're ready again. We can start pumping and everything should be hunky-dory. Yeah, looks like Ari is already utilizing the oxygen masks. Oh, yeah. He's going to be able to spend a little more time up in space and therefore also explore the task. Of course, we have to do it in bursts. We have no access to lead suits and he's going to get radiation sickness pretty quickly. But, you know, Jean also managed to do it on the main planetoid. There is some hope for us. Let me see. I probably need some more access here in order to get into the spacefare module. And then right here, I want to take away the control station unit and then what we need is a telescope even if we have to sacrifice other parts we need a three by three area i would suggest we're building this right here at the bottom this should allow us to place a wall toilet no we need plastic for the wall toilet are you kidding me okay well in this case i think i'm just gonna let them poop on the floor what about a ladder bed let's check that one out we could put that up here anywhere and we could also set up a bridge or just a storage box honestly i don't know and there's also the question of radiation like there is no radiation blockage here it's the full 188 rats right here it's all the way down to 42 rats so we have to make sure our duplicate spends his time in these tiles or we block even more if we have the telescope here i think the dupe is registered on the left tile which means he would be safe however sleeping here would mean sleeping right in 188 rats per cycle so it would be better to have the storage bin like up here and then maybe the ladder bed right there um let's see we probably don't even need more ladders all we need is some tiles so let me see i'm now taking a tile that blocks at least some radiation so maybe insulated tiles have that one right here and there we can set up something else here and we should be able to go up with our dupes still able to set up sensors and whatever the heck we need but yeah then at least we would have covered the food and the sleep time and then we just mop everything up that gets peed on the floor and we can go ahead explore space some more mostly safely whoa hold on except right now we don't have a place for the rocket control station wow okay this is a little bit of a pain in the butt maybe we have the ladder bed here and then the control station on this side sure let's uh, first of all give ourselves access to this i'm gonna speed this up a little bit considering we do have lots to build by the way right now i'm only using the cobalt in order to feed my plug slugs we still have what 227 kilograms so we're almost out how much cobalt do i still have in terms of raw ore almost 40 tons yeah i think i'm gonna bump this back up to 50 because right now i want to use my gold completely for the new worker base so in due time it will actually be built also maybe it would be a good idea to speed up the building of the bunker tiles here on the top so it doesn't get destroyed immediately again yeah we're now going up building the telescope and now he's going to research right here let's check him out at 12 13 14 15 yeah that's not gonna go well the research speed i'm not sure if it actually matters it seems to be going quick either way to reveal each tile yeah empty space and you know once we got through that we should be fine it's just something we cannot avoid right now without having access to lead at least i don't think so but maybe we should test it out because i'm not 100 sure maybe we can just go ahead and build it out of something else doesn't seem logical but we gotta try that means replanting my ward seeds for the time being and then enabling the rapple generators. And yeah, look at that. We can take advantage of the phosphorite we put in there previously so we don't have to waste a material we don't have unlimited access to just yet. Wait, did we do another research first? I totally missed that. Yeah, we unlocked the apothecary. Ah, okay. We have to unlock the entirety of the medical tree first and then also the electrolyzer in order to even get to this research. But yeah, there are some good things here for us. It's time to research them. The salinator, rappel sensor, a hand sanitizer. I like it. But that means we're probably going to be a little bit too quick in order to charge this up. Maybe we can uproot them and just keep the level. Right now we are making more than enough power again with the plug slugs. And I don't think right now the hydrogen generators are kicking in anymore. Ari is continuing on the research for the cool slush guys here. I'm going to allow him to do that in order to get rid of his rat. So I'm just going to alternate between telescope and cool slush guys here. Hand sanitizer and sick bay is what we unlocked just right now. Another research done, electrolyzer and rust deoxidizer. We just lost one of our critters here, the active plug slugs. Now, I think I'm actually going to lower the number here a little bit. I just want to see what we can take in terms of being a little bit more precise with the numbers. That means I'm going to pick another two 
too elderly. This guy's almost laying an egg, so I'm gonna wait. 88 and only 17% reproduction. So this is a candidate to kill. And then we have H81 with 8% reproduction. So kill that one as well. And then we're down to five critters that will give us 1,600 watts a night. And of course, we have all of these guys giving us between 40 to 1,200, depending on their state of uh, dying. Well, actually, we can check this out right now. Uh, come on, take your place. Yeah, we have 40, 40 for the most part. So a lot of them are just producing 40 because they're starving. But the ones that are still younger and didn't realize their demise produce 800. And it looks like the number here is limited as to how many of these guys are willing to do it. Or maybe they won't do it when there is a machine nearby. Yeah, that actually kind of looks suspicious. They only do it when there is no machine and there's a little bit of space. Okay, well, that is good to know. Let's check out the ones with 800. They are not starving yet. So that is the difference, right? These guys that are starving, they are only producing 40 watts. So I guess we could uh, maybe kill them more actively, the ones that are starving. This way they make space for the ones that aren't. Yeah, I think that is a good idea. A lot of these guys would produce 800 watts for me, but of course they need a place to sleep. So I don't think we're going to get any more polluted mud. Yeah, we essentially picked it all up. That means we can free this room here and have even more Plux Lux producing power for me. We just unlocked more sensors, I believe. Yeah, tons more sensors. Very nice. Let's check out Ari right now with 52 rats. Should be going down to... Yeah below 19 so the next time he's gonna do some telescope research again let's bump up this priority wait a second we also have to bump down the higher percentage here with the hydrogen generator so if we put this down to 10 percent then we're never gonna exceed a certain limit and therefore we're always ready to charge up during the night and don't waste hydrogen also quinn i think i have to bump up with a bunch of skills let's get into suit sustainability and exosuit training right away improve carrying as well and then finally, I feel like I can make him a little bit better in farming. So we can also assign the improved farming hat. Ari is experiencing some radiation vomiting. This is totally normal and okay in this procedure. I need to keep an eye on Ari. As soon as he reaches just a little shy of 100 rats, I want to send him back down. But it is still enough to finish researching one or two tiles. There, going down and probably continuing with the volcano now. Or the rock crusher, which is also fine. Whoa, I just see. We are accumulating more and more food. Let's get rid of one row of meal ice here. Of course, lots of barbecue because I just murdered a whole bunch of critters. That does make sense. Before we can even think about launching the rocket, we need a power outlet fitting. We could put that right here, for instance, and then just get some cabling. Heavy watt wire is gonna do the trick for now. Just bring this down to wherever we need it. And now look at that. This requires 120 watts while actually being active and we only have two solar panels that doesn't add up right this solar panel here is capable of producing 60 watts so we would be needing both of the solar panels in order to even think about powering this up maybe we just forget about the freaking bed we could put a refrigerator right here forget about this being on the top and then just have a, a control station that would be going right there or we could have the control station here on the top block the radiation we only need the control station once every tile this way we would even have enough space for an outhouse which is then gonna allow us to get rid of a little bit of radiation that we accumulate but then there is no way to get up to the control station so now the fridge is a problem yeah crap we need plastic otherwise there's no proper way for me to do this unless well we just skip the fridge and the bed and everything but this way we could potentially get up here not sure we're gonna have to test that theory okay i didn't think so but yeah this is not working out well in this case i'm gonna leave the outhouse in it might come in handy when it comes to radiation there's gonna be the fridge on the top just like before and then we have the space for a ladder bed ladder bed right there which should be possible because it's a continuation of the ladder okay let's go with that you know the good thing about radiation vomiting is that they actually do get rid of some radiation and how much is it it here in hard mode it is 20 rats so i think that's the same as it is in a normal playthrough wait a second missing tile are you serious so i have to do it the other way jeez this always gets me but that probably means we want some more radiation blockage here i'm just gonna build another insulated tile and why ren Ugh, come on are you serious what 
the control station is missing. Yeah, guys, we can't do it without the wall toilet. Holy cow. Well, luckily we have May, which can absorb a little bit of radiation. But still, I just hate these little pots. Usually I just skip them and go right to the big rockets, but we're kind of in a hurry to explore space. Ari, you gotta pull through. Let's have a look at your progress. Ooh, okay. Got some ore fields there. Yeah, honestly, it doesn't look like we're gonna find anything interesting. Hopefully, this is a planetoid. If not, then we still have the hope of this one here being one. But dude, you have to find something. If you don't do it for me, do it for the bubbles in your face. Wow. Okay, you know what, Ari? If you vomit enough times, then you might not even be in troubles. Now, will you look at that? That already looks quite different. We now have all the Plux Lux actually producing a really good amount of energy for us. In order to keep this up, however, I think we're gonna keep the five Plux Lux so they just keep on producing the eggs that will eventually hatch. So we have this cycle just going on. And every couple of nights or so, we can just eliminate the ones that are not producing enough power. And I mean, they do get quite old without any maintenance. This guy here is 29 cycles old and still producing 800 watts. Pretty good. We just need to keep it up with the egg production. Ari isn't really doing well. I think he needs a little bit of a break. It might not seem like that, but I know my duplicates like the back of my hand. What the hell is that on my hand? Okay, I think it's time to start pumping up the carbon dioxide. We want to fill up the rocket. Very soon we should be ready to launch our first mission here. I think I just need a little bit more cobalt. Let's check out the temperatures here. Very good. This is exactly what I wanted to see. I also prepared some temp shift plates made out of liquefiable materials just in case we get some in because right now I don't have a way to automatically store them. Right here I have my backup. This is gonna remain safe in here. At least it should be safe. Yeah, I kind of want to finish this by setting up the bunker tiles here. And maybe to be on the safe side, we're just going to expand them. Though, nah, there would be another bunker door. We're going to expand them here towards the right side. But the left side is going to be another bunker door. Maybe we can already do that for tiles and then set up that bunker door. I think I now found the configuration I want to go with here for my rocket. We have a fridge, a bed, we have the control station and an oxygen diffuser. All we need is a sustainable food, which I think we ran out of. Yeah, we only have a little bit of hexalent fruit left and the rest of the food isn't very good. I think we have to go with pickled meal and then just not refrigerate it. Now, hold on a second. You have a tile. What are you complaining about? Missing tile? Are you Do you need a tile? What? Okay, let me try to swap that again. But you get the gist. We first need to bring some Achi for the oxygen diffusers and then maybe a little bit of food. We can just set up a storage bin here temporarily that we're gonna take apart again. And inside the storage bin, we're gonna get some algae in there. Ari, are you clean again? Yeah, you actually look pretty good. Only 0.53 rats. What are you? Go, go, research. Get behind that telescope again. You're not even vomiting. We have five tons of algae. That should be enough. At least I think we have the space to set up a star map location sensor. And we could utilize that to shut down the rocket when we are on certain planetoids. Maybe for this one here it doesn't really make sense yes oh finally we we discovered another planetoid uh stop star map come on wait what it is right here yes okay finally the closest thing is another planetoid it is metal rich with good lighting 280 rats so it is a little bit more dangerous than our other planetoids we have water sources we have a power source with the hydrogen vent and there is the oil so this is going to give us access to plastics with ice meteor showers so infinite ice well there's also the jungle biome so we should be able to ranch dracos there will be a lot of sand and and sandstone which is good and then of course the oil which is the most important part it is one two three tiles away so that means we can reach it with a carbon dioxide rocket and make our way back and even easier from the second planetoid by the way we can also visit the second planetoid with a carbon dioxide rocket not that it makes a lot of sense because of the teleporters but you know good to know from my experience we're still gonna run into heaps of issues if we actually keep the refrigerator on even if it is in low power mode it's going to use 20 watts and then it's going to exceed the power that we can produce with our solar panels. So even though it hurts a little bit, 
it and we don't have food that doesn't go stale, we're just going to utilize the pickled meal for now. I'm going to do this just before launch, just fill this up with a little bit of pickled meal. Let's get enough for maybe 10 cycles or so. And then there's still the oxygen diffuser. Now I'm thinking that the oxygen diffuser can also run at 120 watts and then at some point it's going to overpressure, not use any power at all. And this is when we can use the telescope. Now we could influence this with a sensor and that might actually make way more sense in this case. So instead of going to the control station, we're going to utilize a different kind of sensor that goes into the diffuser, which is detect a low amount of oxygen enough to breathe. And that is going to stop the oxygen diffuser, allowing us to use the telescope. Give me an Atmo sensor right there. Wonderful. Oh, before I forget, didn't we place a sensor here? Yeah, of course. This hydro pump should only pump if we get some amount of liquid, let's say 200 kilograms. By the way, before I forget, the crew of this ship, of course, is going to be May, I think. If we check out May, she is the radiation eater. And I'm really curious as to how effective this actually is. It looks like you need two tasks beneath the ladder bed. I mean, we don't need it. Just screw it. We're going to utilize the storage to store the algae. Oh, by the way, before I forget about power production, we also get a little bit of power production with the carbon dioxide engine. However, we cannot just fly around all the time. Sometimes we have to remain still in order to use the telescope. However, if I'm not mistaken, almost all the engines are producing at least a little bit of power. With a bunch of exceptions, but we'll see about that. Ari is now almost done. Just a few more tasks to go and we have completely researched the space that we can without actually going into space. Hydrogen generators are kicking in at the end of the day almost and we're down to yeah the expected power state. Looks like we're still going up. I don't necessarily need it to go up. I just need it to not go down as quickly. I think we're gonna disable two of the generators right there. See how that goes. Wait a second. I think we're done. We are totally done here. Okay he's not even taking any more errands for the telescope so we can get rid of it. Yeah this is what we are working with. We can go to the third planetoid that is for sure. We need the oil and we need the extra water. So the next Next time we're gonna go ahead and launch the carbon dioxide rocket for the first time in order to get a rover module on this third planetoid and explore it a little bit. In between the episodes I kept on building the new worker base a little bit and I also already started the future nature reserve room and we're basically using the same trick we did here in the ladder shaft for the nature reserve. This time around I'm gonna try it with a manual airlock. This is only using half of the material. It's not that important but if we can get the same outcome why not. I also more or less finished the roofing right here. This is what I want to be my upper portion of the base so I need to make sure that the gases don't escape into vacuum. So it's time to set up some drywall. We're just gonna do wherever we actually need it since I don't know exactly how this is gonna change. I've also started to clean up the terrain a little bit and of course we kept on progressing. I also would like to see a bunch more jumbo batteries. However, now slowly and surely we have to be careful with the temperatures. So it's a good thing we are actually moving the base because right here, of course, we're gonna take care of temperature regulation. There's just one issue and that is we need a little bit of plastic in order to get ourselves going. Going. Namely for the steam turbines for instance we need plastic and this is just the most important thing that is requiring plastic for us to progress to the next stage of the game. But yeah you can see over time and by digging up everything we are now losing more and more of the chill we had in the beginning and things are starting to heat up. And yeah, well, you look at that, a perfectly viable gold amalgam tile. Let's go ahead and deconstruct these guys. By now, we also accumulated a whole bunch of oxygen outside the base. And my suggestion would be to take advantage of that because nobody is really breathing that. And all I want to see is a pipe going down and actually joining up with this one here. Mm, let's do it like so. I'm also going to hook this up to a signal switch and even more a gas pipe element sensor together with a gas vent and we want a knot gate. We only want the oxygen to go through so a little knot gate right here together with cabling. I'm always speeding up the construction of the gas pipe element sensor so I can do the setting and then just forget about the system. By now we've also collected enough carbon dioxide in order to fill up the rocket and the rover's module should also be ready. So all we need to do is launch this baby. Right now we're only occasionally getting the power. We could prevent this from happening. Well, ooh, these doors are open. That is probably not good. Well... <gasps> No, there's a meteor shower. Yeah, this is definitely not good. That is due to the signal switch, probably. And oh yeah, they're gonna take for 
ever because I haven't powered them quite yet. Maybe we can speed this up construction here. Just finish those cables, please. At least it's just a slimy meteorite. Yeah, no problem. It's arriving in 1.2 cycles and wait, going to build. What are you waiting for? This is so weird. Ah, okay. They wait until they can go through the door here. That doesn't make sense. I think we built the wire. Yeah, now they're finally closing quickly. Okay, and the dupes finally accept it is closed. To maybe make this a little nicer looking, we could go with a charcoal wedge and then kind of set it up like this. Maybe rotate it around for the other side. And then here we're just going to do a half circle with the pattern. Yeah, I like that. Wonderful. Another two tiles are done. And there's one more to go. Thank you, Nisbet. Wonderful. Now we can already get rid of these. And we have plenty of time to allow a pip to do the job. Also, I think I want to go with a slight pattern here. So I'm going to change up some of these drywall tiles. And maybe we can do the same thing here for the bedrooms. So we can have like a zigzag pattern here on the top. Yeah, I like that. That's not too shabby. Now I'm thinking about the new room layout here for the worker base. Maybe on the top right we can get away with an enormous great hall. Like this one could stretch all across here. And then we make it this size. Or we even make it this size. What is the maximum size? 128 probably. No, it's even 120. I kind of would like to keep the floors on the same level. Which means this upper room here is only going to have three tiles. But I can also do something like this. Just make the room stretch across two floors. The thing is, in my opinion, a great hall needs to be at least four tiles in height. This way we can also set up a bunch of pictures apart from the ceiling lights. Ah, I see. I made a mistake here. This natural tile here is a little bit too low. Yeah, actually this changes everything because if I can set up a room here and then the next room here, then I have four tiles in height. So this is definitely going to be my great hall and it's going to stretch all the way. Oh no, that's bad. Well, honestly, it doesn't have to stretch that far. All I need is 24 dupes, right? So 24 mess tables. Say I want to leave a little decorative space over here, maybe a spot for a plant. And then we're going to start with the first six mess tables. I'm then going to leave two spaces free for a statue or something else and then another six and so on and so forth and then if we do another six here that should be everything and this would be the size of the great hall including the cabling here which is now in the way or maybe we just need the extra space in the beginning for a fridge and then right here on the right side i would like to see another plant and so this would be the border and we can just go around with the ladders if i do it like this the bottom room could be our exosuit room so all of this right here would be exosuits and here i would make my exit out of the base for now i'm gonna make this room here with normal tiles and not the precious metal tiles and then this piece here will have to move yeah that is unfortunate so I have to replace this and make sure it is completely encased. Anyways, one thing I wanted to do is also provide a little bit of power to my rocket. And I think if we just hook up the solar panels, we should be able to relay it inside of the rocket. Oh, there we go. Meteor showers are incoming. Oh, Ren, how are you doing? Maybe it's time to move back into the base now. And then on the second planetoid, I wonder how about the temperatures? Yeah, this is always going to be a little bit of an issue. Actually, the solar panels have a normal temperature here. Yeah, looks like we're going to have to dig up quite a bit. But at least my solar panels are safe. They're not starting to heat up or anything. Good, it's time to wake up the Somnium Synthesizer. All I need is some power cabling going through here. And then we're just going to power up an auto sweeper. So all my dream channels are currently in this storage bin. And if I set up the auto sweeper. And then hopefully the auto sweeper is only going to feed the channels that actually need to be fed. You can see we accumulated quite a few of them. There are like eight stacks or so in there. Good. There's my pump going for it. Now it's still going in the wrong direction. We can fix that with a pipe. This way we can make sure it is actually flowing into the correct direction. There you go. We're actually going for it somnium synthesizer is in use and let me see all the journals are still in there they are being delivered by the dupes and then the auto sweeper is just inputting them whenever it is required right yeah basically until we use up one journal and then it's just inputting another journal because 25 is the maximum so there's no risk of wasting the journals and that is good now we also have another pump providing the oxygen and therefore these guys here will not have to work quite as hard but we're already down to 84 tons of polluted dirt there's a timer on how much longer we can sustain it. 
So my suggestion would be to now make it over to the third planetoid and check out what we can do in order to save this colony. Okay, I just noticed we're also lacking another very important resource and that is the fossils. I believe we find that on the third planetoid as well. Let's not waste any more time and get things going. I want to go ahead and add some pickled meal to this refrigerator just because it is going to last for a while. And right now with our configuration we cannot really utilize the fridge. We want to make an emphasis on the oxygen diffuser as well as the telescope. As soon as we got the 10 kilograms of food in here I'm going to start the rocket. I should already have a sign made to the crew. There is our food being delivered by oh, multiple dupes apparently. Okay I'm not gonna complain we have the full amount of food in here. Let's choose a destination for the rocket. We can only really move six tiles. In the future, we're going to move a little bit into each of the directions. Maybe right here, we're going to find another planetoid. But right now, I want to put a rover on the third planetoid. So three tiles over and then three tiles back should be good. And we can still explore a couple of tiles. And then automatically, May should be tagging along. No, she isn't yet. Wait, maybe I have to open up the bunker doors. But there we go. Opening the door and uh, yeah, all the dupes get trapped again for some reason. <laughs> Maybe they're gonna fall through once it's open. And no, they, they just wait. Okay, come on, mate. We're ready. Oh, I know what it is. Maybe priorities piloting. No, we activated rocketry for May. I just had to actually launch it or set it to crew. But there we go. We're launching the rocket for the first time in this playthrough. And hopefully it's going to be one of thousands. This of course also gave us an achievement. Launch your first rocket. Now here we are. It's going to take only 0.8 cycles to actually reach this tile. During that we should be producing 120 watts from the solar panels. But then even a little bit of surplus maybe from using the engines. Here we go. Let's have a look at the radiation. Yeah. I think we're gonna be pretty safe, at least because of the tasks we have set up here. Also, of course, we can unequip the suit. May should be able to easily breathe in here. If we check out the Explorer, we can see our speed is 2.4 tiles per cycle and we have 5 tiles remaining. And look at the food, because we chose pickled meal, it only loses minus 3% a cycle, even though it is unrefrigerated and only in normal atmosphere. There we go, we are approaching the second tile and now we should be able to use the telescope for a bunch of tiles. So May in space should be allowed to do some researching, but I'm gonna put it all the way down to the lowest priority. Since she's idling around here either way, she's gonna be forced to use the telescope there's nothing else to do and now you can see the telescope seems to have priority over the oxygen diffuser and it's only turning on occasionally so maybe the carbon dioxide engine doesn't even produce power because right now we are using it still it is enough to make use of the telescope and we are researching the next few tasks right now this one here and then revealing more and more now what's really nice even in space and on other planetoids we have the maximum aptitude bonus and since we unlocked it quite early in the playthrough i think we're gonna benefit heavily yes may go for it make me proud you can poop on the floor, you can sleep on the floor, all good. Now it looks like we already reached the orbit. I'm gonna allow her to explore a couple more tiles. I mean, we can do all the tiles that are three away from the rocket. And in the meantime, we also deploy the rover's module. But maybe first let's overview the planetoid now that we can. What can we see here? We find some copper, okay. And of course, there's plenty of sand and sandstone. So that problem is out of the way. But other than that, not much to see yet. So I'm going to deploy the rover and let's maybe do that right here. So we have immediate access to the interior of the planetoid uh, right there. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Come on, little rover. First of all, maybe deconstruct the lander module and then we're going to make our way down. So there's more iron. There is the frozen fossil. A story trait I haven't dealt with yet. We also have patches of algae apparently. But come on, give me something good. Ah, phosphorite. That's also nice. Maybe um, I didn't check the geysers yet. No, I did. Of course. So still no sulfur geyser. Anyways, I think I'm gonna make my way straight down here with the ladderless digging pattern. And then we're gonna make our way over and down. Maybe continue here a little bit. Then make our way over. Yeah, the problem is this planetoid is quite hostile, right? There's 218 rats per cycle. And of course, there's no breeze breathable air so we might have to come in with a proper rocket we will not have access to a better engine just yet so it's going to be a tiny rocket but maybe at least we could use the spacefarer module 
So if I go ahead and research this technology, we should be able to first establish a landing pad and then use a proper rocket in order to have at least something livable that's going to allow us to establish a base. But yeah, first of all, I want to try to utilize this rover to explore most of the planetoid, just reveal the terrain and then maybe already set up a little something. The rover can only build basic parts, but it might help. Here we have May relieving herself. Good job, good job. And continue the research. Ah, okay, nice. This is actually quite a friendly baum here in the center. We even have some oxygen and plenty of algae to get one duplicate by. Also, there's our first oil reservoir. Hmm, slime. And of course, another story trait here, the Gravitas shipping container. But for now, I'm gonna keep going. I wanna make my way over here, I guess. Maybe get a little ladder going. Okay, that should be good. And then get a ladder going down as well. Or maybe we just utilize this part in order to get down quickly. Yeah, that's better. Get all the way down to here. Okay, not too shabby. Then we're gonna make our way back. Actually, we can't break through the abyssalite, so we'll have to utilize this part here that we already broke free. And then maybe if I do this right, we can already make a little liquid lock so we don't lose all of the oxygen there. Then continue over here, see what we can find on the other side. Just to keep you updated, in the meantime, on the second planetoid, Ari is making good progress, just digging everything up and also shipping more of the materials over to the first planetoid. That's what I'm talking about. We can also find lead and fossils. Most of our problems are solved. Even diamonds for really good temp shift plates. Ah, this is really good. Maybe we're just gonna go for the Dracos in order to get the plastic. Of course, we're gonna use some oil to get initial plastic, but I'm not even sure how much oil we're gonna find. Looks like May is done here researching the tiles. Yeah, very good. So we're gonna make our way back over here to the main planetoid. And I'm also gonna undo the pickled meal here so it gets back into to the main storage for what it's worth. Okay, nice. We don't even have to set up an oil well to get the initial oil for the plastic. Now, let's see. Do we even have? No, we don't really have cold bombs. That is just not enough. So it's all pretty toasty here. It's not going to be easy to just produce some plastic unless, of course, we send it over to the main planetoid where it would be easy. But maybe just for the initial plastic, we can make use of it. Do I already even have unlocked it? No, we still need to unlock the polymer press. Right now, I'm still researching that. And that reminds me, we probably need to activate our system here. Let's go ahead and do that. We need a little bit of juice here in the material study terminal. But my point is, afterwards, we should totally go for the polymer press here. Maybe we're already going to do that in the meantime, while we are collecting the bolts here. Looks like our explorer is going to return in 20 seconds. Let's go, mate. That was a good first mission. And there we go. Yeah, re-entering the atmosphere. Here. Let's check that out right here. Coming back. Okay, wonderful. And now I think I want to ground the rocket. Actually, there's nothing really to ground. Yeah, it's not worth it. However, May just made an exit here and I want her to first go ahead and equip the suit. So let me try that. May, that is for you. And yeah, she does it. Wonderful. Okay. That was a first successful mission. We know a little bit more about space. One of these question marks is certainly another planetoid. But yeah, we're going to focus a little bit on the third planetoid right here because that has all the important ingredients to thrive for our colony. Okay, looking good. It's not really interesting, this planetoid, other than all the materials that we now have access to. So I guess our next goal is to land a duplicate on the planetoid. That duplicate will then go ahead and establish a small base here using algae, maybe a manual generator for now. What is the Lux doing here? Right now, of course, it's bad. Maybe we have to check the star map here. Peak light is also 30,000 Lux, so it's the same as with our other planetoids. That means we could go ahead, maybe take a little bit of glass with us and establish one or two solar panels. Then we should have enough iron and copper in order to set up the heavy watt wires. And we can go ahead and establish a really good base here. Now, let me see which dupe is going to be the chosen one. It is uh, going to be Lyra. Yeah, she's designated for that job. And so she's now just going to establish a base. Let me go ahead and explore just a tiny bit more. Maybe we get to see something interesting. In the meantime, we unlock the natural gas generator, a petroleum generator as well. And we unlock the oil refinery. Very important for what we are about to do as well. Well, you know, the good thing is we have plenty of iron now and also plenty of fossils here that means we can have quite a large amount of steel in the pipeline 
But yeah, right now I think I want to continue here, maybe with some granite that we're going to pick up from here. But first I have to use igneous rock. Oh no, of course, we cannot even dig granite, never mind. So this is all impassable terrain for the robot, and I don't want to go down here. Well, in this case, I'm going to utilize the robot in the next episode in order to establish a small base here, wherever we can dig up. And then whenever we're going to send over Lyra, she can directly take over and establish the base. Now we're going to utilize the rover here, which has still two thirds of its battery power, to already establish the base as good as possible. We can do that with Igneous Rock. We have plenty of that on this planetoid. All we need is enough morale bonus for a duplicant to actually be happy on this planetoid. So I think what I'm going to to do is I'm gonna start right here just setting up some basic brooms I'm gonna get started with some simple barracks this doesn't actually need to be too large let's maybe go for 20 tiles or so we add a door right here and then right here I would like to make the bathroom we do have water running through occasionally there's also lots of dirt on this planetoid so we have both possibilities the difference between a latrine and a washroom is also just one morale point, but you know, it could be that important point. Let me check out Ari. Yeah, Ari is very close at 21, so we can hope to achieve a morale bonus of 21 without issues, since Ari can also do it. Lyra at the moment only has a requirement of 12 morale points. Of course, we'll have to spec her a little bit harder, especially with the digging she needs to be able to dig. But still, the more points we get, the easier it will be, in my opinion. So we're going to get started with a laboratory, then a shower right here. Let's do all out of copper. And then finally, of course, a sink. And we're going to do the same exact layout as we did on the second planetoid. And then all we need is a great hall as well, which we're going to set up here. Let me actually see. Did I manage to make it a great hall here even? Yeah, it's totally a great hall. Eight tiles and that is enough to take care of everything. I'm only going to do two mess tables. I don't think I'm ever going to have more than that. And then of course a flower pot right here. And of course we might also need a refrigerator and possibly a deodorizer as well. To make it a great hall it needs to be 32 tiles in size. So I need to expand this a little bit. So I believe all I'm really missing now is the water cooler that we can set up here. Okay. The rest here can be hollowed out. Now we just need a way to get up there. Let's say we do that here. Now there are a couple more things that I require to make this complete. Ooh, I wonder, should I make a nature reserve out of this? It might be worth it. What's the minimum size of a nature reserve? It's 32 tiles. How much? Mm, that's not good. Let's see. If I did something like this, for instance, this is already, what, 44 tiles? Okay, that's too much. Let's go down to 32. That means right here. And then I can easily enclose this and furthermore also let me see that's probably furniture set up a park sign and that's six extra morale points for basically free on this side here we also need to take away a little bit of material but then i should be able to set up a water sieve that we also need so water sieve goes right here and then taking away the ladder piece we should also be able to set up a hydroponic farm let's build it out of copper right there even though we still have to dig up some but yeah you get the basic chest we recycle whatever the heck we have going on here mm, maybe i'm actually gonna pull this over a little bit yeah that might be better honestly and then there's probably one more thing missing and that is a power room as usual we're gonna get ourselves started with a manual generator and then we need a battery but that doesn't leave me the space for a rock crusher rock crusher might be important yeah honestly i need the rock crusher right here can we have the battery elsewhere probably just over here then yeah it's a little bit unfortunate with the nature reserve being right in the center but if i let's say make this the exit out of the base then we are always passing the nature reserve yeah i think i'm gonna allow the robot to already do a little bit of preparation work on this base here and then we can have a look at lira who is going to get to the planetoid where are you oh that reminds me we probably are missing some oh look that we only had 4,000 kilocalories left on the second planetoid i did not realize so one thing of course we can do is send over the pickled meal somebody should be doing that quite immediately Chin, i just want to know Ooh, lira is also going for it but if we check out Chin, she took uh, two kilograms which isn't that much right so i should be able to send over even more yeah that was just two kilograms that was another kilogram uh come on come on give me something better that was four kilograms Jeez. let me maybe have a look at the second planetoid yeah we're getting nowhere with this well looks like we have enough for about 16 cycles i mean it's not nothing oh, oh, oh okay now that was enough 
pickled meal is all gone and i want to disallow it again and if we check out the second planetoid we are now at 100,000 kilocalories again as for the third planetoid this might actually be a little bit harder let's see we have muckroot here ah okay we do have muckroot that could get us by for a while but then the question is do we plant our own stuff or are we just gonna send over the food and i think my answer is we're gonna send over the food i would like the first planetoid to be like the heart of the operation and all the distribution happens from here like it's gonna have the most extensive rocket program and it's also gonna have the most extensive interplanetary launcher program so before i send lyra over i definitely want to get her a little bit more food and then we shall see where this goes oh i almost missed that we have 8700 units of brine ice which is absolutely perfect because that means i can completely cool down this part of the base here just gonna make sure we focus on that a little bit otherwise it's just taking forever with the temp shift plates but yeah we're still at maximum capacity with the somnium synthesizer and we still have plenty of journals left if this diminishes a little bit then i'm gonna go for the sixth dreamer but right now we have five and they seem to be holding up well eventually we're gonna go down but right now we have plenty of books to spare oh i just see this is not working anymore yeah we don't have any more carbon dioxide did i not set up a switch for this how silly of me so switch and do that. Is this even reachable? No. Ah, yes. I built some ladder downstairs. Okay. But I want this signal switch to be done so I can shut it off. And when the cable is built, then the gas pump is also going to shut off. But yeah, until then, we're going to cool down things here a little bit. And we have plenty of water again in order to keep our operations going. And yeah, there we go. Oh, well, it's going down a little bit. Good enough for my taste. Research completed. Step probably means let me see we are storing two rap bolts in here yeah i think i want to allow this rap bolt generator to shoot one more time and then we're gonna shut off the machine you know looking at this it might be handy to have a secondary switch for the other rap bolt generator so i can treat them individually like as soon as this one here shoots there's no reason for it to stay active anymore oh is this gonna be a close call oh man may 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 ah, ah. okay it shot nice there it is now disabled by automation grid but it is still no it's not actually using up the 480 watts is it i don't think so however we got the artifact analysis station out of that research and i think we're continuing the research still we are on that spree from the previous episode aren't we no actually not really we're completely through so i think what i'm gonna do is open up the robo miner and payload opener we're gonna require that soon and it's an easy research we're also gonna research probably the space scanner and the enclosed telescope the space scanner should allow us to detect the meteorite showers also people have been asking me why i'm not using the spice grinder and the sole reason for that is is because we have way more than enough morale points at the moment i will be using the spice grinder when we have set up the definite kitchen that is gonna go somewhere up here because of course i also want to upgrade my foods but there's no reason to get even more morale points if i'm already shooting at like Chin has 41 morale points and i'm only really using 20 of them i mean sure we could put some points into piloting and digging and stuff but but it's not really worth it because Jean isn't focused on that. Also slowly but surely it looks like we are running out of oxygen here and there's more oxygen at the bottom now. But yeah maybe temporarily we're gonna shut down this gas pump here and see how it goes without it. Another thing I would like to do is get rid of all the water here on the top. At the moment we... <laughs> no 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 dry ball you're missing. Oh no I must have missed that for a while and we are wasting all the gases. Hello somebody gonna build this drywall it really hurries. Thank you thank you okay now we trapped the gases inside and I think I should be able to open this up in order to drain the last of the liquids they should just pour it down. Ooh, actually well that's gonna be fine so let's just go ahead and open all of this up right here gonna get rid of everything that I cannot actually utilize. In the meantime on the third planetoid are we making progress where's my robot? right here idle oh no he trapped himself what an idiot at least we can now continue how much juice do you have left rover you have about half of the juice left that should still be enough to make good progress well originally i figured this wouldn't be an issue but as it turns out this might become an issue if the polluted water somehow forces itself through the liquid lock and then starts to pollute this area right here which actually already happened but it's just very little polluted oxygen it's 65.6 milligrams 
yeah, but we're not gonna get rid of it if we don't do anything about it. Maybe it helps setting up another block right here, and then we're just gonna go for a gas pump in order to get rid of that stuff as soon as possible. Shouldn't be too much of a hassle, we just need to bring this over here, and then we already have the power and everything ready. The other side is still a vacuum, that is good, so if we check the temperature, this doesn't really matter because we have this kind of closed off, but the more gas we have, the bigger of an issue it will be. Yeah, we can see that this is kind of interchanging itself with brine, and yeah, this could just get out of control very quickly. Thankfully, we have the dedicated builders here taking care of the issue. Come on, come on, come on, and the system can run. Okay, we should be able to get rid of that quite quickly. Yeah, I'll be coming back to that critter starvation. That's actually totally fine and acceptable. Before I forget, we have to exchange the rovers module, of course. Let's swap this for a different module, and the one we want is a trailblazer module. So instead of a rover, we'll be able to send back down a duplicant. We can even do this mission with a single duplicant and then send the rocket back via autopilot. On the second planetoid, I should have my pickled meal in here, and if I check out the freshness, it only loses minus 2% a cycle. Not even that, it's more like minus 1.5. But still, that means we should have pickled meal for the next 30 to 50 cycles. On the third planetoid, are we making progress? Ooh, I did, made a mistake. Ah, okay, 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 we can fix it. Oh my gosh, that was almost brutal. Like, of course, this oxalite tile is eventually going to disappear, and therefore also the plant. So we got to make sure at least four plants survive. That means I have to switch up my strategy here and move this one block over. So I'm gonna have my manual generator here. We then need the oxygen diffuser somewhere else. I'm probably just gonna have it outside of here and then together with a bunch of batteries as well. Let's say we're gonna do about five batteries. And if we can, we're also already gonna set up some wiring connecting everything together. Research completed. We got access to the payload opener. This is gonna be amazing. And of course also to the Robo Miner. As mentioned, I'm gonna go for the next few researches right away. There's no reason not to do it. We don't even need advanced equipment. Oh man, this really hurts. My oxygen production went down again. Uh, 74 tons of polluted dirt. Let's see. These guys are going for it. Also reaching max pressure every now and then. Yeah, it's about time we actually moved out of the way. Also, let me take some of this hotter water here. Well, it's just 25 degrees, not that hot. But I'm gonna be pumping up some of this brine and also polluted water. We can then set up a simple water sieve and also a desalinator maybe. I'm gonna build them out of gold amalgam so they can heat up a little bit more. Power these guys up and then we just need to bring over the pipes. Bring this up here. I know this is all spaghetti but you know it's just to get things rolling properly. I think I'm then gonna go directly into a liquid filter. We're gonna extract the polluted water and bring it right into here so that we can dump it as fresh water into our storage. Because right now you can see we uh, clearly don't have enough. Of course these storages should be a little bit lower submerged in the water. It doesn't even have a dramatic impact on the base but still I don't want these slime lung germs to be everywhere. This is also going to involve another deodorizer probably right here. Maybe we could set up one more here at the bottom as well. Get rid of that polluted oxygen. Good. Now continuing with the brine we also refine that liquid back into water and I guess right here the two pipes could meet. So if I just take this over with a bridge like so and then the two liquids meet together here and then we want to maybe fill it up to this level. Yeah, just use the previous liquid vent. Liquid filter, there it is. We want to sort out, come on, polluted water. Where are you? Right there. And another research completed. We got the party line phone, which is quite funny, but I cannot have that for my workers. We'll have that in the hotel though. And we also have a little bit more automation. And I totally forgot the drywalls do not actually cover up the cabling. So this is not looking the way I want it to. But what we can do is just go behind the doors. Now these wires I'm going to build out of steel because of of course the rockets are gonna heat it up quite a bit. But yeah, I think this is gonna be much better this way and we do the same thing with the power cable which is also built out of steel. Just go like so. Okay, liquid pump is hooked up. I just need to build the bridges and then we can refill the water storage easily. And then there's another research completed for the space scanner. Ooh, check this out. Very nice. And then also the enclosed telescope which you told me has actually a higher reach than the normal telescope. So I was wondering, why not actually put this to the test and explore a little bit more of space? Well, it's going to be a little bit annoying with the oxygen pipes, right? Uh, 
yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it be, but just know that you can research one tile further with the enclosed telescope. So instead of the three tiles, we could actually reach this tile, but I need to sort out my oxygen problems before I do things like that. Right now, I'm using a little bit too much for the Somnium synthesizer. It might be worth just shutting this off. So I think what I might want to do is set up a switch here for the auto sweeper so I can turn it off. And then we're just gonna allow the Somnium synthesizer to use up the rest of the dream journals. I mean, even if it is only active like a third of the time, it still benefits us and the dream journals in there cannot be removed. Are you, wait, that pip just emptied my dream journals here. Are you crazy? Attack this guy. There, now the auto sweeper is shut off. This one here isn't set to allow for manual use and that means we're now gonna use up all the seconds and once that's done, we can utilize the entirety of the oxygen for the base. And then once we have moved, we should also have a better oxygen system that can actually support the Somnium synthesizer. The Trailblazer module is set up. I think it still requires some material. Let's just uh, upgrade the priority. Yeah, Nisbet is bringing some material in order to actually build that rocket and then we can get started. Maybe let's also have a look inside and I want to bump this up because the duplicant Lyra that I'm going to send over is going to spend more than like 10 cycles over there. So we want to upgrade this storage bin to the maximum and then I'm going to take the pickled meal with me because that food just doesn't want to go bad. And we could already think about bringing along other materials such as glass because we could use that to build solar panels. We could also bring over some refined material if we wanted to so we wouldn't even have to build the rock crusher. It might be worth bringing along some glass for initial solar panels honestly but with this second mission here we are only sending one duplicate over and we cannot actually land the rocket just yet. We could now replace this telescope with an outhouse or a bed but I'm not feeling like it. It's just going to be a very short mission and then honestly we will be able to use the telescope right here to do some more exploration. Let's check out Lyra. Priorities. Lyra should have the same priorities as Ari, which has been working quite well. Yeah, let's just wait for it to actually get into the rocket. It's going to be a little bit easier to set the same priorities. Rocketry is already at the highest priority. So all we have to do here is switch the crew from May to Lyra. Where are you? Right there. We're going to change the destination to go over here. Three tiles and then three tiles back. So that should be good. Let me check the interior. They did not bring the food just yet. Let me see. Can we do that? Yeah, I haven't launched the rocket just yet. So we can bring along the food, aka all the pickled meal. Well, I guess it's only going to come in handy when we do the second flight. But the second flight is going to come very soon. I'm just going to send over May on the second mission. Okay, now we have seven kilograms. That's just 15,000. Oh man, do we have some more? Good. Now we have 13 kilograms. That's enough for about. 24 cycles for a single duplicant. I think it's good. We're now gonna open up the bunker doors here and then get that flight started. Lyra is already inside the rocket. I'm gonna unequip her suit. Uh, unequip that. Okay, you should be able to breathe in here. And then the doors are open and we can begin that launch sequence. There is nothing wrong with the rocket. Good luck, Lyra. I hope you have a good flight. See you soon. Closing that bunker door again. We should actually make the closing and opening of the bunker doors individual. But, you know, we get to that eventually. It's gonna take approximately a cycle to move over here. And then I'm gonna send Lyra down with the Trailblazer module. In the meantime, let's see how the robot is doing. Still busy building stuff. That's good. We're not gonna be 100% ready. Now checking the priorities. I wanna set the same exact priorities as I have with Ari, as mentioned, because that kind of worked out. Like we need to enable researching, for instance, lower down building a little bit and then lower down storing as well. Good. I will be landing right here. I will be able to just go down maybe with the suit equipped and then we are going to find ourselves back down here. That also means the suit is completely gone and I need to replace it. Yeah, that might be a good idea. We're going to deliver suit here and we're going to build another one here out of what did I build them out of? Mm, I cannot really tell. Let's build them out of aluminium. I have the feeling that was it, right? Oh, by the way, also, the lead suits, of course, they are made with lead, so I cannot really do anything about that, except very soon because the third planetoid will give us the ingredients. One Atmos suit coming up, okay, and that should be replaced. 
By the way, you always give me very nice numbers and tips for the game. For instance, we need a full pipe in order to support five of these Atmo suit dock stations. But bear in mind that a lot of the duplicants spend their time inside the base or outside. And I'm not going to need the full potential of five suits all the time. This is why generally there's no issue filling up the suits because a lot of it is, of course, downtime. The suits just hanging around and therefore we can easily support the eight Atmo suit docks we have going on here. It really all depends on how many duplicants go out at any given time. Good. Looks like we caught all the polluted oxygen that was escaping here. The volcano currently is dormant. Also, it looks like we now sucked out most of the heat from this biome. And I think we would benefit more just allowing the chill from this biome or this part here to go over to the water still. And therefore, I'm going to cut this completely off. So I want to be doing something along these lines, honestly. Maybe this doesn't even have to be insulated. I want to leave this open, then maybe add a little ladder so we can get rid of the rest of this stuff though we can do like four tiles already and then maybe i'm also gonna make my way down here now i need to be a little bit careful since this is the barrier here i want to make sure to only really dig up like this stuff here would be fatal and just to be on the safe side i also want to make sure that the liquid isn't touching the abyssalite on the opposite side of the magma layer. I sometimes have really big issues with that. Now, of course, I do not want to dig up the oxalite and I don't want to progress too much over here, but just a little bit. So maybe another ladder here wouldn't hurt. And then we could also start to dig out some of that shebang. Mm, let's maybe leave that be. Just dig out the cobalt here that has already warmed up. We're almost there. Less than half a cycle to go. Unfortunately, there is a meteor shower on its way. Oh man. And there's another one here. Jeez. So yeah, this one here is going to reach the third planetoid very soon. And I'm not sure what type of asteroid or meteorite it is. Hopefully it's not going to be too destructive. Now, we can actually see that right here. It's ice meteor showers. This is actually going to be extremely useful. Like if it rains some ice, then we can easily use that. Boo, boo, boo. Lyra made a mess. Grow up. There it is. We have reached orbit. I think I'm just going to risk it. Oh, look at that. Lyra actually isn't doing too well. 43 radiation. Are you serious? Oh man, I'm going to be so glad once I got access to the lead suits. Of course, we could also build the rat pills. But yeah, without any further ado, let's equip that Atmo suit again. There you go, Lyra. And you want to use the Trailblazer module now. Select the duplicant, Lyra. Yeah, we're going to deploy you. And you're going to go right here. Wonderful. It's coming back. So I can already go ahead and send the rocket back to the main planetoid here. Yeah, and it should be on autopilot being a little bit slower but it's still gonna function in the meantime we are landing here and what i want to do uh, yeah let's do it right away is deconstruct this trailblazer lander this here is actually gonna give us half of the material that is required to complete a rocket platform and i think the best way i could do this is already set it up just in case the meteor showers actually destroys the terrain so we want to make sure to build this out of iron and let me maybe do that right over here okay and then we're gonna just free up the space and already input the iron pieces so they cannot actually be destroyed or hidden by the meteor showers good now we're gonna make our way down and i think i'm just gonna close this up again so if i put lyra down here then she should be building that actually i think the robot is gonna do it which is also fine but there we go we now also have access to the dracos by the way which is really useful good now we need to worry about the initial food at least a tiny bit and we can do that by maybe allowing meat to be eaten wait no what happened to my nature reserve what did i do <sighs> i put the power cable through the nature reserve i'm such an idiot oh my gosh okay this really hurts i mean it's not necessary it would have been easy six morale points we didn't need it for ari either still i now feel like the game's little bit yeah this is really a bummer however lira you can now unequip that suit and just make sure the infrastructure gets built here so we're gonna need at least one battery and then yeah you can just go ahead and build everything okay now when it comes to food i think we're just gonna go for the muck route first so this Digging up all of these cracks should give us access to plenty of food. And there's even more food up here. So if we make our way maybe up to the fossil already and then over here, there's going to be plenty more initial food to be gathered. Okay, nice. We got some initial muck root. We can survive for about three cycles. And in that time, we should be digging up even more. So all I want to see is this rocket to actually go back in one cycle. And then we're going to load up May again in order to set down another trailblazing module, which then should be enough to actually finish the rocket 
Pluted platform. In the meantime, we can also see the brine and polluted water is making its way up. The water sieve is taking care of the polluted water and then the desalinator of the brine, both resulting in nice, fresh, clean water. Now, when it comes to schedules, I would like to keep a better overview. I think I'm gonna make an additional schedule for all the duplicates that are of planetoid. So of planetoid, that's good. And I want the same schedule as I have here in the beginning. That's two downtime, two bedtime, and then another three downtime slots. And the rest is gonna be work. So Ari is gonna belong to that. Where are we inside the schedule? That's fine. Lyra is right here. So she is inside her downtime. No, actually, she's already doing stuff again. So let's move Lyra and Ari over here. And this way, I know exactly how many duplicates I have in each shift on my main planetoid, which at the moment is not many here in the last shift. So what I might want to do, for instance, is move May over into this schedule, though I have to be a little bit careful. Yeah, I'm going to allow her the downtime first and then move her over. Lyra making a mess of course inside the fresh water you little silly bastard and the rover shut down so we used up all of its power we can deconstruct it we now got those ice meteor showers here on the third planetoid and it just seems to be basically snowing a little bit yeah that's actually really useful it's snow and even crushed ice so it's not gonna go anywhere well let's just keep going i now need to make sure that we are building these rooms the bathroom is gonna have to wait just a tiny bit yeah look at that brutal and then the next episode we should be able to send over may as well even if it is just very briefly in order to bring down the pickled meal and to build the rocket platform but that is definitely the plan to establish the base here in the next episode kind of make sure that lira isn't gonna be stressed too much at the moment she of course is stressed because of low morale points and everything at the moment my spaceship is still making its way back as a matter of fact it seems to be arriving or maybe that has something to do with me just loading the game let me see oh no it actually has something to do with the bunker doors not being opened oh my gosh that is slightly embarrassing also we have some meteorites on their merry way how long is this gonna take to arrive the doors are open, rocket is inside, and we can close them again. Good, now inside the rocket, I would like to store a couple of different materials. Instead of just algae, we're now gonna bring over, let's see, some refined material. Let's go with gold, because we have plenty of that. I'm also gonna send over some normal gold, just to be secure. This way we can build machinery with higher overheat temperatures. And then I think I also want to send over some glass. Now, how much glass do we currently have? 500 kilograms. We need a little bit more. Probably need to craft some more. Let's go with another 40 crafts or so. What's happening here? Body temperature. Not good. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, of course. The bloody polluted water is heating up quite a bit. And we need insulated pipes here. So I would say as of this point, all of this needs to be insulated as soon as possible. And then that should be an issue of the past. Yeah. I think we can avoid it by just exchanging the pipes. Since we have limited space inside the storage bin, I just want to make sure we collect the right amount of stuff. In the meantime, Lyra is starting to build the great hall and everything required to actually feel a little bit happier. Considering everything, I might want to reset her skills, though the exosuit training is really handy, but I need to get into hard digging very soon. Well, let's just observe and see how the stress actually develops. We have 11 tons of gold amalgam. That is actually way more than enough. Let's get rid of that. We also got over three tons of refined gold. I would say that is enough. I'm just sweeping up a little bit of gold amalgam. I don't want 11 tons. That's way too much. There's now 600 kilograms of glass in there. Enough for three solar panels. I want to get started with that. And with that out of the way, we basically have everything that we want. I just want people to get a little bit of that gold amalgam. Okay, we're down to six tons. That's good. I'm gonna get this baby launched now. A little bit more pickled meal would be nice. I think, well, we have no pending deliveries. But there we go. We now have enough for 20 cycles. That should be be good enough now the meteor showers are really close so i kind of want to wait for them to do their thing right there okay it's actually one of the bad asteroids that partially destroys our terrain uh oh, man they actually made it through here darn it's okay we can fix everything no problemo let's just wait for this to be over and then on the other planetoid we still have the same asteroids going on. And then on the third planetoid, we have another ice asteroid. Okay, nice. Who's trapped? You're just a little complainer. Okay, I think it's over. So we're gonna dig everything up and hopefully get things fixed. Good then. Time to open this up. The engine is full. I just have to set this to crew. And this time it's gonna be May. Where are you? May, right there. Okay, 
Are you ready? We're gonna set the destination to be the third planetoid here. We wanna basically do the same thing we did in the previous episode with the Trailblazer module. Okay, that seems to be fine. And begin that launch sequence. Wonderful. Make me proud, May. Before I forget, May, unequip that suit. Take advantage of the fact that we have uh, a oxygen diffuser. Yeah, we actually have enough oxygen in here to breathe. And it's just gonna take about half a cycle to reach the destination. In the meantime, Lyra is continuing her work. It looks like we're gonna arrive in 30 seconds. Oh yeah, I'm really happy for Lyra. As soon as we get to build that landing pad, she officially isn't stranded anymore. So without any further ado, we should get in here again and then of course equip the Atmu suit. So do that first. I'm then gonna deploy May on top of the planetoid right next to the module here, the rocket platform. And there we go. How wonderful is that? May is gonna come out and she should immediately deconstruct this trailblazer module and then build the rocket platform. Let's see this happen. There we go. Yes, build it. Yeah, good. Now all I need is maybe an emergency ladder so I can reach the various modules. Let's maybe check on the main planetoid what is even necessary. I need one up like eight tiles. So right here, I should be able to build a ladder in order to be able to reach the rocket again. But all May is supposed to do is build this rocket platform. The rest can then be done by Lyra. Colony achievement earned. I did not even realize what was that. Build a launch pad on a world without a teleporter. No, I... No! Oh god, okay. I did not realize. Lyra is actually at a 100% stress level. She's also a binge eater. That is really bad. Oh man, if only I hadn't taken away the nature reserve. This was such a rookie mistake. So I think I might actually have to go with a skill scrubber. Can I get her to build this? Let me see. No, she's just eating. No, she's actually going for it. Okay, this is absolutely ridiculous. Anyways, if I put Lyra right here into the skill scrubber, then she is not doing anything else, stupid. And also I get rid of her skills. Therefore, at least she's going to be in the plus for the morale bonus. She's actually completely ignoring the skill scrubber. So that is not even a good idea. Maybe I'm going to allow May to actually help out a little bit. We now got the platform and also the ladders. That means we can go ahead and send the explorer down. Wait a second. I cannot actually send the rocket down. Otherwise, I will not have enough juice to get it back. That is interesting. So I cannot even go back and forth with carbon dioxide engines. So maybe I'm wrong about this. Let me test this out. I'm going to send the rocket back down. And there it is. It should be capable of arriving. Yes. And then May can also go ahead and enter it again. Lyra actually went down to 60% of the stress now that she basically relieved herself a little bit. And in the meantime, I think I'm going to allow May to help out a little bit, building everything downstairs. We're also going to unequip the suit again. Yeah, May can definitely feel the stress. Good. Fridge is in place. That is the most important part. We're going to bring everything edible, but most importantly, the pickled meal over here. So we got to make sure that this has a low priority here inside the rocket. I actually didn't end up resetting all of Lyra's skill points just yet, did I? No, I don't think so. Wait, I need to prevent Lyra from stress reacting again. I think I'm gonna send her back and then uh, up the priority on the generator. Okay, this is already better. We have a mess hall, which means we get some morale bonus. We can even plant a seed here to make it a great hall. Okay, hopefully we can now finish up Lyra, improve her morale a little bit. Now, the problem is she's already at 92, 93 stress level again. Oh my gosh. But we can do it. Just reset those skills. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes. Okay, that means theoretically the stress level here should change now. Yes, indeed. Look at that. We now have total change per cycle exactly zero because we have high morale with minus 20 stress per cycle. So we just need to get rid of the soggy feet and then maybe add one more room bonus such as the cards here. Let's go ahead and actually speed this room up a little bit. Oh yeah, look at that. Stress 91. So we're lowering. I mean, that would have been devastating if Lyra ate all the pickled meal in one go. While we're at it, I'm also going to allow meat for Ari and also Lyra because they spent their time over there not actually cooking up anything. There it is. I think this is already going to give us... Ooh, okay. We actually get the bonuses. However, of course, we still need to prepare the loop here for our bathroom. So bring this directly over here and it's going to be recycled. Then we need that plant. Let me see. 
get a hydroponic farm in here. Let me actually do this differently. I want to get this directly in here so that we can come back into the hydroponic farm. This way we only use the X's. Actually, that's stupid. Of course, we want the polluted water. So instead, we're going to continue right here. Yeah, that makes more sense. Oh, I totally forgot. We probably should have taken with us one of the seeds. Yeah, that was kind of silly, actually. Looks like Lyra is now going for a little bit of research, which means she's going to use the telescope and she's going to start to explore some of these tiles, probably. Where are you? She decided otherwise. Okay, well, I now want to know whether or not I can make it back. It is almost Lyra's downtime. I'm going to let her do the downtime so she can actually eat because we have nothing here. And then I'm going to fly her back. It might very well be that we cannot make it back and we will have to abandon the ship, which isn't that dramatic, but it would still be a disappointment. Yeah, it's just at the brink of 30 degrees, which is a little bit too much. So I think I'm just going to go for a quick and easy solution. We have like 25 degrees polluted water here. All we really need to do is set up a pitcher pump maybe here to be able to collect it and then dump a little bit on top of here. Now, I want to make sure this is actually not happening with the dust caps. They can take up to five degrees more. So maybe before we utilize it, we want to make sure to close this off. I almost completely forgot before I can actually make my way back. I'm going to set up an automatic dispenser in order to collect all the materials that we have inside the rocket. Because if we have to abandon it, which is much likely, then I don't want to miss out on the materials that I actually brought over. Yeah, all of the glass, the gold amalgam and everything, even the algae in this case. I want to empty this entire rocket because it is most likely going to get destroyed. We actually still have 17 tons of algae in here and probably plenty to actually make our way back come on guys you gotta be a little bit quicker about this yes okay there's still 10 tons left 8.6 come on lira you can breathe later oh i totally forgot lira of course is absolutely crap at carrying stuff around we might at least want to get into improved carrying here uh three yeah we could even do suit sustainability training without risking anything okay wonderful there it is okay we actually made it that means i can now send the rocket back but before i do that i want to make sure we also grab an atmo suit here for may where are you? Hmm. Or maybe we're just going to leave the Atmo suit here. Let's actually do that. We're going to leave the Atmo suit here. So we already have a spare one and we will only have to repair it, basically. That means I want to change the crew again. It got changed whenever I used the Trailblazer module. Change my course and of course we cannot reach the destination we cannot even reach this planetoid but what we could do is abandon the ship closer to the second planetoid than the third one if i go right here i actually don't know which planetoid is gonna pull us closer if i go here same thing but if i go here i'm pretty sure we're gonna be pulled to this planetoid yeah let's go ahead and launch this acknowledge warnings and begin that launch sequence okay may good luck with your journey back and of course now may enjoys all the room bonuses well apart from a toilet but who needs a proper toilet well apparently may would have been glad about a real toilet but we don't really have the time 0.3 cycles until we need to abandon ship and this now means we have plenty of algae on this planetoid, which we're going to use to create the oxygen, 26 tons, as a matter of fact. And we also have some gold amalgam for initial machines. We even have a little bit of refined materials as well. I don't see how anything can go wrong now. We are just going to set up some solar panels and then we could potentially use all the meteorites that are coming down here in order to start cooling down whatever we need to cool down. But yeah, I want access to the crude oil as soon as possible, maybe even the next episode. This is going to ensure that on the first planetoid we can actually build plastic and use that in order to get proper cooling loops going. Right now everything is kind of stitched together. I mean it is working apart from the farm but I think this one here is recovering as well. All right here we go. We're now officially a stranded rocket. Let me have a look inside. May is doing a little bit of research. I think I'm gonna let her do that. Lyra peeing on the floor for the seventh or so time. I get it. It's harsh. May is not feeling well. I think I'm gonna abandon the mission let's now do this go ahead abandon ship yes confirm that and we're gonna be pulled to the second planetoid this is very good we got the escape pod right here wait did i already miss may going out of there yeah look at that storing 
material already, but I want her to actually use the teleporter here. She can go back to the first planetoid. Okay, that was actually not that dramatically hard. You need now to go back into the base in order to equip an Atmo suit. Okay, very nice. That was a more or less successful mission. I mean, we did lose a rocket in the process, but Elon also counts that as a success. So why not I? So I think I'm going to add another row of farm tiles. Also, this night we're going to slaughter a whole bunch of box locks in order to compensate for the lack of food we currently have going on. But I figured there might be a better solution if we set up a temp shift plate with, uh, let's see, probably brine ice is what we get the most of. Yeah, checking out the second planetoid here. There's plenty of brine ice that we can use in order to cool down various areas on the main planetoid. So I'm going to set up maybe two of these temp shift plates. They can start to cool things down. Down. I'm gonna set up another temp shift plate over here and there. Now, what am I building this out of? This shouldn't be buildable. So let's set up two temp shift plates here, maybe another one there and there. Cool things down here in the kitchen area. I might want to cool this water sieve down, maybe the battery slightly, and then the metal refinery area we could also cool down a little bit. Yeah, and Ari can take care of all of that. He's gonna take a shower, probably. No, eating, you lazy bastard. There is the shower. He should not be going for the brine ice. Let's see that happen. Wonderful. Wait, uh, leave that in place. Do something like that. Mm -hmm. And now we get access to all that brine ice. Wonderful. And now please pick it up. New recovering breath. Okay, that's fine. I just want to see you pick up the ice. Okay. Yeah, it is cold, but it's going to be totally worth it to help out the main base, keep it cool. Now, most of the plants are already coming back. That is good. Let's also add another row of meal ice. Brine ice is arriving. Did I set this to a high priority? Let me see the temp shift plates. I want them to be built immediately. Let's see this happen. Yeah, look at that. The temp shift plates are cooling down. Well, at least the environment. And at a certain point, they're just going to melt, which is fine. But at least we can distribute a little bit of chill everywhere they are built once they are melted i'm just gonna mop them up this one here actually melted immediately but we can see the water sieve is substantially cooler and right here we can also see some of the brine drop down to the metal refinery already cooling it down but now with the two additional temp shift plates this should get even better plants have died uh oh 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 oh, oh crap of course, I totally forgot about that, but we can help things out a little bit. Meep is doing a phenomenal mopping job. We can replace that dust cap without issues and then just uh, kind of pick everything up. Wonderful, but now we have agreeable temperatures again. It's going to take a while until this is heated up. Let's also mop that up. But yeah, this is exactly what I like to see. We have plenty of these left actually right here. I have tons and tons of ice and liquid fireballs. We still have a little bit of brine ice left. We shouldn't let it go to waste brine ice. Yeah, I'm gonna cool down the water here a little bit more. Otherwise, I'm actually pretty happy. It's gonna suffice until we move the duplicates over. So maybe the next time we should think about an oxygen system that is gonna replace our current polluted dirt oxygen system with a liquid system. Okay, time to kill all the plug slugs that are starving. I totally missed the night, but we can just hover over them in order to figure out which ones need to be killed. And it's actually not that many. Most of them seem to be holding up pretty well. There are like four or five we can kill. But still, it's going to be enough in order to help us across this little calorie issue we have going on. Of course, now that we fixed it, uh, we're going to be up to speed in no time. Yeah, you know what? This might not be the worst of ideas. My oxygen system, the main system for the worker force, I want to have just beneath the base. I think what I want to accomplish with this system is just to supply enough oxygen for these duplicates. That means also the Atmo suits that are going to remain here. Switching to water for oxygen production, considering the electrolyzer is sucking about one kilogram of water and we need three in order to supply enough oxygen for 24 duplicates. So instead of just supplying the 24 duplicates i think i'm also gonna supply the somnium synthesizer here this way i can at least make a design that is symmetrical and we're gonna see how that performs first of all maybe let's see how much space we're gonna require in the center somewhere here i want to go ahead and set up a pump which is going to be responsible to pump up the resulting hydrogen building everything out of gold amalgam for the plus 50 overheat temperature 
Now, hold your horses. I think the top room needs to be the power room. Yeah, we cannot get away without it. Well, maybe let's do something easier. Within stations, I should have my... Oh, wait, we didn't unlock that yet. The transit tubes, of course. We want to go ahead and unlock that so we can already imagine how this is going to look like. We have the transit tube access point right here with the transit tube going out this way. That means this would be the border somewhat. So let's just mark that with the task. Before the transit tube, I want them to change into the Atmo suit. So this is where that goes. Atmo suit dock, we're going to build everything out of gold to be fancy you know but this should be a checkpoint first right there and then a whole bunch of docks now a lot of duplicates are gonna remain inside the base but not really so we need plenty of docks now we have 16 docks like a third of the duplicates is gonna spend their downtime here right and therefore hopefully 16 are enough but we still have plenty of room to spare in case it is not I think I'm already going to do this with the heavy conductive wire also made out of gold and that wire is going to move all the way over here and connect with the main wire and we would be needing a heavy watt conductive joint plate gold right there let's actually apart from the volcanoes also produce some more gold I'm going to do another 90 craft of gold amalgam here in the metal refinery. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't really have enough time to take care of the oxygen system in today's episode. But the next time I think I'm going to build that with four electrolyzers, we would be needing four kilograms of water per second. We have nothing on the main planetoid that would produce that amount of water. And this cool slush guys here only produces 1.65. We might be able to use the geo tuner to make it better. But in order to make it sustainable for 24 duplicates, we probably have to involve the third planetoid, which contains let's see not a chlorine gas vent but there's something else yeah right here the cool steam vent but yeah i guess we're gonna find out more to that in the next episode i'm gonna try to switch a little bit to the new system also so that we can slowly start to move the duplicates and maybe think about the next steps for the worker base and then we can clean things up and start with the huge industry and all of that here is dependent on lira which is supposed to go ahead and grab some of the oil here so maybe the next time we are supposed to send over some resources lira can use in order to sustain atmo suits herself we're gonna go ahead set up some solar panels and of course grab the oil send it over to the main planetoid maybe even already work on it here but this looks actually a little bit toasty and then finally once we have the initial plastic on the main planetoid we should be able to start building the first steam turbines and therefore change the entire game as a last step i'm trying to fill up the bathroom here so that we can start to utilize it we still need a thimble reed in order to get rid of the excess polluted water that we're creating but today i want to dedicate my time towards building a oxygen system right here for the new worker base as well as actually bringing along some oil we have enough initial oil right here also fossils that we can send over and in order to accomplish that i think i want to make my way up here with a ladder as well as down with a fire pole so this is all gonna be built right here and then on the very top we start to set up some solar panels as well as beacons and interplanetary launchers well technically for this planetoid we don't even need the beacons but what we do need is an interplanetary launcher which i don't think i've actually unlocked just yet we are still working on the transit tube so i'm gonna wait until that is finished Currently, we're still filling up the water pool here and it's not even getting that hot. I think using the regolith for our deodorizers is currently the biggest problem. Now, I kind of want to make sure we focus on this part here so we can get the liquid pump to function for a little bit and fill up the sink. On the main planetoid, we can already think about the next setup. Namely, we're going to need some hydrogen generators. I cannot rotate these around, but we can go ahead and set some of them up right here. How many are we going to need? Let's maybe have a look at that. The electrolyzers are used Using 120 watts we need four of those that is 480 watts then we also need gas pumps they take 240 watts holy cow yeah that is actually way more than i suspected but let's just go ahead and set up about four of these generators and what i actually want to do is put these on aluminium tiles so the heat from the system is going to seep through and both of these rooms are just going to remain at the 75 or so degrees they will be at in order to accomplish this we might have 
have to make some more aluminium. How much ore do we have? Hmm, not that much. Let me see. Where is aluminium? On this planetoid, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, a little bit. We have 6.8 tons. Let's actually go ahead and send that over. Where is it? Aluminium ore. We're going to send that over to the main planetoid so that we can smelt some of that up again. Let's do about 50 crafts. That should be fine. We also have an aluminium volcano, of course, but this one here, I think, is a little bit harder to cool down. Even harder than the cobalt. And we're already struggling with the cobalt. Okay, now this lake is getting a little bit too high for my taste. Let's maybe start taking things apart here a little bit. Background buildings, this all can go. And then maybe just open up a little more of this part so the water settles a little bit. Now, here is the part where we have to be careful. These guys here are extremely hot. So I want to make sure we kind of insulate them. We're just going to do this with priority. So when we get there, it will be taken care of. Now, the question is, are we also going to have a battery set up? And if so, where is it going to go? Yeah, maybe we're even going to have that as our primary level here, the battery. We should go ahead and use the smart batteries also with gold for the overheat temperature. Well, iron would also work. So let's actually do iron since no duplicate is ever going to get to see the system anymore. Connect all of these together and then we're going to have the generators at the bottom. Out of gold amalgam, of course. And since we have the batteries only going up to this point, I'm also going to do that with the hydrogen generators. Or maybe we are such nutters for symmetry that we're going to completely change that. Actually get rid of these batteries and make the gap in the center. Ah, that is so much better. And then for the giggles, I'm actually going to do something like this okay and then of course this also needs to be adjacent to aluminium tiles and wait is this a broken neutronium tile yeah this has a buried object inside how is this even possible is this like a critter wait let me see oh man this bloody neutronium such a shame i didn't even think of it and then there's also the teleporter crap Hmm, yeah, I really think we might have to build the oxygen system here and then adjacent to it, we're going to build the battery room or vice versa. Yeah, this is a little bit of a shame, but uh, trust me, we're going to get there. First of all, let's measure out what we actually need, like four tiles here. So this would be the border. Then I need four tiles free for my hydrogen pump right there. One, two, three, four. OK, that might actually add up if we make it this size. And then who knows, we could have the water sieve, for instance, in this area. Ah, actually, that is perfect. So we can basically build a water sieve out of gold amalgam and also let it cool down with the same strategy. Gonna build this right here. Seems to be fine. And instead of this being insulated, I will want to exchange that with aluminium as well. This way I can benefit from whatever temperature we have going on in this room, which is always gonna be the temperature that we input through the water. Well, not the exact same temperature, but it's gonna be related to the incoming temperature. Now, of course, instead of cooling it down this way we could also go with the new strategy of using where is it probably in the piping section the conductive panel and i think in this case it might not even be the worst of ideas you know we might even be capable of getting the excess polluted water to cool down the water sieve and then continue into the plants though to make this truly automatic i also need an auto sweeper so what if we build this right here and then together with an auto sweeper we were able to pick up the polluted dirt but also input the sand or regolith whatever we provide and of course eventually this would all be loaded into a conveyor loader mm, let's set that up let me see. I want to have it there. And of course, we also need a conveyor receptacle. What is actually going on with my... Ah, of course, I'm in pause mode. But I still need to replant the ward seeds here and re-enable the gathering of radiation. But now I think we're getting somewhere and I can even completely close this off in the end. Now, how much space do we need for the electrolyzers? I think about three tiles. And then we set up two electrolyzers. There's going to be the middle part and another two electrolyzers here. Let's already go ahead and set these up like so and then i guess what we can do is fill this up with a bunch of blocks and i would like to do it with manual airlocks this time around let's just go with cobalt put those here and there i then want to set up a bunch of atmo sensors to decide when we want to activate each set of pumps for instance we're gonna have a gas pump right here and then a whole bunch more pumps here at the bottom and i think about six should do the trick so this is exactly perfect and then we would be encasing this as well now one of my big issues with that of course is the neutronium but we just have to live with it yeah i don't want to cheat to get rid of it but what we can do is just just uh, go ahead and fill it up 
So in the end, it's kind of built into the neutronium. And then what we will have to do is exchange this side here with aluminium. And that is going to be adjacent to the power room that is then going to hopefully be cooled down. On the other side, we could also go with radiant pipes that worked in the last playthrough. And I think that might be the more elegant solution. But yeah, let me get some of this stuff already built and we can see how we can continue. For now, this guy here needs to be disabled this checkpoint. I don't want my duplicates to place their atmo suits there. And then maybe if possible, we would also like to continue this one here yeah we just don't have enough steel yet lyra is at zero stress i think i'm gonna spec her into hard digging just a little bit yeah let's do super hard digging even we should be able to maintain the 13 morale points and then she will be able to dig up a little bit more in the meantime ari is making some more great progress i think he looks very happy good dupe that ari i just noticed the most useless animation since when is this even possible and how is this useful just using the scroll wheel on the menu bar. I hope this is a new feature because I've never realized. Okay, very nice. The bathroom loop is already going for it. Actually, we didn't need that much water and that means eventually we're gonna be filling up this part here as well, clogging up everything again, which is not good. So right now, until we have this fixed, I think I'm just gonna bring this a little bit over, maybe up to this point and then we're gonna drop it here. Back on the main planetoid, I would like to set up some drywall that is completely solid black right there. And we even have to do this for the airflow tiles, at least I believe so. All of this is also going to be black charcoal. Very nice. And then I'm also going to do the same thing for this room right here. As a matter of fact, we do need a way to build this. So maybe if I'll allow the dupes to go through here, they can build everything and maybe also open up this part. We also need to think about food here with Lyra. Even though we will be finding some more muckroot, etc. I think we should also go ahead and set up some meal ice. You know, just enough to survive three to five. I'm not actually sure. I'm just going to set up five. That is going to be enough and be not too wasteful. And before I forget, let's make sure that Lyra will then also be able to eat the raw meal ice. And of course, we should be storing that inside the fridge as well. Research completed. We got access to the transit tubes. Ah, this is a glorious moment within the base category. We're going to build these out of gold, obviously. And oh no, the ports are overlapping. Yeah, we cannot have the heavy watch on plate here. We need to have it either on the top, which also doesn't make sense because this is where the transit tube will have to go. So it will have to go here, which sucks. Honestly, I'd rather have it here. Let me think. No, that doesn't even make sense. Yeah, we're gonna have to move this up one block, alas. But now with this configuration, I have the space for the transit tube. And then we can also have our transit tube crossing. Well, I cannot build it yet if I don't have access to plastics. You know the drill. But yeah, it's actually coming along here. They are starting to build this room. And we should probably already think about the next step of hooking up the pipes, maybe. Let's think about the setup. We want to combine two pumps in order to get the full potential of one kilogram per pipe. I think what I want to do is bring these pipes over here to the very edge and then do this and do that for the third pipe. Whoop, maybe that. These pipes will then be distributed amongst the, the worker base, some of which have to go inside of the Atmo suit docks. And I would say what I'm going to do is lead one pipe below here and lead another pipe below there. I'm then going to fill up about half of these, so eight, and then the rest I want to bring back if something even remains. The reason I want to to do that is because we cannot really dedicate two complete lines to only the Atmo suits. I want them to kind of contribute to the entirety of the system. But this one here is going to be dedicated for filling up the base. So I kind of want to make my way up the ladder here. And what I'm going to do is probably just have a vent above each door. Yeah, I think that is a good idea. We're going to deconstruct each ladder above each door. The gas pipes will then just go through here and this one is actually gonna join the other one. Now I need to make sure this will be going into the correct direction. Yeah, let's have a bridge here and a bridge there maybe. Connect these together and now they're gonna both flow up. Uh, let me think, we're gonna have a refrigerator probably sitting here. We also need a water cooler right there and this is gonna be a bunch of statues or something, maybe even paintings. I also would like to see some corner 
moldings like so maybe we're not gonna have them everywhere i want to hang some pictures here and then get a really huge statue we don't have access to huge statues just yet look at that ice block maybe some hanging pots would be nice here and just to be sure i'm gonna remove those okay now i guess we just have to make a little bit of progress here it's gonna take a while to gather all of the materials the two gold volcanoes unfortunately are dormant and this one is gonna take another 10 cycles to be active i removed the gold from the critter feeder again and now i guess it's all dependent on this how much cobalt still 45 tons that is so nice let's do another 50 crafts and then we're still crafting the gold of course iron as a matter of fact we should also keep on crafting another 90 crafts Thank you very much. And we're still utilizing this system, which has barely heated up. Very nice. Let me see if we have some more material for temp shift plates. I'm just going to put down uh, some polluted ice temp shift plates, then normal ice right here. And then that would be the brine ice. And then I'm going to put these to the highest priority. So whenever we have a shipment coming over from the second planetoid or so, it's being brought there as a building material immediately. This is going to prevent the ice from melting before we have all the materials. But yeah, making good progress here. Let's see where this is going. As for Lyra, she just needs to continue the base here with the ladder shaft so we can go to the next step and that is hooking up the solar panels. But also slowly and surely we should prepare her to make the Atmos suits and for that we do need some reed fiber over on this planetoid. This essentially means we need access to the interplanetary launcher which is one of the more complicated researches but it would be the easiest way to actually bring over the reed fiber that we missed. Okay, a couple of cycles has passed. Lyra is totally making some progress. I wonder where her hat went. By the way, we just completed another research here, namely the solid control with all kinds of useful gadgets to transport items around. The next thing I want to go for in order to make it safe for Lyra so she can use the Atmos suits is the interplanetary launcher. Now this one here for the first time is going to require the data analysis research. We should be able to do at least one of those with the data banks we possibly accumulated. And I'm not entirely sure whether or not I'm already sending the data banks back here. Let's see. Yes, I am. So I'm assuming we already analyzed everything. Yeah, we can still rummage this. But in case we don't have enough data banks, we could still, of course, research all of the geysers and vents. I already have the virtual planetarium in place. Let's just see how this goes. As a matter of fact, we can already see we have 46 data banks and assuming one data bank equals one point we should be able to do one or two researches maybe there's a cheap research that only requires 10 data banks i'm always looking forward to this moment finally researching the data banks this is just the happiest research of them all now hopefully Jean isn't gonna get shot here by the rappel generators but we should be fine we got 18 points and 26 banks left yeah and uh, there it is already completed how nice and we already got the next wrap bolts here for the material study terminal come on give me your best shot ah uh, that's what i'm talking about hmm. you know what there's something weird i have my five dreamers here but who is sleeping in the other beds they are all unassigned except for this one which is assigned to quinn of course i have a third bedroom uh, sorry editing nathan Please, this time let me look good. You know, one thing I shouldn't forget about is to add the lights. So I gotta knock out the third one here. Uh, one, two, three. Oh, by the way, I got some new blueprints. Totally forgot about them. Let's see what we get. Hopefully, no, that's not what I was hoping for. Still green gloves, not too shabby. The second item is a hype t-shirt and the third one is a sunny hanging pot. Oh, nice. We might be able to use that. Now, of course, I'm a total noob and don't know where these items actually went. Uh, maybe we have an option here. Yeah, look at that. Sunny hanging pot. Very nice. This will fit really nicely right there. Then, of course, course my lights also out of gold amalgam right here the base is going to be actively cooled so i don't really need to trigger them with motion sensors you know one thing i never added to this list here is the bleach stone i think i'm gonna do that right here and then on the second planetoid i want to bring this stuff over if we get some bleach stone i'm not even sure but what i'm definitely sure of is that we want to grab some fossils very soon okay interplanetary launcher how far are we we need some more applied science and the rest is easy so i guess one thing we gotta do is set up the drywall for this room here at the 
bottom and i want this to be completely black as well just very simple we have no better options just yet i'm gonna make the great hall a little bit more colorful and then here at the bottom i want to continue the insulation and of course eventually this bottom floor is also gonna become gold but i gotta wait for the volcanoes let's also set up the gas vents here let me see right there 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 and there and there Okay, so it looks like you don't actually need anything behind the airflow tiles. It just feels weird. But placing drywall behind airflow tiles is just going to replace it. Ah, wonderful. Here we have a sunny hanging pot. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, let's take care of the great hall. I would like the green to be here covering the mess tables. Maybe we can do something like this. Then do this for the opposite side. Okay. I think we might be getting somewhere with this. Okay. It's just a giant M. And we can then use some fresh white to fill it out. Yeah, I'm going to let them build this first and see how it looks like. On the third planetoid, we are living a happy life. Lyra at the moment is working her way up in order to build the solar panels that I set up here together with a ladder to reach everything and the cabling for now is just going to take a little detour because we have a liquid lock going on here and I don't want the gases to escape. But in the future, this might just go directly up. As a matter of fact, we might want to distribute the solar panels differently so we can continue the ladder in the future and that would mean having them, for instance, like so and so and of course that also means i want to get rid of all of this let's maybe first work our way up we should be able to get all of this since this is just snow and then add more of the solar panel okay wonderful we just unlocked the targeting beacon and the interplanetary launcher just what we needed now how large is this thing yeah to make this work we either need to free up some space or just use the second silo and i think i'm gonna opt for that solution as a matter of fact i'm gonna put it all the way down so let's just set it up right here on top of a bunch of tiles and this way we can also easily power it actually i'm gonna take the wire from below and then maybe the wire that is gonna stay here in the future i'm gonna build out of steel let's now maybe also set up the wedges here just copy this over and then while i'm at it i'm also gonna set up a separate signal switch so we can get rid of this wire and kind of steer this individually to feed the launcher, we need a conveyor loader that I'm going to set up right here. Now, this guy is going to overheat in due time, but to get one or two resources to other planetoids, we can take advantage of it. The launcher here not only requires power, but also rat bolts. We can, for instance, shoot them through this gap, and I'm just going to adapt the system we have going on here with the rat bolt generators and the wheeze wards. There we go. Another meteor shower. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Please be a good one. Yeah, oh, 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 okay, okay. Mercy, mercy. Ah, uh, what's going on? Entombed. Who is entombed? What's happening? This is not good. Lyra, is this really the right moment to get out there? I don't know. Maybe you go back inside. Okay, now I kind of want to try something else here with the regolith because it gets really hot and maybe we should store it in a safer place. What happens, for instance, if we make a little chamber? This is just a little experiment I want to test out. Let me see. Make this about seven wide and four high. We're then going to lead some conveyor rail through it. And then finally, I want to go all the way over and kind of dump it into the cold section here. So maybe we can just go down from this point and then add a conveyor chute there. And my intention will be to basically heat up a little bit of water so it will become steam. Maybe we should do this closer to the launch pads. Yeah, actually, let me go ahead and move this entire section over to here. That will be more reasonable. And then the entire journey is going to start here with a conveyor loader, like so. And I'm going to go with a very cheap solution to keep this one cool. We could even do that right here, to be honest. Yeah, maybe drop a bottle emptier here, but facing the other side. Ah, oh, come on. This way, we might be able to cool down the rat bolt generators for long enough to actually make this work. I'm going to add yet another bottle emptier right here in order to fill this up with water. As a matter of fact, I should do this over here and then just make it accessible with a ladder. Then one more thing we're going to need once this has become steam is, of course, a pump. Steam is pumped with a gas pump and it needs to be made out of steel because of the temperatures. And we would be putting that right here together with an insulated pipe here, igneous rock. Well, we should go for ceramic, the best material we can. And then of course this would continue all the way over. Maybe, who knows, we even want to control the temperature. So I'm going to set up a thermo sensor here that controls the pump in order to make sure the steam has a certain temperature. 
Liron got herself a major radiation sickness, which is good. She's gonna vomit it all out. Okay, now inside the conveyor loader, I wanna set up my thimble reed seeds. And then I probably need to ship this over right there. Okay, it's time to set up the ward seeds here. We're gonna collect just enough radiation to send over one packet. Maybe we're gonna change the destination already to the third planetoid here. And then the minimum launch mass is gonna depend on how many seeds we get in here. No pending deliveries. Wait, are you kidding me? Uh, that might have something to do with priorities. No? Wait, do we not have any seeds? Wait, what is going on? I mean, I've been feeding this flower for a very long time. I'm so confused. Confused. They cannot be anywhere. I mean, they are automatically being brought here, right? Well, holy cow, this is really a mystery to me. Let me see. Maybe we can pick up some more thimble reed. Yeah, there are some we can pick up and hopefully... Wow, okay, this is kind of surprising. Oh no, I totally opened up the bunker doors and now all the hot regolith fell down, which is kind of a bummer. Oh well. Very nice. Now, these wee swords, of course, are not gonna cool down the rapple generators because there's no atmosphere there but once we added a little bit of liquid they just might Lyra here is almost done with the first solar panel hookup come on do the cable oh that might have worked now yes finally charging up the batteries and therefore the food can be refrigerated once again Lyra how are you doing 52 rap bolts. Come on, we've seen worse actually the thimble reeds got already moved into the launcher wow editing Nathan ah forget it do I really want to send 20 seats over? <sighs> not really, you know, not really. One way we could have solved this is by adding another storage and then an auto sweeper, but this is just silly. We cannot limit this storage here. Ooh, I could have used maybe a sweep only command. I'm quickly going to deconstruct the interplanetary launcher just to see if we get the thimble reeds out of there again. And yes, indeed, 20 thimble reeds. Now let's build that storage bin, please. I want to limit the storage bin to five seats. That should be more than enough to get things started. Do that have this as the highest priority? Okay. And ooh, wait, wait, wait. You need to bring some to the other side first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, move that here. That's just five seats now. Okay, so I can drop them here if I tell them to sweep it up at priority nine and to bring it to this conveyor loader as a thimble reed, then we should only have the five in there. And then we build back the interplanetary launcher right there. Oh, actually, we have to do this with urgency because... Ooh, yeah, let's also put this to 51 rap bolts. Same thing on here. Okay, but somebody needs to build that. Otherwise, the rap bolts have nowhere to go. Yeah, good. Now, uh, maybe, guys, you should get out of the way. You're supposed to build this from the other side. There is the first shot. Oh, this went... Wait, why did this go straight through? Is it just because it's blocked? Does that even make sense? Oh, come on. Okay, I'm gonna unblock that. This is such a bummer. I had no idea that you could not load this up if it is blocked. That is stupid. Uh, okay, now it isn't blocked anymore and therefore it should be stored. Come on. And there it is. Okay. We're actually ready to shoot. How much is this going to cost us? Launch costs are 40 rap bolts. Yeah, this is actually an acceptable cost. Hmm, maybe we don't even have to continue with this because this is just a setup in order to get things going. I'm going to still leave things in place in case we need to deliver something to another planetoid. The thimble reed was just kind of urgent for the Atmos suit stuff. Wait, I just noticed we have 36 thimble reeds in there. Ugh. Never mind, I still have 15 kilograms of thimble reed on this planetoid. That's all I'm gonna need. Let's go ahead and shoot this load. Minimum launch mass 35 kilograms. Is it gonna do it? Wait, let's change the destination again, maybe to reinitialize it. Come on, shoot. Uh, 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 yeah, there it goes. Uh, where is it? We already missed it. Let's now close the bunker door again. Okay, this is all I wanted to see. We can see it on the star map right there, the interplanetary payload. Absolutely magnificent. It is now gonna land somewhere here on the third planetoid, anywhere on the surface since we have no beacon. But this is definitely gonna help us out in the long run in order to get the atmosphere going. So the next episode, the latest, we'll be able to get into the oil reserves. In the meantime, I'm gonna keep going on the main planetoid here in order to switch to the new oxygen system. Right now, we seem to be at a decent pace. 
still 37 tons of polluted dirt left but the transition is extremely imminent now i'm looking forward to it and here we go all right we are at the end of the first part of this oxygen not included movie hopefully you're enjoying the possibility to actually get through the series in just one video even if you don't want to watch all the parts you can just use the chapters to skip to various moments and maybe you're the kind of person that stumbled upon this video but rather would watch it in a series so i will leave the link to the actual playlist in the description as well but this here is just for your convenience and maybe there are a bunch of people that are enjoying this format much more once the series is wrapped up i will also make a recap where i actually summarize what happens so if you want to wait for that surely gonna take a couple more weeks if not months but yeah i would definitely appreciate a thumbs up a comment even a subscription if you're up for it thank you so much for everything what a journey this is gonna be at least three more parts are gonna follow the next one is gonna be next Sunday. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for your support. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye-bye.